Just getting some uh, international trade balance data coming across here to kick things off this morning. Not much of a reaction from the overall market. Uh, still chopping around as far as uh, the futures are concerned. Basically break even at this point. Coming off a pretty steep sell off yesterday. We saw all three U.S. markets to the downside in a pretty big way yesterday. We did bounce into the close, but a lot of negativity off that ISM services number that was hotter than expected. Remember, that's the second print in a row if you go back to Friday's job number uh, that came in hotter than expected. So ahead of what is to come next week, again, we get CPI on Tuesday. The Fed then comes through on Wednesday. More data uh, that uh, the Fed will consider uh, on their interest rate decision. Fed funds tool, meanwhile, still suggesting we'll get a 50 basis point hike coming up next Wednesday. Uh, we'll obviously bring that to you, but uh, pretty quiet day setting up. Going to be an interesting one, though. It's Tuesday, December 6, 2022. TraderTV.live starts now. Yeah, there's a look at uh, basically a flat market to start things off. 0.17 for the NASDAQ, trying to show a little bit of strength here uh, as far as tech is concerned, but uh, not much to talk about as far as the S&P and the Dow. 0 0.08 to the downside, 0 0.04, holding on to uh, positive territory for the S&P at uh, this point. Anyways, we'll see what happens. Uh, coming up so far today, we are looking at negativity in uh, oil off that huge rally yesterday. 2.5% to the upside, we end the day. Uh, sharply lower uh, when all is said and done, 1.3 on top of that. Now back to the downside, Bitcoin, Ethereum just chopping around as well. Uh, Elon and Twitter can't really uh, catch a break these days. I mean, they got Apple, apparently, I saw late in the day yesterday. Apple back as an advertiser on Twitter. Walmart CEO on CNBC just saying they have stopped advertising on Twitter as of uh, today, I guess. Uh, oh, well, we can't trade it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Rune is back. I'm, Neil's still under the Twitter. weather a little bit. Good morning, guys. Uh, first segment of the show is always brought to you by SurgeTrader.com. Check them out. Link at the bottom of the screen. Going to be an interesting day here, guys. Not much in the way of economic data to talk about today, but a uh, little bit of strength in tech, a little bit of strength coming back into banks as well on a whole bunch of uh, analyst moves this morning. I like that. Uh, get woke and go broke. Yeah, that's that's kind of a funny little thing there. Shout out to Mr. VIP there uh, in the chat. Yeah, we are uh, live again today, Rune, and it's a pleasure. I said yesterday it was great having you mm -hmm. and um, that uh, you possibly would be back next week or whatever that it is, but uh, welcome back today. Yeah, we need a short uh, yeah. notice. Neil, Come, Neil not feeling back. well, so yeah. he's going to be at home uh, again today and hopefully uh, recovering himself, so that'll be nice. It's always great to have Arun filling in for us one more time. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're excited, man. It's going to be a good one there uh, today again, hopefully. I mean, I thought the market was dipping down pretty good. We've just had a nice little bounce off here. The sticky note is now just out. Uh, we've written that down. We're going to be looking at Till. Actually, I did not put Tilray on here, but we're looking at Tilray. We're also looking at Tesla today. I like Apple. I like Microsoft, some of those same ones. We like Silvergate uh, today, down over 12%. And we're going to talk, it's a New York name. We're going to talk about Silvergate. Uh, wow. I just remember when Neil was talking about this name at 150, 160, stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're, they're all, they've all been up and down like crazy. Silvergate today on more FTX worries. This was just a hundred. I mean, you want to talk about, I just feel, you know what, I should be looking at Robinhood probably as well. You, 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 you want to talk about just an, a destruction of the whole space. Like, crypto, people in crypto must just want to throw up. I mean, I, I, I don't even have that much money tied up in, in this space here, and I want to throw up. I mean, I want to, and, and, that's, and I feel 100% fine. You know, this is just a reaction to what's happening here. This was $100 in September. It's, 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 it's going to be sub-20 today is my call, as I think it was Warren, uh, the Senate, calling for an investigation to see exactly what's under the hood now of Silvergate, what sort of, um, you know, dealings did they have with FTX. But, I mean, like, this stock, it's going to take a while to load up. But this was like, like, why bounce from 50 here to 110? You know, you're going to look back, and there's, people are going to write... There's going to be Netflix documentaries and all this stuff for sure, if not already. Uh, and they're, they're, I've already seen some, but down here about what's been happening with crypto. And it's just going to get worse and worse, I feel like. I've, I mean, I'm so glad that I'm not in Coinbase. I think I am, but it's a very, very small amount. I'm not holding anything really crypto related except for the coins themselves, <laughs> which have actually been just as big of a, you know what, recently than as these 
uh, exchanges and some of these equities. So we're going to have to watch out for some of this. Oh, speak of the devil here. Robinhood announced the launch of Robinhood Retirement. Aren't, isn't all, aren't all of their, uh, aren't all of their uh, clients like sub 25 years old or even yes than that? So that's, that's where you want to put your retirement money, right? That might be, will Robinhood exist when their clients retire is, is maybe, that, that's a little risky there. But uh, anyways, uh, just playing around, I don't know enough about their, their, their clients. But uh, nice, interesting thing. They said they're going to match. Robinhood introduces Robinhood IRA with 1% match. That seems pretty good, actually. They're going to match 1% of everything you put in. So you put in 100, they're going to give you $1,000. Is that what maybe that means? The question is, we'll find would out you actually that. be willing to put in 100 to get that's, that 1,000? See, the thing is, is that... Or a million or whatever. The 1% matched, yeah, that's not that great. If it was sort of compounding somehow, maybe 1% a year, I don't know. But that doesn't seem... This seems like a little bit too much risk there. Yo, what's up, Brankles? How are you doing? Oh, okay. You say, he's complaining about the subway. Uh, he's complaining about the subway. Guys. Here. Transit system in Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in Toronto at least. Oh, yeah, it's like those Japanese subways. Uh, all right. I'll talk to you after. Uh, this, the show must go on right here as, uh, yeah, we're, we're light again on people around here. So shout out to Brankos for coming in. Luca's in the background walking around, and it's going to be, uh, again, it looks like a little bit of a skeleton crew here. I hope everyone at home is feeling well. I don't know. Uh, the sick, not sick kids, another Toronto hospital had to call in the Red Cross or something because there's too many beds uh, being occupied by but there's the kids. There was too many. It was a children's hospital. I, the name is slipping my mind. Uh, but, yeah, things aren't great around here as far as RSV the flu, and then COVID. So I feel actually fantastic, but, you know, I was saying my wife, like all these, you know, it's like the kids go to school. I was saying this. I just hope everyone feels well. We're going to be here trading. It's 8.37. Uh, I've, I don't think you've spoken yet, so how are you doing? I'm doing well. I mean, short notice, I'm back. We were expected to be back on Friday. We're back today, and we'll go day by day. Who knows? You know, it, it's going around, right? You see people going down uh, in terms of, like, obviously the kids have been sick, but now the adults are starting to get sick as well. So hopefully everyone gets better and we can move on through the holidays yeah. in a good way. But for now, I'll be here. We'll go through some stuff. I've already made a trade. I've made and gotten out of a trade in, cr in crude, by the way. Uh, so um, Hit the of science. all things, crude moving around a lot. So, so is Nat Gas. We'll get to it. I'm sure Brenda's going to bring it to us. Uh, back to uh, the downside we go here for crude oil still uh, chopping around at session lows. I was reading through that uh, Robin Hood story. I feel like that could get a little expensive for them uh, as time goes on, but uh, we'll see. 1% match on an IRA sounds a little too good to be true. Uh, here was the major uh, headline for the overall market that I sat down to uh, this morning. Yeah, Fed worries coming back into play after not one, but two straight Economic data prints come in higher than expected. That kicked off the selling yesterday. Uh, again, what happens, guys, dare we say? Uh, again, we get CPI on Tuesday. I, I mean, I don't even want to say what happens if that comes in hotter than expected as well. I mean, the Fed comes through then on, uh, on Wednesday with 50 basis points. The Fed funds tool is still suggesting uh, that's going to be the case. But, yeah, two in a row here off the jobs number and then yesterday that were uh, higher than expected there for the overall market. Uh, we are trying to hold some key levels, though, for uh, not only futures, but uh, some individual stocks at this point. Bit of a wait and see as we uh, as we head forward here. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about GameStop. Yeah, GME uh, was moving around after the close yesterday on the watch list this morning. Uh, the It was Reuters, I believe. Uh, there was a couple of different reports, but uh, there was a couple of reports on job cuts, guys, and layoffs for GameStop. Back to the upside today. GameStop, yeah, Arun, you and I have to be, you, myself, and Brendan have to be locked up away because we cannot get sick. So that's what we're just discussing on the chat here. So that should be good. So get ready to get uh, locked up for a couple of days. Uh, maybe we just make some beds around here. Should be, should I mean, be lots of fun. a simple solution. I mean, I just don't come in. <laughs> That's how I protect myself. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly how, how we should all be protecting ourselves uh, right now. But everything's going to be all good. Yeah, look, GameStop up 1.4%. It's nice. We'll take a sip of coffee. 
coffee's cold already. Maybe it wasn't too hot to begin with. Um, so GameStop here on the daily chart, I mean, it's running into 30 bucks. I mean, we've seen that over and over again. There was one day when everything sort of went a little bit crazy and haywire back in November 1st, it looks like, or yeah. October 31st, November 1st. Uh, there was this is actually real where we spiked up to $35 there uh, and came right back in. That was an, that was a Bed Bath and Beyond AMC. That was a meme day. Um, and I don't think you know GameStop right now just appears to be just cruising along like many other names. And actually, if you're going to go back to you know even the summertime, the fact that it's still at the same level that it's been at pretty much the last three or four months shows me that GameStop is pretty stable right now and doesn't seem to have too much underneath it or or above it. So this is good, man. I think. Cutting jobs is, is a good thing. We've seen PepsiCo come out there and cut some of their workforce. I said yesterday, like, who are they actually cutting? Like, kids that are working in the stores, or are they cutting some corporate? You know, um, I'm sure that story's out there, and I just got to find out what, what it is. But again, you know, down here to 24 bucks seems to have been a pretty safe long. You're at 26 right now. Yesterday, Again, I mean, nothing could really get out of the way of, of some of these moves yesterday. But the one thing to look at, and this is what I was going to say when we talk about some of the bigger tech names today, is that if the futures are going to bounce around a little bit, then what about those bottoms from yesterday? So again, comes out with job cuts. You have a bottom here of 25.50. I think that's something that we could trade off of today. I mean, what do we think the market's going to do? Uh, is the market... Bouncing off of yesterday's low, these aren't yesterday's lows, but are we going to bounce here? Are we going to hold? Are we going to take back to somehow get back to that 12,000 level that we talked about there? So, I mean, the NASDAQ, this is a three-minute chart on the NASDAQ, so it's going to give you a little bit of a better idea uh, from what we had yesterday. So here's the move down into yesterday, um, and then there's the bottom of 11,760. So let's see if 7,600. Let's see if that holds. If it does, then I think some of those bottoms from yesterday will definitely come into play. There are better plays. I like Meta's bottom better. But GameStop today, I just I look at the daily chart and thinking just about how consistent this is. So I think these job cuts are probably a positive sign. You know, you'd always want to wait for earnings or a bigger catalyst to go long on GameStop. But for me, I think if you bounce off that, I mean, even forget about yesterday, this bottom is 2480. I mean, here's the daily chart. You won't be able to see it that well because of that. But here, let me just see if I can move this a little bit better for all of us here again. Just to, yeah, uh, shoot, uh, that's no better. We don't have the split going. There it is. So even, even despite yesterday's move uh, down, you still have a great bottom here of 24, 80, 25 bucks. So as long as GameStop hovers around these areas, I think it's a buy. And I don't think the news is good enough to send this thing above 28. So I feel like GameStop today, although positive, which is really nice to see, any dip buys down to 25 bucks, uh, any dips down to $25, I think are buying opportunities. So for me, GameStop's on the radar down there near 25. I'm going to put the order in actually right now and uh, take that long down by 25 bucks. If it breaks 2480, we can get out. Pretty simple trade. And I think, Arun, that's what we have to do. You played Etsy off of a key break yesterday. And I think if you're waiting for stock, I think that's what you should be doing now, waiting for key levels to come into play. And I think 25 is one on GameStop. 25 could be one on GameStop. It's just, for me, it's just, like, apart from two days, this is uh, October the 31st and November the 9th, apart from those two days, we're stuck between 24 and 30. I mean, if we're going to play in that tight of a range, I, I can't get involved. Like, it has to be outside of that range for me to... Uh, make a play on it. Let's, maybe we break 24 today. Since we're gapping up or uh, moving up to 26, maybe we get into the top end of this range and maybe we can make a play for the 30. I don't know yet, but it has to do something else than just stay in this range for me to get involved. So for now, I'll just set the alerts out. If, when they go off, I'll take a look at it again, but it's not a high priority name. Just because it's moving today, it's up you know, from that 25, 40 up to 26. It doesn't mean a whole lot when you look at the bigger picture, which is a wide, wide, well, it's not even a wide range. It's actually a fairly tight range when you look at the grand scheme of things. So tight range here, let it break out. It'll be a much easier trade when it does. To some of these uh, chip makers here, time on semiconductor, a little more coming out on this event that's coming up today. Again, President Biden going to be in Arizona. Uh, Tim Cook from Apple going to be in Arizona. NVIDIA's CEO going to be in Arizona, all for this uh, unveiling, I guess, of this 40 billion plus uh, chip plant from TSM. Uh, just seeing now a few people suggesting they're going to, at this event, also announce a second plant that will come, but uh, not really reacting. Uh, to it here. TSM down a little bit today uh, on that, but nice move off the lows anyways on the daily chart for uh, Taiwan Semi, but a uh, big party in Arizona today for all of these. 
Yeah, I mean, Pelosi went to Taiwan, what, back in October, November, or something like that, when this name was back down. I mean, I don't, I gotta find the exact date if we're gonna start calling people out here, but uh, Taiwan semis, I mean, huge bottom there at 60, $65, crazy. Rips all the way up here to 85 and starting to bounce off a little bit. I always think that these are fade the news type of things just because they're opening up another plant. That sounds like more costs associated. And if you're opening up a plant in the United States, again, you know, that's gonna be a high wage area for them. I don't know if it makes any sense to actually having plants here in North America. I would assume that they're getting some kind of government subsidy or something for all this. Uh, so we'll wait for the announcement to come through. But I always think it's buy the rumor, sell the news. And if that's what's happening today, then I look to fade out Taiwan semis uh, here today. You could see, though, definitely not as weak. It doesn't have the pronounced down. I mean, this is definitely a downtrend, but nothing like some of those names that we saw yesterday just continuing um, to to get you know hit but the semis have actually held up I mean you have to I have to watch what I'm saying here because the market these last couple days haven't held up at all but Taiwan semiconductor seems to want to hold this $81 mark I don't I'd rather hit the short at 81 so if that comes through I think that's a better play for me as well but I like the short at 81 rather than the long and I think whenever you have these kind of days and events it, it, it is a sell the, sell the news type of thing, right? And so I'm gonna wait for that. It's been some nice moves upside here for Taiwan, but you are again running into, uh, this is the daily chart I keep looking at here. You're running into issues at 83 bucks. I wanna thank Surge Trader again for coming on. Use the promo TTV there for 10% off. Uh, thanks Surge Trader, but 84, $80, $83. I don't know if this stock surges above this level or not uh, today. I would say no. So let's wait to see if there's any price action that gives us a fade up here to 8350 or so that could easily come in especially if the market starts to rally this is another name that has tops so i'm playing the support and resistance game until fed comes and that's next week that's on the 14th we have so today's the six so add add seven days a week today is cpi coming out and then followed by Fed on Wednesday. So there's going to be a lot of interesting things happening in the next week or so. I just wait for some of these levels to break on those days. Until then, I feel like some of these names, just like Taiwan Semi, is stuck here. We just talked about GameStop. Now we're talking about another one that's kind of barcoding. I'm fading anything up near 84, and I actually don't mind a break lower through 81. Let's just make sure the market is with us on that. We don't want that early, but if it's like 9.45, 10 o'clock, and it's looking like it wants to break 81, then I think that that gives us some downside to 80. Yeah, I'm um, going back to what Brendan was saying about uh, the CPI and uh, the Fed day after day. If, let's just kind of think this through. If the CPI came in higher, you're gonna obviously see a massive move down. And then if the Fed came in with a 50 basis point cut instead of the 75, you're gonna see a massive move up. So it's gonna be quite the roller coaster ride. You might see 200 points down with a 200 point move back up the following day if that does happen. So in terms of volatility, I mean, yeah. Please, yes, because that would be great for volatility in terms of, you know, it'll be, it'll be sickening. It'll be like a roller coaster ride that won't stop, but it will be great for volatility and opportunity. So, yes, please, down move with the followed by an up move. That'd be great. Uh, okay, going back to Taiwan Semi, we talked about Taiwan Semi. 81 was the bottom end of the range. 83 was the top end of the range. We're like, get the breakout through there, and then we'll work something. Play the range. Uh, if we got to the high end, play the potential short. If you got to the low end, play the potential long. What does it do? Gaps down overnight, starts from underneath, and then comes right back into that 81 and change and starts to stabilize. So back into a situation where this thing needs to get back under 81, and now it needs to not just get back under 81, but also the overnight low 80, 60, which then forces you to start using 80. So it's got to get now back under 80 to potentially maybe open up a show, a short, or even a brand new trade down there. So the range has widened up a little bit here. So I would definitely be careful on how to play this. It is tightening, and but it is still kind of somewhat stepping down a little bit. So we may have a bottom, more of a, a lower support zone, but it's still there. So just be aware of that. that is, there is potential for a bounce off the bottom end. So for now, we're gonna have to leave it alone. 80 by 83 is gonna have to be the box and see if we can get outside of that range. Uh, just watching Robin Hood here, Vlad Tenev, uh, CEO on CNBC currently, uh, talking about this uh, retirement account or the, you can now sign up for the wa or the uh, wait list, I should say, to get on uh, one of these retirement accounts, according to Vlad. So just uh, made a new low right back down 
uh, for Robinhood. I was going to mention uh, this one as well. Uh, a few people were still talking about XPeng is not NASDAQ. It is New York. Uh, a few people mentioning uh, XPeng after a few wild days here. We had this uh, sharp sell-off yesterday, obviously. Not really doing much here when, uh, I mean, most of the uh, ADRs are up in the pre-market here on continued reopening uh, talk, guys, but uh, XPeng specifically a little bit weaker than most. Man, you're gonna get me started again on these Chinese names, man. Uh, this has been, I, I purposely, it's not on the watch list, and honestly, the only Chinese ADR that I looked up today was Alibaba, because I know I've had good success trading Alibaba, and some of these um, car EV, Chinese EV names have been a disaster for me. But um, we'll look at them again, because, you know, what's the last five days or whatever it's been? I think we've only traded them the last three days. Uh, I've just had really bad reads on them, and I mean, if you're going to go here on the 20-minute chart, like, when, when, when... <laughs> I just, oh, it's frustrating because I remember down in here when it was seven or eight dollars, I was like, ah, nah, man, there's no way we break like, you know, this 750 area and, and you know, we were playing some shorts and it was all good that this is the day here where, the, you know, the show really started to get out of hand uh, a little bit on, on XPeng because I just couldn't believe these moves up and then it was up 30 or 40 percent this day. You know, then we came back and relaxed again and then I was like, okay, now, you know, now we've got to short into these levels because we pulled all the way back, so let's short 1040, and then it was like, hold my beer, young fellow, all the way up to 1050, then it pulled back, and then yesterday we were like, okay, now that it's pulled back and we've ripped all the way up here, let's see if it still has some strength, because every single day we seem to have these big green candles, and then yesterday off open it was like, oh, that's a nice story, bang to the downside, and then we sort of left it alone a little bit, so we did get hit. Yesterday we tried to go long right into here, and we, we were even very patient yesterday. We didn't take the top we were actually looking for support longs so when it came down to 1250 here we took the long and then it just kept on going to the downside before finally bottoming at 11 i mean was it an easy kind of bottom there yes when you look back you say hey here's support at 11 there was a lot of names yesterday that found some support so <clears throat> If we're going to trade this again here today, guess what? I'm going to go long at $11. Yeah, it broke there. 1090 was the break. Um, it was the break hold at 11. So for me, X paying up a dollar six, a dollar 68, up 1.68 percent into a negative market or so. Uh, as you see, the ES both down and the Nasdaq flirting with red. I mean, it was just down 0.1. A minute ago so that's floating around x -Pang seems to be strong today again i don't even know what the catalyst is here they didn't have great earnings they didn't have a great um report from their amount of cars delivered there to deliveries so i'm not i i'm surprised as everybody but maybe you guys know better than i do which appears to be obvious that 11 looks like it wants to hold on the 20 minute i'm gonna take it i'm not even gonna look at neo i'm not gonna Alibaba is a different story. We can look at that and we'll probably be talking about it. But for me, XPEV right now, it's an 11 long and that's it. I'm waiting for that to happen. If it comes in and fills me, hallelujah, we'll take that fill. Uh, and then we'll wait to see if it takes down that, whatever this bottom is here, I'll find, I'll, let me find out the exact bottom here yesterday. So that's 10, yeah, 1088. I don't even want to give it too much love. Like if it breaks 1085, then we are gone out of this name and, Dare I say reverse, oh, here's my trade yesterday. And dare I say reverse into the short? You know, and here's yesterday, look. Here it is. We didn't, we didn't touch it, like I said. We didn't touch it up here at 13. We were pretty cautious of it. And I was like, ah, I don't want the short because, you know, that's ripped our face off, especially when it's up, you know, early. There it is right there. There's the 12.55. The good thing about XPEV yesterday, now that I remember about it, we were actually positive on it. But that's just lucky because we, in the first minute, we got a great fill down here. And it was actually a pre-market fill right as the market opened. Looks like it was right at 9.30. Right as the market opened, we dipped down. We we got our 1255. We were able to get out of half up here near 13, and then it broke, and I got out, and then it just dipped out, and that's when I threw my hands up because I had no idea what was going on. So we should have stayed stuck with it. We should have stuck with it down to 11 bucks. So I'm going to be here right now. Let's bid like 
10 past 11, something like that. Uh, so 11.10, we'll bid that. It'll fill us, and then we'll watch out for that 10.80 break. But for me, that's XPEV. And then if you look at NEO yesterday as well, hopefully my trades will come in. This was the one that was brutal for me. See, I did the same thing, except for NEO for some reason. I believed in this one in the pre-market. We got long, and then it was just like, near, 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 like a carnival show, just getting pies in the face all the way down for NEO until eventually at the end, like here I am losing like 50 cents, maybe, maybe Maybe more uh, and then right here we only gain 1290 short back into 1280 we can't even get like 10 15 cents at the end of the day so look at the dramatic moves that happen on these uh, Chinese ADRs early we're gonna see if we can capture some of that but I'm not even looking at Neo I just want to look at Xpeng down there at 11 at least we have our targets our ins and our outs yeah uh, I'm not gonna touch Xpeng Brendan uh, just hearing a number coming across their uh, Canadian trade balance number uh, not really affecting the market, was uh, having a look at tops as well. A few people were mentioning early on this morning, we had a bit of a move back to the upside for tops, but not a lot of volume. Let's get some analyst moves for you, shall we, for today. Uh, nice move here. We'll uh, get lab on the watch list. We'll talk about that. Nice move to the upside. Uh, RBC, among three or four others I saw with the uh, upgrade on uh, GitLab after a beat and a raise as far as their forecast is concerned. There's JP Morgan. Uh, Morgan Stanley with a double upgrade on JPM today. Uh, JPM also very busy as far as analyst moves, including a downgrade today on RCL, Royal Caribbean. Yeah, uh, GitLab, obviously the big one there uh, that's moving down or moving up is an upgrade 13%. So I, I'm trying to find the symbol uh, for GitLab, so, or the ticker for GitLab, which I do not know. I have never traded GitLab before, but yeah, we'll get it. Uh, GTLB, got it. Okay, a uh, couple of names that I am looking at now. Uh, one coming from the chat, Daniel, thank you so much. Visa, yeah, Visa looks pretty solid on the daily. I do like the idea of potential shorts, uh, but we got to get it underneath 213, though. Right now, I mean, we're sitting, where are we sitting on Visa? Two, close to 214, I guess. Overnight trades, barely any overnight trades. So you're not getting a whole lot of action. We're near the top end of the range. We're starting to break down, uh, uh, I guess, below this previous whatever, this 214 high resistance level, which makes sense given where we're trading at. So the fact that we can break down, I think if we get one more break below yesterday's low back into that 213, I'd like to open up a potential short here, 213 going on down to 208 and change as the target. So definitely uh, on, the tar on the list of names that I'm gonna put look at, when you say that, you automatically gotta go look at via, not just Visa, but MasterCard as well, and MasterCard is also there, but the range on MasterCard is a little bit wider. It's a little bit stronger, it seems, given the way it's moved. So it's hitting resistance, but the range is being wider, makes it a little bit more riskier, and you don't want to trade both at the same time. So I'm perfectly okay with uh, Visa being my candidate for today, on the short side at least. So we'll leave that alone, but thank you for bringing that one uh, up in the chat. Yeah, yesterday we had CCL uh, as well moving around. I want to watch out, uh, and that's, now it's lower. I want to watch that 10. What's up to uh, Daryl Flinch if you're out there uh, as well, as I know that you like to trade this name. I've been wanting to short this around that 1020 mark. We talked about that yesterday, um, and it did, it, did, it did give that trade early. Uh, I think that must have been the pre-market because I don't remember it uh, getting up there. We'll check it out again. But up into here, I think that these are great shorts until we hear better information, again, about less people getting sick. Um, and then just more people starting to get to travel again. Oh no, so it must have been, so this is, I must have missed this again yesterday because that, I, I know I like that 1020 area. So right there, there's the move up and then there's the fade down. So again, another fail, slap that right on this stock for me because I've been waiting for a rip up in CCL and I just missed it yesterday. So if there's anything like this here today, you could see a lot of barcoding around 10 bucks. So for me, this is the new short here instead of this up, upside. You give this this short in to 990, 10 bucks, something like that, right into here for CCL. Um, and then you don't even give it up this high if it breaks like this 1005 area, then you can get out. But a lot of barcoding there before drops, tried to bounce, then another move to the downside here. So actually, what does CCL look like on a bottom break? That's 960, man, nah, it's not that attractive down to 950, to be honest with you. Maybe if we get a 950 break today, but again, more positive than the market. I don't think cruise ships are really there. Did you look at the, no, you didn't check the imbalance no, locator for yet. anybody yet. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have much to say here. It is an absolute disaster for the imbalances. There's nothing here. To take my word for it, if we're going to be traders, then I think you really want to hold a lot of your capital back 
for next week. We have, and I think you're going to agree with that, Arun. Mm -hmm. We saw yesterday the market was, it was decent if you had the short, but still, you had to be very patient, waiting for some decent levels to come through. And then it was pretty choppy. It wasn't the smoothest trade. Next Tuesday, we have CPI. Next Wednesday, we have Fed. So, and in between, you're going to have, um, there's some sort of a banking summit going on right now. We keep seeing all these, or some sort of summit. We've seen all these CEOs. Jamie Dimon's been out there. I see the Honeywell CEO out again. So there's going to be some corporate talk. But again, you're into a quiet period now for the Fed. So I, you, I, I'm not looking for any notes from these guys. But I mean, the market's telling you everything you need to know here. If you look at the NASDAQ, I mean, everyone coming in today, like we've already made the high there, then we made the bottom, then we tried to go back, then we made the bottom again. And what's happening is just a tighter range coming through. So I, I, I don't expect to see too many fireworks here. We are going to get a rundown though, Brendan, soon with the futures in Arun. But I don't really see uh, too much fireworks here today. I think we're going to have to find some names that are moving, like a Silvergate, you know, like a Meta, things that we, we believe in that have a directional bias. Yeah, it's uh, going to be an interesting one. A lot of these uh, CEOs still making comments, guys, in uh, Washington uh, today, it would appear. So let's, uh, let's have a look at Europe to kick things off, and then we'll get into what you need to know as far as the futures are concerned with uh, Arun. There is a very red board uh, for the European markets and landscape so far today, top to bottom outside of Turkey, doing its own thing, as it normally does, about half a percent right across the board. To the downside, more negativity as far as sentiment is concerned uh, to have a look at here. All the uh, usual names outside of this one, W-O-R-X popping up here for the first time in a long time. There's that digital brands, DBGI, MTC popped up late in the day yesterday, uh, made a nice move. Uh, MMTLP, MMAT, both the same. Uh, back on here once again, there's AMC. We mentioned GME as well with its own catalyst today. Tilray still green on this board as well. Uh, the market, however, not so much. The SPY back to the downside. Arun, what do we do with these uh, futures today, or what do we need to know? Well, if you guys were watching yesterday, you know what I said, right? Let's bounce back up into these four, preferably into these 4010s, into these 15s, because once you got below 4,000, it opens the door for a potential continuation rally, because, well, not rally, continuation drop. Yeah, I guess to, to the downside, whatever you want to call that. Uh, we, we bounced off these 4010s the day we got uh, the jobs report, right? Straight move up. We reversed that completely, took out 4,000. Great. If we're going to go for a short, which is what I would prefer to do and try to be as far away from that as po this 4,000 as possible, is if we can get a nice little bounce here up into 15s, 20s even, and start to kind of taper off a little bit, just go start to lose some momentum. That's the ideal location for me in terms of risk, reward. It makes perfect sense to be short in this zone. I would, that's what I would look forward to. If we were to continue dropping, that's a completely different issue. I mean, I got to deal with that when it happens because I got to reprice where my stop is going to be and I have no clue at the moment. So what I'm going to look be looking for as the primary objective here is to get a nice little move going to the upside, which I can then fade. That's kind of all I'm looking, uh, looking to do here on the futures. That's the easiest trade. And on a week like this, on a day like this, even yesterday, you're looking for easy trades, right? You don't have that many opportunities to pick up trades especially in this market when it quiets down. Next week is a little different story, but this week you've got to take the ones that are really easy and if they're not perfectly easy or if they're not real, like very simple, then I, I would just pass upon them and come to something else. Now, I, I want to talk about crude as well because I did step into crude here. Obviously, you see the move in crude, right? We had that huge move reversal from that uh, daily resistance zone up here in 82.50 into that 85, huge move down. Went sideways for a bit, consolidation, after a big rally, good, and then broke down, attempted to come back up through 77, and then broke down again, and now is kind of just itching towards that 75.50. To me, that looks like a continuation to the downside, especially this little attempted rally here after breaking lows uh, from 77, 76.75-ish, bouncing back up and then reversing that. So what I went ahead and did, I'm gonna show you our internal chart because that actually has my trades. Um, if you guys can see that. So I initially took a short here at 92, got out. Then when it popped back in, I stepped in at 90, and now it's falling apart again. So that's 54 cents in the money, and in crude, each contract is worth 10 bucks per penny. So 54 cents multiplied by $10 times how many contracts you have is gonna be the trade there on crude. So right now it's breaking down through that 74, uh, 75 and change, 
I'm looking forward to a 75 break, but my primary target is if you go to the daily, you'll see the uh, daily move there. It's around 74 and change. So if we can get through 74, which we only saw one time a few days ago at the end of November, if 75, yeah, big round number, great. But 74 is going to be the critical one. I think if we break that, we can really open up some stops. So that's going to be my first target here. Until then, I'm just going to manage it through. You guys know I have it. I'm telling you guys about it. It's not on the screen, though. Oh, it is on the screen. Okay. Oh, we have NYMEX positions on the screen. Okay, that takes up way too much space, though. But anyways, uh, it is on the screen. So you guys will see me manage it through as we move on down. But for now, that's my play. Futures-wise, equity futures-wise, not a whole lot going on. But in terms of crude, uh, crude positions, there is opportunity there. And also in NAC gas as well. Since I'm talking about futures, might as well talk about NAC gas since we're there. NAC gas as well here, breaking through that 560 zone as we get underneath. This opens up the downside towards 520. I tried to look for a position here as well. I just couldn't price it. I, 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 don't, I have no clue how to price it here because of the way it's reacting. This is not as clean as crude. That's why I took crude over NAC gas. So we're gonna stick with crude for now. We'll leave NAC gas alone. It's getting a little messy here. So for now, we'll just roll with that. And I still gotta find some equity positions because remember, I'm looking for a bounce. So I'm looking for a fade. So I need to find positions that are willing to step back a little bit so I can fade a potential rally to the upside. All right, let's get into everything else you need to know this morning heading towards the open here. That's a link to the watch list, guys. We send out every single morning before we come on. Comes right to your inbox. Couldn't be easier. Just hit the link. Enter your uh, email address, and it just shows up. It's free. Why not? Uh, let's go to uh, some of these Chinese ADRs once again. Back to the upside. More positive talk coming out of China overnight as far as reopening is concerned. Even this morning, I heard there was a few comments coming through suggesting that this could start sooner than people think and uh, more talk on the, the fact that they could change these policies permanently. There was that and then this, JP Morgan not only increasing their long position in Billy Billy, but upgrading the entire group, the entire Chinese ADR group talking a lot more positively. If the banks, guys, and if some of these analysts are starting to like it, uh, I mean, that means they were buying probably a week, a week and a half ago. But uh, shall we jump on board? I mean, this, whenever I see stuff like this, it's like, it's almost a conflict of interest. Like, it, it's just hilarious that, you know, a bank could go ahead and take a huge position in, in equity and then go ahead, the same bank, and then upgrade their own position. You know, it's like, it's like, okay, guys, I'm short Tesla right now. And by the way, like, we are the, one of the largest firms, and we'd also like to downgrade Tesla at the same time. And not only that, just in case we don't get our message across, we're also downgrading, like, the whole EV space as well, to, just to make sure that our other EV holdings also go down. Don't know why I'm picking on EVs when we're talking about Chinese ADRs here. But, I mean, let's get stuffed, honestly, some of these guys. Like, I don't... Like, what created this stock to go from 27 down to nine? Was it probably JP Morgan shorting? And then all of a sudden, what, 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 when it gets down to these levels, what, is that where they start to buy? And then they're like, okay, well, the liquidity's not great, so maybe if we come with some upgrades, maybe we can get this thing going again, uh, let alone the market starts to rip, and then you're back up to the upside. So a little bit of tinfoil there, but I don't, I just, I find it hard to trust some of these Chinese ADRs. I'm not even sure... To be honest with you, what Billy Billy does, what their market cap is or anything. I do know that Alibaba is a pretty major player um, in, in all that. They have FinTech as well behind them with Ant. Excuse me, they're trying to spin that off. Didn't get approval to do that here. Uh, but I, oops, that's still Billy Billy. Alibaba, I know their accounting is supposed to be supposed to be pretty solid. Um, they have Singles Day. They're like similar to an online retailer, similar to Amazon. They have cloud, everything like that. So just like you know, these upgrades and downgrades keep coming through. Oh, and now we have. Oh man, this, the frustration for me today on various issues is getting to be out of hand a little bit. Uh, 91 uh, to the top and to the bottom there. I'm going to have to fix the charts even to go over some of these names. So, um, you know, really XPEV is the one that I'm looking at on, this, on the downside of things. And unfortunately, let me clean these charts up, but uh, I can't even really go over Alibaba. But when you're down here at, at a key $90 level, I feel like these, e these ADRs have gone way too far here based on um, if, if Microsoft's going to pull back, if Tesla's going to pull back, if Amazon's going to go down, 
I mean, how, how can these names continue to be high when some of these U.S. names, where Jamie Dimon came out just a half hour ago and said that U.S. is the strongest economy. Like, this is the, this is the messed up thing to me. It's like they're upgrading all these Chinese ADRs, and then they speak, you know, poorly sometimes of the Chinese economy, but have no problem holding these Billy Billy shares and upgrading the ADRs. So let's just wait to see what happens here. I'm a little frustrated uh, today looking at some of these names, but um, let's just watch out for $90. I think that's a pretty solid level. We'll wait for it to get down there for Alibaba. Billy Billy, I just don't trade enough uh, of it to have too much of a comment. Pinduo Duo has been an absolute rocket ship to the north side, so I'm not surprised. I am surprised that they're not, you know, telling, talking about their long PDD position. This was for, This is up 50, 100 uh, percent in a month and a half or so uh, for for PDD from the bottom. So some of these names, just as our accounts continue to bleed, if you had some Chinese exposure to the long side, then you're doing pretty darn well here. I look to fade all of these, man. This 89 level as well on PDD that looks like a great little short uh, to come in. You see yesterday starting to edge to the downside. I feel like you got blown out on the top here. That's 87. I look to fade 89 on any pop for PDD. So um, yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm doing here. Microsoft eyes super app to break Apple and Google's hold on mobile search. Short Microsoft. I, I, I mean, Microsoft, do not get involved in the mobile game, Microsoft. Didn't they try to release a phone or something? There was some kind of um, an OS for a phone, but they had, yeah, maybe it was Nokia or something. They had something, they had something for the mobile spot there. I don't like that idea at all. Meta's targeted ad model faces restrictions in Europe. Okay, uh, here we go. Meta, nice little move to the downside here. It looks like, uh, where's my one minute chart? That's still PDD. So this is what I'm talking about with our charts. There's a nice little move downside there for Meta with a new story coming out. Ad model, which is how they gain all of their revenue pretty much, faces restrictions in Europe. So a nice little move downside there for Meta, and it did bounce off. We wrote it down on the sticky note here that we liked Meta 120 long. This might have changed. It just bounced right off 120. I wish I was sitting there. It was not, uh, or else we'd have a dollar in the money. That, I'm not that lucky. Uh, let's wait to see what happens here with Meta. New news coming out on this name. Any opinions for you on some of these Chinese names? Uh, not really. I mean, Baba, maybe if we broke through uh, that very clean area, which is uh, 89, up until that point, it's just, you know, up and down, bounce, uh, you know, gap up, rather, <laughs> reverse that gap, and then gap up again, and we'll see. Now if we go, go in, uh, into that 91, we're probably going to hit some support, so I would just be careful with that. Easier trade, I think, is going to be the 89 break to the downside. I do want to say one thing about crude. The reason I, uh, you won't see me in position on crude, I, I actually walked away from crude uh, flat, actually, after being up 54 cents on it. Quick reversal after taking out 75.50, they did a complete U-turn here immediately right to the top end of this range. Now, what I'm thinking is, okay, if you want to do a fall, you know, like a bottom break, we know we've been sitting in front of that 75.50. It was wide open for stops. Take the stops, do a complete reversal. Okay, now I'm thinking potential longs is on the table on crude here, especially with what it's been doing since about 5:30 this morning. So we're about three hours in. And uh, or four hours, almost four hours in, and it's kind of stabilizing here in front of that 75.50 after taking the stops out. Okay, a little bit more, and I'll start looking at potential longs in crude. Uh, get, my primary trade was a short side, but clearly that's not going to work right now, at least for uh, at least for the moment, anyways. So we'll definitely keep an eye on crude because there's a lot going on. Even though it's down a percent, it doesn't tell the whole story because there's a lot of activity here. So definitely one to watch. Uh, interestingly enough, Apple's actually making a move higher. Not a huge one, but a nice little uptick here for Apple on that uh, Meta move down. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's the Wall Street Journal with that report, guys, for uh, Meta. Uh, heads up on that. Let's go to big tech here. Is it worth or is it time here for a bounce? Because these were the worst off. You can see what happened yesterday. We had that nice move initially out of the uh, gate to 150 on Apple, but uh, this grew pretty weak the entire day uh, following that down to 146. We're trying to bounce back up here for Apple. Tech bounce? Yeah, I mean, sure. Give me a tech bounce because I want to fade it. <laughs> I just want bounces. I mean, with Apple taking out, and the big thing is Apple at 150, the very obvious 150 break, right? And when you do something like that and you completely fail, uh, or you maybe you achieve what you wanted to do, which was flush people out, because uh, it went all the way to 150.92, almost 151. And then you hit that top end resistance level, possible trend line in play now. Why am I... 
Oh crap. What okay, happened? can you take this? I gotta, I gotta take. No, care of I can't take it. I'm not good. No, I'm just joking. Uh, of course, I can take this. Um, all right, so I'm just tweeting out that meta news right now for everybody watching. Follow me at Trader TV, Sean, where you'll find some relevant tweets uh, going through, hopefully for you guys. Um, all right, so you want to talk about Apple quickly here? Um, big tech bounce. It has to be led by Apple. We talked about this yesterday. If you don't have Microsoft on board, forget about sort of the strength that's been in Meta, and that's why I looked at it for the sticky note off that 120 level. It's been really great. But the, it's going to have to be led by Apple. Apple just bouncing around here, similar to what Arun was saying. Um, any kind of a bounce up, though, I still think that we have to fade and look to go short until Papa Powell comes next week um, and then sa saves this market again or tries to uh, with some of his, hopefully, his dovish talk. I feel like he's going to flip over at some point, but who knows when that's going to be. I feel like the tech needs to be led by Apple. But the problem is, according to this 50-period moving average at 146, you're right there right now now looking to tip that scale. So I would be very, very careful with this. We keep bouncing off of 146 here for Apple. I don't know why any of this news, Meta Platforms news, or Microsoft coming at them with possibly a new app store type of thing. I don't think that that's positive for Apple, but I also don't think it's negative, so it's just gonna float around. The one thing that I look and hold close to the heart, like I've been saying, and I talk about this on the trade of the days all the time, and that is is that relative strength, right? So you're up 0.55 versus a weaker market, 0.15. If the Nasdaq's gonna hold green today, Apple will continue to, make, to, to march higher. I just feel like if you're gonna get into the tech names, this is one of the safest. They have recurring revenues, um, for some reason, Tim Cook is at in Arizona as well today. So I feel like there could be something there um, with, with Apple maybe. I don't know if there's some sort of an announcement coming there. We know Elon Musk and Tim Cook have sort of become better friends after there was some back and forth backlash there uh, about the Apple Store and some of the costs associated with that as far as Twitter is concerned. Hopefully Elon doesn't worry too much about Twitter because we have Tesla on our mind. Microsoft, I feel like this has gone a little bit too quickly, too fast here. Um, you saw 240 as a bottom. That's been ripped up that day that the NASDAQ was up 7%. We had an 11 um, we had an $11 winner on this name that day, so it took all the way to the upside. But since then, it's had a problem with 256. So I actually looked to fade Microsoft. What I wrote down here was, let's look to fade out 255. Now, I don't know if that's going to come into play. Uh, yesterday, we only got to 253 before fading. We did have some good trades on Microsoft yesterday. They're not showing up. But for me, you're right at that key level again of 250. So let's see what happens here. That's where we're hovering around. We started to bump back up. The 200 period is at $250. I like that for support, generally speaking. So any dip down to 250, I think it's worth a long here on Microsoft. And then Apple, I kind of want to fade with a rune here. And if you're okay, I'll throw it back to yeah, you yeah. because those are the kind of tops that I'm looking to fade as well. But I'll give it back to the guy over here. Yeah, Apple, uh, for me, Amazon's it was the 150 uh, fail move above the above 150, the failed move, hitting a trend line, top end no. resistance. It just opens the door for a nice downside move. Even if we bounce back up today, we're at, what are we trading at right now? 137, 140, 137, 147 and change. We can still go up to 148, 149 and still be somewhat negative because of what it did yesterday and where it did it. So there's a lot of space to the upside before we even hit that sell, sell marker, I guess. So. Again, this kind of lines up with what the market wants to do, which is stabilize around these 4,000. So it's easy to, for us to easily get a you know, nice little bounce here in the futures market, which will take Apple with it, or Apple will take the market with it, and then I'm looking for the fade here. I could be completely long, wrong on this move, but off the type of day that we got yesterday, I would like to continue the extension. I just don't want to do it at 4,000 because of the strength that you're going to get here, round numbers. Decent strength, it seems like, overnight. Even right now, we seem to be stabilizing above these 4,000. We keep trying to get underneath 4,000, but no, we, we keep going down and coming right back up. So I'm looking for a move into this zone here, this yellow zone, so potential fades into there. But they need to set up, because you know if you're going to fade it, that means you're going to go against the current strength, which means you could get run over if you just go for the sake of taking it, right? You've got to kind of wait for it to show signs that, hey, it's not going to go anymore. I think it's starting to taper off a little bit. So that's what I'm looking to do here on Apple as well as the market. All right, more movement here coming out of uh, a European headline, uh, this time with Amazon, guys. So Amazon agreeing to some sort of deal. It doesn't go into much, but uh, Financial Times saying Amazon agreeing to some sort of deal to close an EU antitrust probe 
and that will come into effect December 20th. So there was a spike there on Amazon trying to get back up to uh, 92. Uh, the Apple angle with TSM, uh, if anyone missed it yesterday, uh, TSM announced that NVIDIA and Apple will be the first customers to uh, buy chips out of that Arizona plant. So uh, that's why both NVIDIA CEO and Apple's Tim Cook going to be there in Arizona today. Uh, let's go to the banks. They were also relatively weak yesterday. Uh, the only real notable uh, name today is uh, JP Morgan. Morgan Stanley with a double upgrade to overweight. They had this at underweight. Uh, they go to overweight for JPM, guys. I'm just talking with Michael Noss right now. He said that one of the best moments of Trader TV Live history was me telling uh, JP Morgan to go stuff themselves there on, on, on that upgrade. Um, uh, and I'm just telling him if he has anything else from Trade Ideas, scanners or anything like that that he wants me to look at uh, to show for the show, Michael, let me know because I'm, I'm here to help uh, out Trade Ideas. Such a solid platform, honestly. And I even have some of the um, you know scanners going now. They're not, they're not effective now because it's only 920. All my stuff sort of starts at 930. So we're gonna have a look uh, there as well. Are banks along? I mean, this is another thing. I was looking at the banks and honestly thinking, you know, about trying to fade some of that. So um, it's been a huge move up. Generally what I've done in the past, and I did this with Netflix, like Netflix ripped up to that 290 area and I got out and now it's what 320. I know I haven't looked at it today. What it's doing today it was down to 311 yesterday. Um, but I'm looking at JP Morgan as well and saying, holy crap, what a move up this has been for the banks. Um, and then we talked about this yesterday, running right into this 140 area where we topped out at 144, also matches out with that bottom and then that top. And we are running in right now to this last bounce spot that we've had. This was a 116 up to 133. Now we have a 105 bottom up to 140. I'm thinking these banks are getting a little frothy up here and possibly gonna be set up for a short uh, back in. So I would say you watch out for the banks. Although like Brendan said, I mean, the story is that they're relatively strong. So I, I, I wanna fade today. Like, I don't know, even though the market is down, is up today, me and, I don't know what your opinion is around here, mm. but I'm gonna keep that bull uh, hibernated okay. a little bit. Bulls don't hibernate, but we have the bear out right now. Uh, and I think despite the market being up right now on the NASDAQ, although the ES is flat, I still feel like it's a negative day. So any kind of a move up here, I'm looking at this 133.50 or so area for JP Morgan. I think that's a good short yesterday's high. So if banks were sort of rallying, I and mean, that's not yesterday's high, this is this morning's high. Uh, but if yesterday, if we're saying the banks are rallying and then they went from 135 yesterday, almost in a straight line to the downside, why can't we do the same thing today. That's 133.50 straight line back into this 131. So I feel like you could have the same patterns here today. Let's try to short this up at 133.50. I'm going to sit there and try to take that. Yeah, banks are not as clear as I would prefer. Uh, I mean, you're looking at JP Morgan. I'm looking at Citigroup and I'm just like, mm, do I want to short this? But this is a daily. Yeah, it looks negative, but then it's actually going into support here at 45 and 44. 43 it gets real real messy down here so even if you were to bring this into the uh intraday chart here it would it wouldn't be as clean so i'm going to try and stay away from banks as much as i possibly can unless there's a super clean trade remember this is where that zone that we marked off it's all right below us so here we are for now but uh, i would just you know tread carefully if you are going to trade it but, but definitely tread carefully all right, um, I'm going to make a uh, change here, uh, just because I have the ma magic button and I can. Uh, let's talk, I had GME up next here, guys, but it's really not doing anything. If you missed it, we discussed it a little bit earlier. Uh, GME announced some layoffs after market yesterday, or there was a report of some layoffs coming after market yesterday, but uh, get ready because we're now gonna talk a little bit about um, SI instead. Didn't have uh, SI on the board, but downside big time here this morning, 7.5%. Uh, there's a few different angles to this. Apparently, Senator Warren now uh, looking into this as well. But uh, FTX, or Silvergate, apparently did some in-depth, quote-unquote, due diligence on FTX when that whole unraveling was happening. So uh, Silvergate down on that. There's also a Morgan Stanley note that came out yesterday. Uh, with a double downgrade on this one as well. Bounce off 21 here a couple of times, guys. What do we do with SI here? Really, Silvergate? Really? Don't tell me what's it doing. Like, 
Come okay. on, man. Okay. Like, I had this trade yesterday, and you did absolutely nothing. Like, I jumped on board underneath 24, and you did absolutely nothing, and I had to get out with, like, a 20-cent hit by the end of the day. And then you're going to gap down $3 and or gap down and move $3 to the downside now? It has to be now? Come on. All right, let's go to the daily, though. Um, that's where the initial trade was based on, so we'll see if we can't jump on board on that trade again. Yeah, that's it, right? That's the daily. They were pressing against that 24. That's the break I was looking for. Obviously, now we got that extension. I'd like to participate in it, in it again if I can get it. Where is it trading right now? Let's see. It's, it's at 20, uh, 2250 on the bid, on the offer. Okay, if we can get into 24s again, I would, I would love to participate or re-enter at least somewhere close by. I don't mind even 23 half and change because I do like the daily. The daily looks fairly solid. They've been pressing against that 24. Finally got the break. Now we got the move down below. If we can get a nice little rally into it, which would kind of fall in line with what I'm looking for the market to do, not that SI is going to do the same thing, but at the same time, I would mind a little move to the upside, which I can fade on SI as well. So we'll put some offers out higher up, close to that breakdown point around 24. If we can get a fill, great. If not, I'll let it go. I think the opportunity was for that 24 break real quick, and now we're just, you know, it's not, it happened overnight. Now we just got to kind of reposition if we can. If we can't, let it, let it go. All right, I have Silvergate here. I mean, I'm surprised it's bumped back up here. I, I, I did watch this stock and I did have it on the, uh, sorry, I am watching it. I do have it on the sticky note here to look for a 24 fade. Very similar to what you were doing yesterday, obviously. If we can get something back up here, I'm waiting at 23.50 for a little bit of a bounce. It has recovered nicely to the upside right now. Big bounce, actually, like that's 10%, like 21 up to 20, well, it has to get to 23 to be 10%, but that's that's pretty close, almost 10% from that bottom. So these names are wild, man. Silvergate was down 15% when I came in. Uh, now it's only down seven, so it's been recovered nicely. Right back into this 2260 marker. I don't think it's ever a good idea or good um, look when you're getting investigated. So for me, we're gonna be shorting on Silvergate. Um, yeah, I don't know, let's go to GitLab quickly because we only have three minutes. Nice, uh, nice beat for GitLab right across the board. It was a smaller loss, still loss, but smaller than expected. And then they raised their forecast going forward, full year forecast to the upside. So uh, the only notable earnings name here, uh, GTLB, up big. Yeah, GTLB up big, but trickling down. I'm going to try to use this as a potential way to get long. I do like the idea of potentially going long here against these 43s. So if this market can fall a little bit more or just keep going down or even take me in off the open because we know how you know aggressive it can be off the open when prints are just flying everywhere. So if I can just get filled in front of 43, that would make things easier for me. So the breakdown, breakout, going back into support uh, is what I'm looking for. Obviously, clean downtrend. You do have to worry about the downtrend, but if we're trying to get long here at 43 and we're, we're um, coming through here, I, I think it'll just, is this the right chart? Yeah, it is the right chart, okay. If we can just come down here into that previous high, I think it'll just keep us away from that trend line, make the risk reward make sense. Because if I'm going long here around 43, the stop on this is about 41, two bucks. If I can get it back to that trend line, that's about 46, 40, 550-ish. I'm getting a decent payout there if I can take it back to the trend line. So that's what I'm trying to do. The dangerous part of this is that if they respect the trend line, they do a complete reversal. I just think that there's some support that I can work with. I just need to get the right prices to make sense of it if I'm going to go against the trend line. It's a dangerous play to make, obviously, but the risk reward is there. Potential is there. It seems like it's got some, you know, got some previous resistance that will act as support. So we'll see if we can't get that fill. If I can't get the fill, again, I'm, I only want one specific price. If I can't get it, I'm not taking it. But it's going to be a very clear trade for me. This, these are the kind of trades I want in this market, which is very clear. If I can get the price, I'm going for the long. If I can't get the price, I'm not touching it. All right, uh, let's go. I'm not even looking at GitLab. Um, there's too much stuff happening right now. We're going to get ready to rock and roll. Meta just took down uh, that 120 area, so we're scrapping that idea. You're down through 120 already on Meta, so that could be a downward move uh, here today. Already down 2%. This name has been getting uh, a nice bump recently, so this is the, this is where we look to go to the downside. I, I, I see what you're saying there, Kevin. Uh, you're saying Meta, 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 Sean. What do you want me to do about this? Uh, what areas are you looking at right now, guys? Is this a short because we've broken through against that 121? 
I'm leaning towards that being the case, a short here for Meta. So hopefully we can, um, I, I don't know. I, so actually, let me, let, me, let me just take that back a little bit. I'm actually not leaning anywhere for Meta right now. I'm not sure which way to go because we've already broken some levels. So let's wait to see if that comes through. Silvergate, we already have that. Amazon, we wanted our 90, oops. Amazon, we wanted our 92 short. Is that gonna come into play today? Looks like that's already fading. I remember, I mean, we just talked about putting that bull, uh, that bear into a bull, and I was like, no, I think I'm getting the feeling that we are going to be a little bearish uh, here today. So maybe the only name that really hasn't gone yet is going to be Microsoft. So let's have a quick look at that name. Yeah, that's still at that 250. So watch out for a 250 break coming up on Microsoft, especially if this market can't get wings underneath it, man. So we're going to watch out for that 250 break on Softy could be coming, and that's one that I'm going to test a short with, I think, with only now 15 seconds to go, man. Uh, we have Katrina on the bell, so that's always nice. We're going to get that bell lowered in a couple seconds. And there it is. The countdown is now on. Get ready to rock and roll, man. There's a couple names we're looking at for sure with eight, seven, six. Here we go. Locked and loaded on Trader TV Live. Four, three, two, and one. There we go. There we go. Oh my God, I'm already in something here. All right, so JP Morgan, we're already in that short. So let's see what happens here with JP Morgan. We are already in this short for JPM. So we're gonna watch to see if this takes out that 133.50 area. JP Morgan just came in pretty quick there. It's not open yet. Let's see if we can put something on the bid. Ah, uh, get live, taking off north there of 44. There we go, nice trade. Okay, damn it. Oh, oh no, it came back down. Okay, um, again, we're trying to get some specific prices on GitLab. Uh, Damn, that was quick. <laughs> Damn, wow. this is a dollar in the money right now on JP Morgan. Uh, nice little move to the downside here. Look at this. We just took that 133.50. We talked about that earlier. So good trade here for us so far on JPM. Sort of interrupt. I just want to let people know that we are. I'm out of now 60% of this. Let's see what happens now the rest of the day. It's so far so good here on JP Morgan. Yeah, uh, we got a short on uh, Google and a long on GitLab. We got the price that we wanted on GitLab, that was just a quick move. It was about 44, 44.50, and then came right back down to 43 and change. Got a fill at 43.23, and now we're about 15 cents out as it bounces back around. I'm going for shorts on Google. Why? It seems kind of weak through here. I want to play that 100 mark and see if we can actually get an extension down. It's, Google seems to be the candidate to go for if you're going to play for the short. Visa, we talked about Visa earlier. Thank you for bringing it up, Daniel. I'm trying to get my offer in. Wow, Man, it look broke at this market. through uh, 213, and it is uh, gone, at two, gone to 210. My offer is in. I'm not getting the price that I want. That was a quick break, and that happened right at the open, too. So that was a tough one to uh, participate in, but the offer is in. If I can get, I like the daily chart on this if I can get the price that I can uh, I want then I'm all for it. If I can't, I'm gonna have to let this one go, but thank you for bringing it up for me though. Apple, like there's so many stocks that are starting to rip right now, man. Like Microsoft is ripping right now. DraftKings, Shopify maybe to the downside. The market is trying to move to the downside. Look at Apple though. Uh, that's still Microsoft. Come on charts. Oh man, today's been a little frustrating. Microsoft upside, Apple downside. So Apple is pulling down as Microsoft uh, goes back up to the upside. What kind of levels? Oh wow, it's a good thing we got out. Oh no, well now we're reloaded in JP Morgan uh, upside right now. So we gotta watch out for this level. JP Morgan. Good thing we took some out, but now we are reloaded up on the upside here for JP Morgan. So we are going to watch out for that. There's Silvergate 2350 coming into play. We're watching out for a 24 break. So yeah, we're into a few things here, man. Uh, today we said it was going to be a spicy one, and it looks like we are not disappointing here today. Uh, so far into two good decent positions. Let's see if the Silvergate one will work. We also do have JP Morgan as we watch out for these futures trying to bounce back uh, upside right now. We need to find a few longs as well. We only have two shorts now. Uh, Xpeng maybe. We talked about that 11 bounce. Where is that rate this second? Up wow, look at this move. There we go. Like This is why. Good thing we stayed away. Uh, straight to the upside 12 bucks. It did tick down to 11.35. Unfortunately, I'm bidding 11.11. There goes JP Morgan. Still a positive name for us, but we did take advantage and then, you know, it did take out the top. JP Morgan starting to go upside and Silvergate still hanging around. So looks like banks are strong here today. Yep. Um, okay. Well, you're playing the banks. I'm not playing the banks. I'm trying to get my crude position back. No, uh, well, flips, flip side, actually. From the short, we got out flat on the short. I'm trying to get the long. I do like the idea of that reversal play, especially after the lows got taken out. I'm not going to pay 76.58, though. That price is way too high. I, I want it closer to 76 even, even 76.10 if I can get it, because I'm going to price the risk down all the way into the mid-75s. That's about 50, 60 cents in risk. So I'm going to need the price specifically around 76 for me to make sense of uh, this trade here. For now, we're going to leave crude alone. The orders are out. We'll let that one, if we can get the fill, great. If not, fine. SI up 17 cents. Google up uh, 10 
13 cents now. And uh, GitLab, GitLab's out 40 cents, but I mean, it's at the right prices. I'm getting the prices that I wanted. It's taking out 43, it seems. It should hit some support here. If we don't get the support, then it probably is gonna fall off and I'm probably gonna take a hit on this, but that's okay. If you look at the daily, Again, we're playing against the trend line, but at the same time, we're playing into kind of previous resistance. So if we can get that support, it'll be a nice bounce. But if we don't, it, it's probably going to fall off a little bit here. But for now, that's okay. SI is working out well now. It's you have SI too? Yeah, 58 Booyah. cents in the money as it moves uh, moves on down right back through so that what, 24. What price do you have? Oh, nice, 67. nice, good. Okay, good. Yeah, got? so we're both, we're both got it good. 50? I got 50s. Nice. Uh, he's got 67s. Good trade so far on that one. Um, we are into meta short. So again, I've sort of decided that, hey, if we're going to play meta, let's go to the short oh, side today on that. some of that negative news. The market is pulling back. It's a good trade so far. GameStop, we talked about getting long down there at 25. I know it's not a crazy trade. I don't know where this one's going to go. Let's see if we can't make a little bit of money on uh, this GameStop move here. It's going to break through 25. Looks like that's probably going to happen. So uh, any kind of a move through on GameStop, we do want to get out uh, on a 25 break. So watch out for GME. I actually got to put that stop order in right now uh, for GameStop. Our Silvergate, yes, I'm glad that Arun and I uh, both have that one on as that seems to be going pretty good right now as well. So I'm just putting my order out now because we do have some decent shares here on GameStop. Stop. Let's see where we go on that one. And there's a nice little win so far here on Meta. We just got 50, so we went short. 90, sorry, short. What am I short here? I can see it on the board anyways. We're short 95s, and we just got 58s. So, so far, so good on that one. And a little bit of a pop here on GameStop. Let's see if we can take advantage of that uh, as it's trying to go to the upside. I just, put, I just offered 23s there. So let's see if we get a pop here on GameStop as the market's kind of dancing. Nice trade on SI, guys, uh, all the way to the downside. Good trade here. Yeah, okay. There we go, uh, GameStop pop. Uh, can I get this order in? Let it's been a busy order. day. Hit the like button, guys, yeah. while you can. I know Arun's busy. We're always throwing out some orders here, man. We're trying to take advantage of this market move. I mean, this is what Arun and I do, man. We're trying to be like thieves in the night, taking some key trades here, getting slapping them out. I mean, look at Meta right now. I'll take another piece right now if we can get it. There it is. Another piece out at 70 on Meta. Let's go to the upside now. GameStop, good trade as well. Uh, we just got out at 23. Let's see if we can get out a little bit more now. Um, and then hopefully this name will continue to make a move off of 25. So far, so good. Let's go GameStop. Let's go Meta. Meta collapsing. Meta right now, 70 cents in the money. Let's put an eight, 118 bid. Man, no Neil, no problem. Let's go. We banging out some nice trades here today. I've got my man beside me here. Arun crushing it now as well. Let's go on these trades, man. GameStop upside, Meta upside, SI, or sorry, Meta downside, SI downside, all as well. Hope you guys are enjoying yourself today. Yeah, a couple orders I'm sending out here on Datadog. I don't know if you guys have traded that in a while, but it's making a nice little breakthrough 70. It's already broken. I'm just trying to get my order in because it happened fairly early. Now, daily-wise, it, it's open to the downside. That's the reason I'm really chasing after this. I'm not, probably not going to get 70 even. I, I also don't want to wait that far. So I'm going to try to get this as close to 50 as possible here as it comes back in a little bit here. So we are going to take a shot here. Damn, GitLab's still falling. I guess we, we're not going to hit that right support that point. One. GitLab's still moving on down. That's going to be a hit here. So we'll see if we can get a fill here on uh, DDoG to the downside. NVIDIA as well through 165 to the downside as well as it uh, takes a second shot through that 165. And uh, this is what the daily looks like. So I'm all for that if I can get that short here on um, NVIDIA as well. GitLab, damn it. Yeah, SI retracing back as well. I'm glad we got some of those 23s out. Remember, we are going to hold this one back until about, I'm just checking the stop order there, until a 24. Yeah, here it comes up to the upside now. Uh, it looks like we will wind up pushing the L on this one as well here uh, for GitLab as they are starting to come back a little bit. We didn't take enough advantage of Meta uh, to the downside. So let's, there we go. We just got a bid out on Meta. There goes SI the through. Run. So SI did rip up. That's okay, man. We're, we're actually down a cup of coffee on it now, but that's a big move up there for SI. We were definitely not expecting that move, guys. So, uh, Good trade so far uh, today. GameStop trying to work as well. Right back up to that 23 level. Sorry about that on Silvergate. I mean, I really thought we did have a decent spot there uh, on board for SI. It looks like we do not. But I know we have one on Meta. Let's just see if Meta can continue to fall. We just took another piece out there at 40. That seems like, or sorry, at 60. That seemed like that might have been a little bit of a mistake as Meta climbing uh, back up to 119. That looks like that's going to be another short area. It's too bad that we missed that, though. Uh, what's up, Brendo? A uh, little one moving, guys. This was uh, way back when, if you remember, during the pandemic. Uh, Bio Nano Genomics was a uh, hot stock. It's all the way back to $2, uh, but popped up on positive news this morning. Had a volume spike there for bingo. Uh. Damn it, Crude. Crude's left the station. That train is gone. Now uh, at 76.80. That was a tough one. 
had the shorts. It did a complete reversal. We managed to dodge the bullet on the, uh, on the short by getting out flat. Never got a chance to get long because we were a little slow to, the, uh, to kind of decide that, hey, maybe it's time to reverse. And then once we got the order in, it, uh, it was uh, gone already. So we're going to have to let crude go. I'm going to pull the order on crude. It's too late for that. SI, S I'm actually surprised you got out of SI. Because like it, I, I thought that 24 area was going to be the level to work with. So if, yeah, we, if we're coming back in, in into that area, if anything, it's it's a great resistance level. So, I mean, I, I'm sticking with it for now, at least through these 24s. Where's my stop on SI? Uh, yeah, it I is probably take it again. North of 26. So I'm putting up the risk to make sure that we play through that 24. You're going to need to force my hand to get out. Uh, uh, if we're going to break through I mean, 24. It went to 24.50 there. Yeah, but I mean, like, given how long we spent around that 24 trying to crack through, I guess it wouldn't be that surprising that we come back in. So if you're going to make me lose on this, force my hand, take me out as high as possible here. 26 to me makes it look like this pattern has completely failed. So I'm sticking with it. SI now back in the money, about 18 cents here. As we crack through the 24, came back in. That's perfectly fine. That happens, especially when we're trading within the first five to 10 minutes of the open, you're gonna see some crazy movement. So as it comes back in, perfectly fine. We'll let it play. We'll see if this can actually catch some legs to the downside after getting rid of that initial buy, buy move, I guess. And actually, it's not even initial. We started at what, 9.15? Down here at 21, nice little buy move, but we did crack 24, perfectly wow. fine. Here we are kind of going through. Futures market hasn't done anything, but everything on my screen has done a lot here. Well, GitLab was out of the money, like $1.60 something. Now, then it was like 40 cents, and now it's like $1.42 out. GitLab all over the place, but we're not getting the support that I wanted here on GitLab at the level that I wanted, so uh-oh. GameStop dropped as well there. I mean, some of these profits were in and then they're out almost as fast as they were in right now. Um, you know, one name that we talked about, I mean, look at, look at Meta. I mean, this is a good name for, we got, I got back into SI, by the way. Uh, but Meta, there it is, nice little take on SI as well as we're making some money back. We, did, we got back in there at 70 uh, when you were talking about that break at 24, because I looked at the notes as well, and I had 24 written down. So I just got in a little bit too early, but we did take advantage of it. So we'll make a little bit of money back on SI right now. But look at Meta, man. If this is not going to be the siren uh, for the day, I mean, this name, we talked about it breaking through 120. Now you're at 117.50, and this name continues to go down. We're now at $1.30 in the money on uh, Meta. What's up, Brendan? Uh, Signet Jewelers, uh, SIG, a big move here off of uh, earnings. Nice report. Uh, they also raised their full year 2023 uh, sales forecast. So 17%. This is a $70 stock almost. Already gone from 60 up to 69 for SIG. Signet Jewelers. And you're there. breaking through that 68. Okay, I see you on the daily. This We're talking about crude? No, 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 on say, uh, Signet, oh, Sig, what, Sig, what Sig. you just yeah, brought yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, I like the fact that you're taking out those uh, 68s. The only problem is you need to stabilize. This has gotten way too hot. I mean, that's not how I want a 68 break to happen. If I'm going to go off the daily, I'd rather do it much slower so we can develop some levels. But this is just straight up from 64. We're going to give it a chance. I'll set the alert off here and put, put it uh, north of 68. But I just want to keep it on my screen but I don't want to get involved just yet here on Signet because of how fast it's moved up. I do like the idea of potential longs, but it's too hot right now. Futures market breaking to the downside here at 94s. We've been here before. We haven't done, this is nothing new, but we are getting back. Oh no, this is something new. Okay, well, this is the, a new low, huh? Go figure. It, on my chart here, it didn't look like we were doing a whole lot, but now we are breaking through, I guess, in new intraday lows. So as we come through here, let's see if these shorts are gonna pick up some steam here. We're short Google. Datadog and SI, all in the money, at least 30 cents here on SI. GitLab is the one that's running me over here as it refuses to catch a bid. It's the one long. We knew we were going against the trend line and we were trying to catch a bid off the previous resistance levels. We're not getting any help right now, it seems. So we're gonna have to probably take a hit on that one there as it continues this downward move. Uh, NVIDIA, that 165 break on NVIDIA, damn, NVIDIA is still going on down. It's that 164 and change. I'm going to leave the order for now if I can get that NVIDIA fill on a pop, but it doesn't seem like it as the market breaks down now through 90. Yeah, this is, this is wild, man. This has been a pretty crazy day here today once again. Um, as you guys are just watching, some of these markets just fall apart uh, a little bit right in front of us. So, um, you know, we do, it's too bad. Like, I wish we, obviously I keep saying this, but I wish we had some more shorts available here uh, to me, but I've only opened up SI. And I mean, all these, oh, shoot, I have these bids on JP Morgan because of when we were short uh, on JP Morgan. And now look at JP Morgan absolutely falling down. So I got I to gotta, I gotta cancel some of these bids. Uh, it's okay, we, we're, we're up on, these are just little, 
little bids that we had in there. JP Morgan made a huge rip to 135 and then just faded out like crazy right now. So some big movements uh, happening for us right, right in front of our face now. Uh, as look at this, man, I mean, good hold on SI. I'm glad I'm back in, but look at Meta. This name is just completely collapsing here. I, I'm probably gonna hold this for, I mean, maybe now we can hold it all day. I mean, you're right back down to 117 here. So this has been a big move to the downside for Meta. Just continues to collapse. And I don't really see, um, you know, too much of a, a holding pattern here uh, for them. I mean, it's a straight downside. We tweeted out that news when it happened, literally the minute it happened uh, out there, the EU looking at some of their ad uh, supported um, methodologies and things like that. So I didn't even read the story. I just know the headlines. So you can see Meta definitely getting hit on that downside. We talked about wanting to short Microsoft. Microsoft, that's well off now. Uh, Microsoft was up to 252. It looks like it's trying to break 250 right now. So that could be also an area that we talked about for concern uh, on the short. So watch out for that uh, right now. Microsoft looking to take down 250. It's actually doing it as we speak. So uh, that should happen. What is that level 250, 40? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about a short right now in Softy. This market's not going anywhere but to the downside. So let's put that short on right now on Microsoft uh, as it's going to break 250 anyways. Yeah, oh, Nvidia still gone. Now is that 163 and a half? Damn it, Brendan. Uh, just working my way through some earnings here. Sumo, another one, big mover so far today. SUMO with a uh, smaller than expected Q3 loss, but their forecast was not as good as expected, but still up notably for SUMO. You can see aftermarket, nice move up on the report. All right. Um, I mean, we just talked about shorting Microsoft. I mean, and then. <laughs> There it is, man. I mean, it just goes right down into the low 60s again. We'll see if we can take a bid out now um, as that's what we're sort of waiting to happen. There it is, so nice little take again uh, as we'll go fail on these markets, man. Look at Microsoft just tanking. We talked about a 250 fill. There it is right there. Uh, we're short Microsoft 80. We only got 89s. We don't have the best fill there, but it's a good trade uh, to the downside. Now look at Microsoft collapsing. I mean, what kind of trade is this? Meta, $3.250 in the money. Microsoft at 40 cents in the money. And SI continues to tank as well now. So yeah, big time movements to the downside. Microsoft just touched 249 flat there. Let's see if there's any retracements back. I'm going to be shorting this one until it takes out 250.50, uh, which is right around there, that mark where I probably should have been short in the first place. Let's see what happens now with Microsoft still going to the downside, guys. Yeah, I got a bunch of names to pick from. Which one do you want to short? Do you want to continue yesterday's Etsy short? That looks pretty solid. I'm going to see if I can't price that in somewhere. We got NVIDIA. These are all alerts that I've gone, gone off that I haven't gotten around to yet. NVIDIA through 165, Netflix through 310, Tesla through 178.75, obviously Cigna's there, uh, Signet, uh, Etsy through 136, and TSM through 80. Now, it just bounced back on TSM, but I, I got to go through these alerts and find some names because... Uh, there's a lot of choices, right? And with the market breaking the way it is, there's going to be a lot more than you would expect here. And I, I, NVIDIA, obviously, I may have to just give up on NVIDIA. I'm trying to price it as close to 165 as possible. I'm probably not going to get that. I think Tesla is a pretty good option. Tesla and Etsy seem to be pretty good options here for potential shorts at this point. Now, given where we are, Tesla a little bit more, take it through 177.5. I'm, all, I'm on board because that will take out a multi-day low here going back to November 23rd. You see this base, right? You just need to get through it. Once you get through it, it opens the door to the downside. So that just gets my attention on what Tesla is about to do or potentially break through a major level. So if we can get that, perfect. I'm all for that. And then Etsy, we just got to continue yesterday's trade. Remember, we, we ran out of time yesterday. That's where we kind of walked away. Uh, yeah, we ran out of time right around that 70, 136 and change. And now it's breaking through 136 and uh, 135.50. And the, you look at the daily on this and you're like, oh, okay, this makes perfect sense because there's a ton of space to the downside. So I'm definitely going to prioritize Etsy here on the move back up towards that 136. You're loving Etsy. Um, yesterday as well was a good trade for Etsy. I mean, this meta trade is now trying to bounce off that 116.50. Like, I want to stay in this name, man, as much as we can as the market just continues to fall down. Microsoft still 70 cents in the money. SI is actually not going down. But this is what you have to do sometimes is wait, pick your poison on some of these names, man. And I think we've done a really good job uh, today to have some of these big flyers to the downside. If there's any sort of name that you guys want us to look at that potentially we have and please put them in the chat. I know Snapchat is moving. I'm just looking at my notes now. Meta, Snapchat. Um, let's go over to Amazon uh, was, a, was, was a name that we've liked 
like to short. It's been pretty choppy here today. Not much happening. This has been a pretty good decline uh, down in some of these spots. Uh, you know what? We got to look at Meta here because if this market rips back up here, because just because Meta got flushed, 11770, I'm going to get out of Meta. That's sort of that 200 period there. So if that comes back in, I do want to get out of that one. Um, and then I'm. I'm fine with Microsoft. It's just, that was a decent move down to 249. I'm gonna put another bid down here somewhere lower on Microsoft. Uh, well, I mean, maybe the market just continues to fail here. I don't know, but I, I, I just watch Meta making a move back to the upside. So if a lot of this cracking down was sort of the start of, of this talk here, then maybe if we do bounce back, there is a trade uh, here for a bounce back play, right? So we need to maybe find something that we know is gonna be relatively strong on a play back. Wow, look at AMD is actually very, very far down into some support here for AMD, down to 71.50. Actually, you're well below uh, some support levels now for advanced micro devices, down to 71. We're just bouncing off that. That's a nice little retracement back up, though, to 71.80, and then a, a move back in, 71.50. Wow. Let's see if AMD takes 71.50. I actually want to go short AMD here. This has been pretty bad today. 71, what is the bottom of AMD? 71, yeah, let's take this on a break back lower. I want to take this one. Uh, against that bottom of the day. So let's go a little short here on AMD if it takes the bottom there, uh, 71.50, and then we'll hold it to that top, 71.80. So I wanna get short more names here uh, today. So there goes, again, it looks like Meta failed pretty easily there at 117.50 and starting to head back to the downside. So now we're $2.20 in the money on Meta and that just keeps on falling. No real areas for me of concern now. We've already taken this out, that bottom wick. I mean, maybe into here, 116.50. We've already talked, I, I think this is an out for me, 116.50 right now. I think this is an out as we can hold on to our Microsoft trade as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch out for that. Let's watch out for this out here right now. I'm gonna take it on Meta, so, and just ring the register. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this out right now, guys. 116.50. Let's just hold it a little bit because now it's really coming in. There's some size there at 50. Let's see if it just ticks up a little bit. We'll get, yeah, there it is, okay. Um, I'm happy, 116.60, take, we're out. Trying to talk my way in and out of these trades, my guy. What happened? What you, uh, no, nothing, what do you, what do you, what do you got okay, on? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get myself out of this. There we go, yeah, yeah. we are now out of Meta. Into right. AMD. All right. Um, okay. For, for me, I mean, I'm kind of <laughs> tapped out. I think I've got everything I need here at this point. We're into six different <laughs> shorts. All of them I think I, 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 I would prefer uh, to keep on board. Amazon bricking. Damn it. Am I going to have to take a seventh? Amazon was a pretty good one through 90 as well. Shit. Yeah. Amazon, you got Amazon? I yeah, like that Amazon's trade. breaking through 90. Uh, it looks solid on the daily, too. A lot of these names that I'm picking up are all daily moves. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of having a hard time passing up on them. Um, okay, we're into six different shorts. We've got Netflix short. Remember, we talked about Netflix through 310. We got 309.63. Etsy, we talked about in front of uh, 136. We got 135.97. Google, we've got short earlier. It was in front of 100. Uh, 199.96, that's up 60 cents. D-Dog, we talked earlier. We took earlier around 69.50. We got 47s. That's up 36 cents. And then SI and SE, both out of the money in 30, 30 and 40 cents. So for now, it seems like, you know, I'm four for, no, Netflix is bouncing around. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, the level twos are going to be bouncing around. Or level one prices are going to be bouncing around on a lot of these expensive names. So they're going to be in and out. But now I've got to keep an eye on Amazon. Amazon breaking through that 90. I'm not going to take the initial break, but I do want to see how this trades here. As the market bounces back from these mid uh, 88, 85s, I do want to see how this one plays through here. 90, Amazon's been weak. We've seen it for the last few days here, at least when I've been on. We've, it's been weak. We were as high as 97. And now here we are breaking 90 to the downside. A couple early moves, consolidation did nothing. And then yesterday kind of trended down from that 94 all the way, stopped at 91. Obviously 90 being a big round number, everyone's paying attention to it. That's why I like to wait and see how this market trades or this stock trades around this 90. If we get more selling, if it's just stop runs, the last thing you wanna do is go short when it's just a stop run because then you're priced in and this thing snaps back, right? So we'll just wait on this one a little bit more. I'll rearm the alert on Amazon, see if it can actually get back underneath 90 and stay. If it can, I'm all for it. If not, I've got six shorts, I'm okay. It'll be perfectly fine if I miss out on one more.
Uh, yeah, let's go, man. I mean, now we're reloaded up here on AMD. I mean, we're trying to get this uh, to come through for us, man, uh, on AMD. A couple shorts into that 7180. I just covered something at 50 there. Uh, hopefully, it can come back in. It will take another 50 bid uh, there, but it looks like it does want to start to inch up a little bit. But again, I'm trying to stay strong on some of these shorts. I know we got out of our meta. Let's just check back in on that one. So that's a good out, man. We got almost the bottom of the day there for meta so far. Let's see if it is the bottom. And then our Microsoft is starting to inch up a little bit as well right now uh, but you know we'll just get have to watch if this market takes out 11700 which it might want to do to the bottom then we could have something but for right now I'm just trying to watch AMD up to 7180 is where I want to be in this Well, I'm in the short but I want to be in it until it breaks through that 7180 and then we do have some more downside pressures I'm hoping for uh, here to come through for AMD including like I said a 50 fill um, and then even and then back into the 40s right I mean that's where we're looking for we're, we're short here at 54 so if we're going to get out at 80, that's a 25 cent hit. So, you know, we, we need to be a little more patient with these names and not just get in and out as fast as we possibly can. Um, we want to make sure to trade them like a rune. If we're locked and loaded on some of the shorts that we want, then we do have to, you know, let them breathe a little bit here as there comes in uh, into the 40s again for AMD. Uh, take out a couple pieces there. But it doesn't look like it wants to continue its move down. If the market does, then fine. Um, we'll watch it. But right now we're short at 56 and haven't really made any money on this. So hopefully a pullback down and we'll have that. But for right now, that's what we need. We need to, come on, let's go. We need this pullback uh, in for AMD. It'll be really nice help uh, on our net. Let's go. Here we go. Now we're starting to get going. Uh, did I just get that? Yeah, so I canceled my trades. Now we're down in the low, in the mid 30s. Let's take some more out. Nice trade so far here on AMD. Hit the sirens and hold this one for a little lower. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I, I all my positions, well, almost all my positions, I'm short in six different stocks. I like Five it. of them are deep in the money. Uh, well, uh, four of them are deep in the money. One of them is somewhat flat. SI is the one that's only 14 cents in. We've got 56 cents on Netflix, 32 cents on Etsy, 75 cents on Google, 90 cents on Datadog, and we're up 35 cents on SE and then up 11 cents on SI. So we're just waiting for this market to make a break. I think I'm done. I think that's all I'm gonna carry. I don't know if I can carry any more. I was waiting on Amazon being, it's a big index name. It's the third weight in the NASDAQ. Maybe I want to participate in Amazon as well. I'm still waiting on Amazon to kind of clarify what it wants to do with these 90s. It did break back down. It might be time to take a shot on Amazon. I don't know. I don't know if I want to lean that hard into an Amazon short when the market, you know, I can, I'm still waiting for futures trades as well. So I don't want to take on too much. I think, I'm, I think on the equity side, I, I got to let myself stop at this point. Uh, that six shorts is more than enough to play the short side of this market. We'll see if we can grab a futures position as well. Let's take a quick look at the crude side of things. I did want to trade, oh, as I say that Amazon breaks to 83. Okay, we'll leave, we're, gonna, we're done, we're done. We're not taking that. Uh, um, crude, still break, ah, okay, well, I guess that, yeah, we let that trade go. It's perfectly fine. It's going into resistance here at 77. That trade's done. I don't want to waste any more time or mental capacity trying to figure out what to do with that. It's gonna say brain power. Yeah, brain power, that too. Uh, so, and then NAT gas as well, bouncing to 560. This was a resistance level that we were looking at initially on the breakdown, I guess support level, which we were looking for the breakdown on, never got it, because uh, it just moved way too quick, and now it's bouncing back into it. Do I want to play NAT I don't play NAT gas that often, so I don't want to step into something that I don't do too often when I've already got a full plate, and I'm still waiting for the futures to make a move so I can actually jump on board on the futures that's something, something more clear, right? So I think we're going to let NAT gas go. Just be aware, though, it is coming into these 560s. 570 is going to be your top end uh, lockout point, I guess your break point uh, in Let's terms go. of playing the resistance levels, but it is coming there. You may want to fade this as well. Just before we go to Brandon, I just want to say a big shout out, man. Hit the like button for all this. Like, the kind of damage that's being done, you're already seeing Arun putting on some huge trades, right? Love having this guy here, man. We miss Neil, but Arun, hit the like button, man. Big time trading happening. You want to talk about some big time trading as well. Meta, $2 in the money. Microsoft, now $2 in the money. AMD, huge trade for me, man. We're loaded up on that one. And SI, great hold by my guy over here as well. We are really rocking and rolling today. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit all of that because we are on one today. Let's go, guys. Nice moves in here. Good trading today. Good job, Arun. Um, we're really, you know, to have this short. And remember when we turned this guy around, the market was up and I'm like, no. This is a bearish day. There it is. Let's go, Brett. No, I hope you got some shorts as well. Uh, BAC downside here as well. Relative weakness coming into play as far as the banks are concerned. Just bounced off this 33.30 again. 
the CEO speaking at this conference in Washington, there's a banking conference in Washington today, saying the company will uh, buy back shares this quarter, but down huge, 3% here for Bank of America. Don't Shoot, give me more, man. Brendan, no. We had the JP Morgan short and we lost it. What do you mean, don't give you more? What, more things to short? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the same I way, man. I'm only it. short I as well. I can't do it. No. It's just like, what, I'm going to see them. I'm like, oh, that trade, uh, that's solid. You know, that like, looks right, fairly right. solid. So, I mean, like, as a trader, you can only take on so many positions before you, you can't. You just can't anymore. You can't focus on, on all of them at a time, right? There's been a time I've been on the show and I took, a, I think it was like 11 positions or so. And the reason what? I did, yeah, the Where reason I, I did that though, by the time I got to the eleventh, like the eighth, ninth position, the first few were already deep in the money that I, I didn't have to do too you much. Can with relax. It. Yeah, yeah, I can relax a little bit. So I started taking more because those ones didn't were already gone. Like I just let them do their thing. In this case, they're not already gone. Like Netflix is one thirty three, but we know how Netflix moves, right? Google is 114, but again, it's going to take its time. It's a, those are all index names. Index moves back up. All these names are coming back up, so I can't really step away from them. I think if we got real movement, like we're talking about two, three bucks in some of these names, then I can start stepping into other names because I now have the space to do it. But for now, we're just going to leave them alone. But I will give you guys the alerts that have gone off. Tesla through 177, major multi-day low that we were looking at. Uh, keep an eye on that one there. Uh, actually, that, that's actually going to be a high priority. Uh, name just because of what it's doing. 177 goes all the way back to November 23rd. We just finally took it out after finding decent support for, you know, since then. So this break is going to be a very big deal as it sticks through. As long, We just got to make sure it uh, sticks with it. If it bounces back into this zone, this zone is now going to be acting as resistance. So just be aware, 177 break on Tesla opens the door for the downside quite a bit. If you look at the daily it doesn't look too good, right? Once you take out that last little bit, what do you got? Gap, gap down at 172 and change. So that's where you're looking at next for Tesla. But let's go to Brendan with what's happening now. Hey guys, yeah, happening now brought to you by Chart Prime. They offer top notch indicators that automatically find chart patterns, points of reversals, and many, many more. They're having their biggest sale of the year. Get 40% off right now from uh, membership plans. Uh, check them out, link on screen there. Uh, shout out to Chart Prime. A red day, once again, to show you here, but uh, could be a lot worse after what we saw yesterday. 0.6 for the S&P, 0.2 there for the Dow. Uh, Russell struggling initially, but we are seeing a bit of a bounce right now. Uh, back to the upside, it's the NASDAQ, the 1 and 1.1 uh, there for the composite and the 100. If you're with, uh, with us in the pre-market, we talked about uh, JP Morgan, GameStop, and even GitLab up big time off earnings, but back to the downside. Yeah, GameStop not really doing much on that news, but they announced aftermarket yesterday where there were reports of some layoffs that have begun at GME. I want to mention this one as well. Here comes one full percent, guys, for Apple that was trying to hold up as well, pre-market. I mean, good job. Yep. I mean, you know, if you, if you find a better trading show, I keep saying this, no one's messaged me yet. So, I mean, I don't know if there is one that exists right now, but I couldn't be, I just couldn't be happier uh, with, with, with how today has gone. And we've screwed up some. So, um, you know, there, there's no doubt about that. We do have a, two losers on board, GameStop. Uh, well, Silvergate's actually not a loser anymore because we re-engaged in that short, so thanks. And again, this is the thing, you know, we, we always talk about this. I mean, um, this is what, you know, what I think we do the best, and that is, is give you guys lots of different trading styles, so on and so forth here, trying to put on some big time moves for you, um, and just trading the names, right? Um, I was glad that Arun was like, I'm even, I mean, I'm glad to get called out sort of a little bit by you there, and you were saying like, I don't know why that 24, I, I managed to get out there. I mean, it did go to 24.50, so I'm actually pretty thankful that I got out around 2410 there um, but you know again if I and I look back at my notes and I did write down 24 short I was just in it a little bit early I was not expecting this kind of a pop because when I wrote that down on Silvergate we were down here like we were earlier down here we were down like $21 and I was like well if we ever get to 24 then I definitely want that short so then I put a 2350 trade Problem is, I had too many shares. So by the time it ripped back up, we were flat on the trade. And then it was like, wait a second, that's that 24 level. So then we reshorted that at 70 and just took a bid out there on VWAP at 13. So that one, 
was a banger of a trade for me as well uh, there. So thanks. I, I mean, I thank Arun for that, not, not myself. So uh, thanks, Arun, for that one. Uh, but again, the sticky note, man. Hit the sticky note up. We also had AMD on the sticky note. We have Microsoft. We don't. We have Microsoft. We have SI, Meta, and Amazon. Amazon's the name that I don't think either one of us was able to get into. But look at that trade. I mean, we are still in this Microsoft short as well, uh, downside now. So I don't know where we cover this Microsoft. Obviously, we wish we had a few more shares. That's always going to be the case. But it's a huge move down for Microsoft. Now down $2.50 uh, in the money on this trademark. Meta is probably bleeding, still bleeding down on Meta. Let's not make that same mistake on Microsoft. And let's just hold this. Um, I don't see any reason to get out of Microsoft on a 20-minute chart. Uh, yeah, I mean, right here, I see that level, but I mean, targeting, honestly, like if we could target like 246 maybe is a good little level there. I don't know. I don't really have a level for Microsoft. I was just very surprised at how much this tanked off 250, to be honest with you. So, so far, so good on this softy trade. Uh, any ideas where to get out? I don't know. We took 50 cents on the first piece, which we still had it all, but it's a nice downside move. Maybe 248 break, something like that, but uh, so far, so good here on softy. Yeah, I mean, index names are where it's at, right? We talked about Apple earlier. Apple's, uh, I don't have the number. Oh, I do have it up. It's a 1% to the downside, but that's not even the lead uh, to the downside here. Index name-wise, the top index name-wise, 3.4% to the downside on Tesla. We talked about Tesla through 77, and this just opens the door for Tesla too, because we're at 176 now, and even with a rally, we're going to hit some resistance levels. So this whole zone opens up as resistance, even if Tesla bounced right now. So it just leaves the door open for extension to the downside. And we've got some index names in play. I mean, Netflix doesn't have the weight that it used to in the index, but it's still in the NASDAQ 100. So that's up two bucks. We are, we are playing Google. I think for me today, Google was the cleanest trade in the index I can make uh, in terms of index names that I can make, it was just a fairly straightforward trade. And I'm telling you guys, in a market like this, you don't need to get too fancy. You need to get the very clear trades going first. And then, you know, if things really set up afterwards, then go for it. But for right now, Tesla, uh, not Tesla, Google, look at that. One high, two high, attempt to break out through that 100 into that 101 and change, fails once, comes back down into that 100, attempts again yesterday, fails again, I mean, third day, why not? If we can't get above 100 and we've resisted there before and then try to get through it twice, I mean, that's an, that, if I'm looking for a clear trade, that's the clearest trade I'm going to find here. So I went for that short right in front of 100. And the target on this, we're going to leave it down here close to 97. So another dollar thirty if we can get on Google before we start taking some profit. But I do have some targets out. Etsy. It's, uh, that's almost $1.81 in the money on Etsy. And Etsy's continuing its trend to the downside. It's an aggressive move, well, following an upside aggressive move for the last few days, and we started this really sell, this move to the sell side here, so obviously we moved from 124 all the way up to 140 and change, right? Now we're doing a reversal, so I don't want to stay too long in Etsy. I do want to play the downside move. The trend is clearly to the downside. I'm going to go after the opening of um, December the 1st as my first target, which is going to... Opening to close, uh, the low range is about 132.15. I'm going to play somewhere between 50 and 15, uh, 132.15 and 132.50 as my first target. I, it's just a matter of taking profit. It, it, we could get a U-turn right there, so I just want to make sure I lock in something to the downside. And there goes Netflix. Now $3 in the money as Netflix slides off here Dang. perfectly. Uh, for, we, got, we got short in front of that 310, and I told you guys, keep an eye on this 310. If we got to get above, Netflix has done this time and time again. We rally up, come back down. Rally up on a new high, come back down. We rallied up. We need to get underneath 310. Are we going to get the move to the downside? And if we are going to get the move to the downside, Netflix, I'm going to give it as much space as it needs because it's got a ton, a ton of space. First target on this is going to be 300. So I'm looking for like a $9 target, at least on the first one. So we're going to let it trade. Once stocks get trendy, you let them go. You just trend trade. Or you just manage them through the trend. That's the whole point of trend trading. Right? If, you get, if you join in on a trend, you want the trend to extend, but you have to give it the space to trade itself. right? So we're just going to let Netflix do its thing. We're going to wait around 300 for the first target, which will be 9 bucks. We may get it. We may not. This may turn around. But at the same time, futures market's not turning around. It's at like underneath 70 now. We started this day. We were at 4,000. We were flirting around with 4,000 for the first 10 minutes while we were picking up all these shorts, and then we made the break. right? So here we are going to the downside and accelerating, it seems like. Brennan. 
Uh, this little Armed popped up last week, if you remember. Uh, starting to go here. Not seeing anything on this uh, as of yet, but uh, heavy volume coming into this. Back to the upside once again. If you zoom out a little bit, remember, I think it was Thursday and Friday, or maybe Wednesday or Thursday last week, we had a big move back to the upside for RMED. All right, all right. Um, I mean, I was just looking at this. I'm messaging a couple of people here uh, because, um, you know, it's a big move to the downside right now and really happy uh, to be part of this, man. I mean, this AMD trade absolutely collapsing. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, there it is. A nice little message down there. All right, um, I don't know. I, I'm, and I'm with you. I mean, great job on Netflix, man. I mean, someone said down goes Frazier. Yeah, I mean, down goes a lot of that shit uh, right now as well. It's a nice move to the downside here as AMD is just absolutely cratering. I'm going to take another bid now. I don't, honestly, Arun, I'm, I know you're holding it. I'm trying to scalp out some of these trades. Uh, Microsoft down to 247. I just tweeted out, guys. Tell me where the heck to get out of Microsoft right now. Thank you so much, Del, the day trader man we are trying to kill it i would be killing it with jp morgan uh but yeah you're right i am doing it on other names here with amd and with microsoft so i'm i'm pretty happy with the way this goes down goes my retirement account i like that darwin same as mine right now uh so yeah this is bad today bad 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 uh, a lot of these names not good man i you know i've been buying up some meta from the bottoms as well i thought from the bottoms maybe that's not the bottom a firm is by the way 12 dollars how does that taste crm right now 131 52 week lows lucid wow holy crap i gotta um you know channel my inner brankles here lucid right now huge move to the downside man down to nine breaking through nine 870 if you guys remember last week we were like bigging it up as it was breaking 10 yeah it's 870 today 52 week lows right now for lcid um all right i don't know man microsoft everything's going great i mean we're really really happy uh with today's trade so uh, microsoft i'm gonna look for it i mean there's a 200 period here on a one minute uh i don't actually know where this went exactly there it is right there 250 25 that's not coming into play um i'm looking at a microsoft possibly getting out uh of this trade if we do take out um, I don't know, 248. I mean, we bounced around there a couple times. I feel like this is a decent out if it bounces back up, man, 248. Let's just do that. So that's, I'm gonna try to capture some profit. And again, I know we like to hold things forever. I think you got the guy here beside me that's gonna do that for everyone. So I'm gonna still stay true to how I trade. And I think that's really the most important thing that we can do. I'm canceling some of these other bids and offers that I have out, like as if my meta short sell is gonna fill right now. I have a meta offer at 119.90 uh, now. So that's not gonna geez meta man we got out at 116.50 that's a mistake so let's try to hold out uh, on some of these trades now so we're pretty happy like i said i keep saying it with our trades today uh so let's just try to hold these as close to our chest as we can but also realizing that there is some downside pressures here uh in the market needless to say so holding some of these shorts probably not a horrible idea. And I want to once again, shout out uh, to Arun for doing that. Uh, we've done really well for myself. I'm up much more already than I was yesterday. So couldn't be happy with this and it's 10, 11. So let's keep this train moving guys. There's Microsoft down to 247 flat now. Wow, what a move on these names guys. I hope you guys are doing well as well. Just don't check your long-term account. <laughs> yeah, um, remember this is only temporary. We have. We talked about this with, uh, or Brendan mentioned what would happen, and he just put out this hypothetical. What would happen if we got a CPI number in one direction and the Fed did the, I guess, uh, gave what the market wants, which is a 50 basis point uh, raise instead of the 75. So what happens if the uh, inflation number comes in higher, right? Ugh. That's gonna be providing a lot of volatility. So there's a possible two day scenario where you, you're gonna have two very bad news Two very good news, one good, one bad, all of which is gonna provide a ton of volatility. So definitely pay attention to the next week. Don't be worried about, or don't get too worried about what's happening today. Obviously market's falling off, but at the same time, there's a lot coming next week. So just be prepared for that. Brennan. Uh, just watching Coinbase trying to bounce here. A little bit of a volume spike back to the upside. Wow, coin down 6.8 at the lows there. Uh, Goldman Sachs reports suggesting uh, GS looking at uh, buying crypto firms or assets. That's coming out of that uh, conference today uh, that's happening with the bank. So coin, trying to bounce her guys. Big move down though. Jeez, I mean, 
Oh, I mean, what are we gonna do with Silvergate? So we're almost out of Silvergate, so I don't wanna say what are we gonna do with it. I don't have too much to do with it. I'm gonna just relax on Silvergate right now. I don't have too many shares in on this name here. So uh, we're gonna wait. We did take a good out there. Um, I was less convinced on this than Arun was, uh, but you know, when it came down to VWAP, we did take it out. It did dip right down to where we got out the first time. Again, look, short there out, reshorted it, out, out, out. Um, so now we have that 20% left of that position waiting to see if there is gonna be a move to come back in on Silvergate right now. So um, that's, you know, based on Coinbase trade, it's a very, very similar trade, of course. Um, you know, AMD's kind of bouncing around here. This has been a good trade uh, for me as well to the downside. We are, someone said that uh, we're feasting here today. Yeah, I mean, that is what we're doing. This has been a good day for the shorts if you've had them. Uh, not too late to get them now, I don't think either, which is why I'm not getting out of softy or anything else and just looking for more opportunities um apple is bleeding yeah i mean apple is another name there shout out to wahid in the chat uh for bringing that one to our attention yeah apple to the downside again another name that we've talked about uh breaking that 146 we just missed it right like we can't like Arun said, I don't can't believe you had 11 positions that day. I obviously believe you, but that's insane. Uh, 146 there, moved down in. So I don't know. Like we, I have so many shorts on right now uh, that I don't know if we want to even look at Apple. But hey, if there's a trade there, then there's a trade there. Straight to the downside right now. I don't see the trade here on Apple yet, uh, unless we get some bounces back. I mean, we did have a retracement back to 145. Fade any pops, which is pretty much exactly what we wrote down on the sticky note today to fade all the. These pops, like I said, 52-week low, Lucid, CRM. I'm just looking. I don't. I don't have a 52-week scanner up, so I don't have them all. Uh, but that's definitely there as well. SoFi, 52-week low. I mean, some of these names have been pretty brutal here. Um, it's. It is kind of like catching a falling sword. It feels like. Uh, yeah, so the day that I had, did have the limit positions, it wasn't on the, this show, it was on the midday show. Uh, it make, makes things a lot easier, because things are much slower, right? So I can actually focus on all of my positions. Uh, but for now, we're, you know, we've got what we got here. You can see it. The, the lowest, the smallest winner is SI. And I, I, I know you're walking your way out of this one. Well, not um, really, I'm not. It's, I just can't get past the daily here. That's why I'm just going to stick with it, give it a chance to actually accelerate. Obviously, we took out the low from the 21st, which was around 23.20. We've clearly taken that out. Uh, we've broken 23 even. So I think any, and this is why I'm just giving it a chance, right? I mean, if, if we're going to take a look, I would want to see what we've got here closer to 22 and get it far away. There should be some resistance close to that 24, so I, that's why I kind of refuse to walk away from it. So we'll stick with SI. Yeah, the action isn't the greatest, given what the market's done. SI hasn't really picked up any steam to the downside. It is backing off a little bit, but it's a little by little, right? It comes off and then it bounces back up, so you could call it underlying strength, but based on the daily, you're gonna have to force my hand here. You're gonna need, really need to fail that daily pattern for me to say, you know what? Fine, no shorts, we'll just walk away from it. For now, we're gonna stick with SI. Apart from SI and SE, SE also having an issue. I don't know what's going on with SE. It's, uh, it's got the right daily, but it just doesn't want to accelerate at all through these 58s. So we're going to stick with it, but we do need this one to get moving. This daily doesn't look as good as the SI daily. I think the SI daily looks way better for more potential, but I'll give it a chance. If it doesn't get any, uh, any movement by noon, we, we're at what, 10, 15? Yeah, so if we don't get any movement by the European close, I might just walk away from uh, SE and just take what I can get here as the market now extends again. Is it 67 and change? Seems Looks like, like it. it. So yeah, so for now we've got $4.16 on Netflix, $1.63 on Etsy, $1.84 on Google, $1.54 on Datadog, $0.28 cents on SI and SE. All right, we just, I mean, you know, I know these are huge winners, man. And like, like I said, at some point you gotta look to t start to take some profit as I look over uh, here to try to do exactly that uh, on the screen here as well. So um, yeah, about everything today. Um, AMD, there's another out. It just seems like AMD might be barcoding down here. So if you look at this chart, 70, 70 60 here, Fahad, uh, for that bottom. Nice to have Fahad back in the building. What's up, my guy over there? Um, all right, so that's 70, 71. Uh, 
coming through again. So this just looks like it's barcoding. So for me, we are almost out of this name. So we'll watch out uh, to see if we can get some more in on any kind of a bump. I was looking, you talked, I know you talked about Google. I was looking at Google here as well. I think a, a 97.50 area. Uh, we'll try the long if it does fade back in. We don't have to hold this one for very long because the bottom's 40. But if you look at this name today, down 175, you give that against Apple, what Apple's down today. Uh, oh, I thought, oh, did Apple just, Apple was, okay, they're down the same. It just looks like it just might just be Meta. Uh, Meta and Google have been getting hit today. Meta's down uh, seven, sorry, uh, Meta and Google. Meta and Amazon. Uh, Meta down six. What is Amazon down right now, too? Yeah, so these are the relatively weak ones, not Google, which is why we are trying to pick up some longs down there at that level. But, you know, maybe Meta's getting a little bit, you know, 115, I mean, that bottom is 114.84. I mean, I guess there's more to go here. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if it's worth thinking about this as stopping. I know, Dell, and that's what I'm saying. What's up, Diamond Realty as well? Fah Fahad's, I, oh, that's what it is, right. Fahad's on load management. I keep forgetting about that. Um, yeah, he only, he only had, it's like, you know, when you're LeBron James, mm -hmm. you only play once every six games. Um, so that's what's happening right now with Fahad. He doesn't have to, you know, he's switching the board. You've got to keep those hands you know, you know, to be on load management, you actually have to have played Ouch. and actually, you know, exhausted yourself to need that rest. But Fahad just seems to rest all the time. So. To, to, to every man himself there. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't sure. know how hard, how hard Fahad's working, right? I mean, this guy's producing all the videos for us. You know, he's practicing those free throws. I mean, this guy's all over the place. So uh, we give a big shout Has out. his free, free throws improved? At least the I ones mean, where he shoots into the garbage can? Because they sucked last time I was here. They, his free throws suck pretty bad, but he is a 93.5% free throw shooter, apparently. Uh, okay. So, that's, so what, that's what we're waiting to see. Oh, so the three point. misses that I saw were just like part Fluke. of the 300 that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. okay. The thing uh, is, you know, it's like hustling, you know? Uh, it's like when, if you're like a really good billiards player, what you do the first time is you lose, lose, lose. So then the guy drops down some cash and then you, you take it all from him, right? So I feel like that is what uh, Fahad's trying to do uh, to you there and, and sort of pull the wool over your eyes. I mean, like, you know, I, we, we saw him bowling. It wasn't the greatest bowling event when Lucas took him down, but um, we, are, we are expecting some bigger and better things. We talked about this earlier. You know, when uh, Nike dropped Kyrie, uh, yes, we said it was for Fahad because Fahad uh, saw Kyrie the at the uh, Raptors game. And then I saw John Morant. At the, at the Raptors game, right? Uh, you guys went to the Raptors game, yeah. saw Kyrie. We did. And Fahad, I think, did something. Possibly. And now Nike dropped uh, and, uh, Kyrie to pick up Fahad. So uh -oh. you, you, you might be uh, on to something. I, I don't there. know. I, I, there's I some suspicious know. things going on with Fahad. I don't know what's going on here, I but uh, he's I'm making some moves. He might be taking the new Nike contract. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. Uh, hopefully not, though. We want to have Fahad here. So, uh, Okay, um, I am going to get out of Microsoft right now. Good talk there. Uh, hopefully hopefully Microsoft can come out uh, to the downside. I was bidding 247.60. Let's see if it does hit it. Uh, we are sort of barcoding, just like that AMD trade. The problem is, if I don't get out now, then I am going to get out when it breaks 248. So it's just a matter of, will one happen before the other? I feel like this is 250 in the money now. We should be able to take this trade. We are going to take this trade uh, out. Where? where am I bidding exactly? 59er. So a little bit of a move down. I don't know why. I must have just pushed bid there to get out at 59. Not much difference. Let's see if it does fill us out now, though. It's, uh, it's bouncing around. Well, why not just wait at 60? What are we short at? 249.80 uh, right now. I'm happy. I'm just going to take a 64 bid. There it is. End the trade right now. That's my style of trade, and I'm out uh, now on that. So there we go. Microsoft, we are now out for that 230 or so. Um, let's see where it goes now. And if you want, you know, obviously Arun's going to be holding some of these shorts we still do have amd and microsoft uh out but we still have amd in and si in as well i'm looking at si bouncing again off that level down here vwap so um yeah co possible couple trades coming through here uh that i can put on myself uh on a reshort if the market does rip so with that we might look back just like we looking back here on meta um, you know, where we got out of that one doesn't look like we did a very good job on that. So, um, yeah, lots of trades still to happen. Thanks for watching us. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I mean, if you're a longer-term trader and like to hold things for a while, both Arun and I uh, today have done, I feel like, a bang-up job giving you some of those types of plays. Uh, both, I mean, you've already gone over some of your wins. I've had multiple. I've had $2.00. 
250 there on Microsoft, $4 on, uh, on Meta, $3 on Meta, GameStop, JP Morgan, SI, all well, and then AMD's been a big one to the bottom as well. So yeah, some good trades today. I just hope you guys are enjoying it. 1.7K likes, much better than where we were yesterday. I think at this point we were at 1.2. We just got to remember to ask for them, man, because they like us. Uh, Microsoft, once again, slapped me in the face because, oh, oh my, my God, God, I got out once again too early as Microsoft still trying to go down, but I'm pretty happy with getting out of AMD. So sometimes it works for others and not for others. Uh, works for some and not for others. Uh, so there it is. Good out so far for AMD as that's trying to retrace back upside. Yeah, as this market starts to stabilize here in front of 65, I am starting to put some protection in. Obviously, I want to hold as much as I possibly can, but at the same time, you don't do that blindly. You do that with the strategy, and I, my strategy is to protect some of this, not all of this, but I am going to protect some of the, uh, some of these winners here. So, Datadog, I've actually, I'll show, yeah. I'll show you my actual chart, the, our system chart here. You'll see Datadog, I have an exit here. That's, that's for some of the position. I just want to lock in. I mean, it's up, uh, what is Datadog up? It's up $1.50 at the moment. So, why not lock in some of that, all right? It looks like the market was finding some stability. It, I gave it a chance to kind of work its way underneath 68. It snapped up, I got out. It's coming back in, that's perfectly fine, but I do need to start locking in some of this. So Datadog, there you go, that's your first out. I do have new trail stops, not trail stops, but like, I guess for profit taking. Uh, on Netflix, Etsy, and Google. The only ones I haven't put anything in on yet is SE and SI. They've done absolutely nothing. They haven't gotten far enough away for me to start changing around the stops. Uh, so we're not gonna do anything with those, but everything else, I'm putting in trail stops to lock in something. So Netflix is in it just over 307, and then we've got uh, Etsy and Google somewhere as well. So we'll just leave those be, and we'll just go to Brendan. Hey guys, yeah, uh, brought to you by Masterworks. They let you diversify your portfolio with fine art. Uh, without spending millions. To date, six of seven exits from Masterworks have delivered over 20% return. Pretty quiet day once again for some of the small caps. We'll have a look at a few, though. Uh, I was watching this eHang again. If you remember, past couple of days, we've had uh, big moves up. Uh, Chinese name back to significant levels around eight. Uh, we had a big, big flush right out of the gate. I really wanted a test of eight or a little bit closer didn't come into play, just a big flush back below 750, which was the level from uh, yesterday, if you remember, we were talking about 720 and then 750. So here we are chopping around in the middle of the range once again for EH. Uh, yeah, I also got stopped out of uh, SI. Uh, I even gave it 25 and 30 cents above 24 and still got stopped out. But here we go, got back in uh, versus that high now. We're grinding to the downside, trying to be patient here with uh, Silvergate. Uh, GitLab, not a small cap, but uh, interesting level here. This uh, 4340, 4350 was uh, big time support in the pre-market, came into play after market yesterday. Just trying to get back up to uh, that level right now for GitLab, guys. All right, I was, uh, ooh, I mean, I was just saying to Arun here, quite a move upside here for AMD out of nowhere as I look at Microsoft not bouncing, but I see AMD just taking a little jog up here right up to the 50 period again. So I'm going to short that. I'm going to put on some more, a, lot, a big, much bigger position if we get into the 30s and 40s, which it looks like we're doing that right now. And I'm going to do it against this 50 level uh, coming in. So we'll see uh, if there's any sort of love there. But yeah, this name seems to be wanting to go up uh, now. And I don't know where this is coming from. So uh, there it is, a nice move up. We got to go back over to Brendan quickly. Comments coming through from uh, Senator Warren here, guys, on Silvergate, uh, talking about some money transfers potentially. So finally, here we go, back to the downside. Heavy volume, though. Uh, again, Senator Warren talking about SI. Patience pays, guys. It only Bang! took us nearly an hour. Give it up. There we go, man. This is what we're doing, man. This, this is exactly what we're doing. Now a dollar in the money for SI. Good report there. I mean, look at the sticky note. Look at the sticky note. That's exactly, and I mean, look, I learning from Maroon every single day, man. Patience pays, right? I and mean, we were learning from everybody uh, every single day here. So even you guys, well, not even you guys, but um, our viewers, everything, man. Lots of stuff happening today. Check out the sticky note, what we wrote on here as I go to find it. It's pretty much exactly what we talked about, SI. More meltdown from the FTX, we talked about it in here as well. Um, government all over this name. Let's see, they've opened up an investigation and there we go, Senator Warren uh, all over this. 
she's all over everything, it seems like. But uh, still a nice little move to the downside. Let's see if that can keep going. Now we're reloaded. AMD, where and how far do you want to go? Like, this name is just a nightmare right now to the upside for me. It's fine. It's, it's not a nightmare. I should slow down. We were, we were flat down here. We, we only held, like, 5% left. But right now, it's turning into a little bit of a nightmare because it's starting to go back up to the upside. So we're only going to give this a break of 50, man. I don't know what's going on here. I thought we'd be cute by shorting this. Doesn't look like it. We're short right now at 71.39. Seems to be a mistake right now for AMD. No idea. Maybe, Brendan, if there is anything on the semis. But we do know Taiwan is going uh, a little bit today as well. Uh, so maybe there is some just some generic love for the space here today. Uh, but uh, here it goes. Looks like it is ticking higher. So watch out for these semis. Bad play by me here. Go to names that don't have, you know, some actionable events happening. That's probably the right idea here. I'm going to try to get some more out uh, if this does fall back in. There we go. We're already getting lighter and lighter on this trade. Yeah. Going back to SI, the reason why we took this trade is because of the daily. It's not necessarily about the news. Uh, I mean, the news helps the situation. It just helps you accelerate the trade, right? The daily is the read. It's that 24 break we've been pressing against. So now we just stick with it. It's a daily read, so it needs time to work, right? So you don't get too flustered by uh, the movement back into 24. You'll think, don't forget the perspective that you're playing the trade with, right? Which is off the daily. So if it comes into the 24, that's just an opportunity to get more shorts. Obviously, this helps. It's bouncing back. This this stuff, this type of stuff where there's news, it, it could, sometimes it is a flash in the pan, and that's perfectly fine. But sometimes it helps you accelerate the trade, right? The trade is already negative. You're just waiting for it to get going, and then you get something like this could actually help it. It seems like. No, they went, they went down and they came right back up 40 cents. So it looks like we're going right back to being quiet here on SI, but I'm sticking with it. I like the daily. I'm going to play with the daily. And the way they're trading, this does not bug me because I know the larger chart looks fairly aggressive to the sell side. So we'll let it be and trade it out. Uh, what is SI? Yeah, it's up 65 cents. Uh, damn it, SE. Okay, what's SE doing? SE is coming back. It, it was, SE has been giving me a problem all day, even though with the short and the daily uh, chart, and I'm not getting the help that I want. Damn it. Okay, I said I'll hold on to, on to it until um, the European close. But if it won't even react to any, like if it, won't, if it won't react aggressively to the sell side and is sensitive to the buy side, we may have some strength here in uh, SE. So you know what? If I can walk away from, with this 10 cents, fine, I'll take it. You want to give me 10 cents? I'll take the 10 cents. And we'll just walk away from SE uh, as we go on. But I think it's time to cut this one loose because it's, it's not going. It's, it's not reacting the way I want it to for this market as the market now takes a look at 65 once again. So we've already gotten some out of Datadog. Netflix taking a move down towards that 305. Remember, we're sitting near 300 for our first target here. We'll see if we can get that. If we can't get this 305 to hold, then we're going to have to get some out here and uh, walk away with at least, what, $4.90 or something like that on, on some of it. So we'll let that, let that one go. We've already cashed on Datadog. Uh, we've got... Uh, Etsy, we, I've got a target on Etsy. It's waiting there around 132, so that's a few bucks away. And then Google as well. I've got some out of Google, so I'll show you guys where I got out of Google on some of this. This is the trailing uh, exit on some Google there, which happened to be the top of that little move. But hey, profit is profit. I'll take it. Uh, it got as high as, what is it? I don't even know what, how, how high it got. But anyways, we got some out of Google as it now breaks back down towards that 98.20. We'll stick with it. As the futures market how, now has taken out 65 yes, sir. is 50 in target. 50 in range on the futures is a fairly aggressive and I think expected move just because if you look at the, the daily, uh, was it the daily? Was it? Yeah, yeah, I guess it was the daily. You look at the daily and you look where we're sitting. Let's say, let's delete all these other rows here. Um, look at what you're dealing with here as you come into below 60 and into 50. That becomes a mess, and I think that's going to be the expected target for the day before we really start hitting some uh, bids here. So we're coming into it fairly soon, but I would imagine we have a few more points to get going to the downside before we hit that level. So we'll see if we can get some stops going. 50 also would put you right where this kind of whole rally started with those Fed comments last week uh, during that speech, right, at 130. So We've, we've fully reversed that. If we can get to 50, I think that's going to be an inter interesting one to watch. I would also expect a ton of support around that area. Brendan. Slower than expected demand for the holiday season. Just coming across from Nordstrom's execs. That just caused that. So a huge move down there for JWN. Again, uh, they're seeing slower than expected demand for holiday season sales and shopping for JWN.
Yeah, we talked about that last week um, oh, with Amazon, and, and it was a couple of trades of the day for that exact reason. I just didn't believe uh, that Amazon was was having that great in numbers there on Black Friday. I didn't. I heard sort of the complete opposite of that. So um, we've been shorting Amazon uh, for for a while, and that's been a decent trade as well. Um, all right, so not a whole heck of a lot uh, to talk about right now, other than the fact that we've just been sort of getting out of this AMD. We did put on, like I said, we did have a little bit too many shares into a name that I didn't really understand that much. Much. So when it did fall back in to 7130, I mean, that's where we have a bunch of outs right there. So now I'm, I'm bidding a little bit, you know, more, you know, waiting to have a little bit of a winner on here. I don't even have any bids. So hopefully this can fall back down. We'll see what happens down here. We did touch down. I don't know how far we went down here when we went. I mean, these are all the outs here. Those are early outs. And we're like, oh, my God. Uh, but there it is. Right. Oh, we're down to 20 again. Ooh, OK, this is a nice little break. Uh, this is where we have some outs again. Right. So we have some outs there. 24s. We just took another out right there. 22. I'm, you know, every single time this this drops down. And I don't think I mean, I know we don't really do it with Neil too much. But I mean, Arun, we, we could talk about this right now. Arun and I have very, very similar nets right now, despite having much different trade styles, right? And I think that that's one thing that goes for everybody out there. No matter, like, you might be hearing, um, you know, oh, I'm getting out too early, or, or Arun's holding too long, or vice versa, or whatever. It's very, very much, and again, uh, only because Neil and I are always on the show, we talk about it all the time. It's about staying in your lane. Do what you do best. You know, Arun specifically has higher time frames on his chart looking for those breakdowns, which is absolutely fantastic for me. I mean, I'm scalping off of a one minute chart here, right? There's no way Arun would take AMD here and then get it all out. But for me, if it pops back up, you know, we it's just a different style of trading. Um, and you can, no matter how you do it, as long as at the end of the day, you're making a little bit of money, 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 then money, I think, money, at, you know, money, that's, that's that's really all uh, that matters. So again, you know, big shout out. You know, we are diversifying the trade styles here for you uh, once again. And it's not even, we're not doing it on purpose, man. This is just how we trade. So, um, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying the show. If any reason, hit the like button for everything that we've been doing uh, today and for hopefully your own trades. Hopefully they're in the money as well as pretty much Amazon short, Microsoft short, SI short, all on the list here, all printing. That SI is a dollar in the money, making me a bit nervous. Here goes AMD, man. Uh, looks like we're going to get stopped out. So that's what I'm saying, right? For me, scalping out, taking a little bit more shares and then scalping out makes it so that when and if we're wrong on this trade, you know, we live to see another day. It's a completely different strategy because for every time something breaks and I'm out, if Arun's been sitting there holding it and it wins, it, it pays off. Uh, for all of those other trades that happened to not. And look at this. Here goes AMD right back in again. So I should have maybe reloaded the short. I just don't know if I believe in it. So it drops right back down in. Another one from DJ Khaled on the shorts. All right. Uh, Brendan, I think, is this small cap recap time? Uh, I don't know. Crypto. Okay, crypto segment. So let's go over and have a quick look at what crypto is doing. Hopefully we can get out of this SI on a bigger tank. Hey guys, yeah, a bit of a uh, choppy start to the day for crypto markets as we saw in the pre-market. Here's that Goldman headline uh, from Coindesk this morning, uh, planning to spend, yeah, quote unquote, tens of millions on discounted crypto investments uh, in the next uh, coming weeks and months after the FTX blow up. Uh, trying to get some uh, few assets, I guess, for Goldman on discount. There's BTC on a daily chart still in this grind. One, two, three, four, five days in a row now. Uh, within this, uh, call it $300 range. Top end of the range, though, as far as uh, that move to the upside goes, 17,100 uh, coming back into play. But uh, we rejected 17,000 this morning, back downside a little bit. Only half a percent, one percent, meanwhile, for Ethereum, 1,251, mostly red, bottom of the board. Not huge moves, but one percent, three percent, two percent, we'll call it, as we go through Doge, ADA, and Matic. Guys. Yup. I don't All right, this market's extending back yeah. down towards these 60s. Uh, just one thing, obviously you see the wins, right? I mean, we've got Netflix, SI, Datadog. Datadog actually coming back in. I'm glad I got some out here on Datadog here when it did turn north of 68. We're going to hold the last piece to 69, see if we can't, you know, get a oh, turn shit. here. If we can, that's fine. I, I've made what I needed to make here on the majority of this uh, through the bottom there. Uh, as we turn here, when we were talking about, or when Sean was talking about strategy differences, and I, I was just going through the comments there, and, very good comparison here. Bando, long-range sniper versus the short-range burst. 
That is exactly <laughs> how I operate. Thank you very much for calling it a like long that. range sniper. That is exactly how it goes. Uh, so here we are working through 60. I'd rather be a long range sniper though, man. I don't want to be well, in. Well, the very first step to doing that is to getting away from the one minute chart. So when you do that, can you do that is the question. No. Okay, then no sniper for you. Damn it, I just have to be that guy that goes in there with a machete and just like is like on the front line hacking people. <laughs> Meanwhile, you get to sit on top of a bridge. This is this seems to be You uh, never see me coming. That's all that matters. Okay, all right, all right. Good talk there, but I do like that one. Um, I don't I don't have much going right now. Uh, my Microsoft is not I'm not, not in it. I'm still watching that. Not much happening for Microsoft as you guys can see here. So um, I am sort of just backing away from trading that right now um, and don't really have much on board. So um, um, I'm still trying to look for some opportunities. I'm still watching that SI come through. I don't, I, I don't really have too much of a target on this one. We're already well in the money, a dollar now, and it's trying to bounce off some of these lows. So, you know, just like me in there bushwhacking with my machete, I, I just, you know, I could get out right now. Part of me is saying yes to do that trade, but at the same time, you know, I don't know, it's not really doing anything. So I do think that the pressure here of crypto, we just had the crypto update, should send this name even lower uh, today. So we'll see if that does happen, the pressure from the market itself, and then the pressure, of course, from the federalities. So uh, never a good sign here uh, when that comes through. But uh, yeah, so far so good here on the day, man. Oopsies, uh, I just canceled the trade I didn't want to cancel. That was an AMD. Uh, but look, I mean, look what just happened again on AMD, right? So just like that, we're, you know, we're back in starting to, to get a couple more pieces out there, uh, as we say uh, in here. But you know what? You know one one trade that we looked at that we didn't, or that I looked at, I should say that I didn't take. Of course, Shopify's on the New York. Uh, was Shopify breaking through 40 bucks? That was another good trade. Look at AMD. Look at AMD. Uh, where am I bidding? I thought I was bidding O2s there. I apparently. Oh, that's what I canceled. I said, what did I cancel? Oh no, it was an AMD 7102 bid. It just went to 7102. There it is. We'll take it back anyways uh, nice move back in there we got 06s here comes AMD crashing back down so yeah bushwhacker or not we are starting to make a little bit of cash here on this AMD position so let's see if it can uh, pay us off a little bit more to the downside if it breaks down through 71 we just should have reloaded it right there that's all that's the mistake uh, for me here but AMD downside pressure still coming through and by the way let's go drop that money down as SI finally starting to break lower 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 what's up B I haven't really mentioned it today, but uh, Tesla having another rough day. Uh, was three and a half at the bottom there, but uh, approaching day lows once again. A minor story, guys, but down with the overall market. They've uh, already started to change their Fremont, California facility for the updates that we spoke about going back uh, a couple weeks ago on the Model 3 that are coming, uh, apparently. So that's uh, out today from Tesla. Approaching day lows. Yeah, Tesla's going, another name that's going strong here, Netflix. Thank you, Netflix. Uh, it beauty, is beauty. Yeah, the 310 break underneath, we were looking at that, uh, especially from the daily time frame, is now starting to, you know, it's struggling a bit around that 305. We got underneath, this is the 30 minute chart, we'll break it down to a smaller chart. It was going sideways for a bit around that 305. We try to bounce up, failed, try to bounce up from that 304, failed in those 305s once again. Now we're going back through now 304. Remember, my first target on Netflix is at 300. So I'm looking for close to 10 bucks on the first portion of this exit. Let me know in the chat, do you think we can get to 300? Because I'm looking at the daily and going, yeah, I think we can get to 300. I think 300 at least is the first target here. So I'm looking for this. The, and why? Just because it's a round number. I mean, I have no other reason. I got to lock in something somewhere. And uh, the trail on Netflix is difficult because of how it moves, right? So you're going to give up a decent portion if you are going to trail this properly. So I initially had it at 307 when we were at 305. What is it? What is it? Now it's at 303.86. And I'm going to leave it at 307. There's no reason for me to move it down. So I do need to target somewhere between 307 and 300, or at least from the trend continuing. So I'm going to lock in around 300, I think. It makes perfect sense. Take, take close to 10 bucks if I can get it. If there's a new level that develops I can work with and manage with, great. If not, then I'm gonna have to leave it as is. But uh, let me know, do I, do I think I can get 300? Uh, seems like, yeah, 300 seems like a uh, reasonable uh, target from the chat. Oh, question, uh, why do I trade Google and not Google? I mean, you can trade both. <laughs> you, I'm not both, you can trade either or. It really doesn't make a difference. I just, I have one, I don't keep them both in my list. I just keep one. 
Uh, the, so I just go for the one that's in my list, and my list has Goog instead of Google. But you can choose either one to trade. They're going to move the same way. They're going to be fairly, I mean, the prices are, are prices should be the same too, Yeah, right? I'm in Google L. It's just a share size thing. Google L has more volume, so that's why I choose to trade Google L. Uh, I'm in Google L right now. I feel like this is going to be, it's down at 50 now. It's going to break. I was just trying to test the low of the day here. Um, on any kind of a bump back up, the market, um, Google's been good on bumps. So that's, that's the whole thing that I just wanted to talk about quickly. We're only long at 57. It's going to be a 20 cent hit if it does go to the downside. But on any kind of a market retracement up, I do like Google here for a long off some of those bottoms. Look at this collapsing right now. AMD, and again, I should have been that sniper with you uh, here on this trade for sure. Because AMD, man, we definitely hit that one. I'm going to put a bid now, 85. Uh, we definitely hit this one to the downside. And again, we're out too many shares. But like I said, you know, I don't have that crystal ball to be able to predict like, okay, this move is happening the way it's happening right now. So we're going to give it a little bit of breath here uh, to the downside. AMD right now, $70.80. Wow. Um, we reloaded these shorts a couple times, man. These, I don't know what's going to be the trade of the day. I can't ever get a rune to do it. So I'm going to have to figure out something. But I mean, SI could be at meta. AMD. You got meta, right? We've got you meta. No, we've got, I got softy. We've got, there's lots of lots of opportunities. Unfortunately though, softy continues to make a move down. There's a 250 clean break. So I'm pretty happy with taking 250 on this. Uh, nice moves down. There's the fill again right now. So let's go sirens up one more time. And wow, what a great couple days we've had. Obviously, we missed Neil on the show, but it's been a good one uh, having a rune here. And I hope you and me and everybody's uh, learned a little bit more about different styles of trading here. There comes Google right back up to the upside. Maybe this will make some uh, money for us here. All right, Brendo, give it to us. Uh, just looking, guys, we'll uh, look at the sector board here in a second. 394 and a half, essentially. So three, three on the S&P, 394 and a half was where the market was before Powell's speech uh, going back to last Wednesday. So we've basically given back the entire uh, gain from uh, that rally that we saw off of that speech. Here it is. Uh, red board once again today. TXT standing out there. And the industrial says positive uh, 6% move back to the upside. Energy, notable name here, 12.8 as well in the utilities group. But uh, tech is leading as far as decliners are concerned. Uh, semis, software, and hardware equipment makers, basically all red. There's the banks, all of them, individual banks, all of them in negative territory. Diversified financials, even the insurance companies showing a little bit of underlying strength. Uh, not huge moves, but 1% for some of the insurance names today. That's Meta. Yeah, 5.6% for Meta. Uh, take twos here, match as well, all downside, so communication stocks. I saw a note on Warner Brother uh, with uh, HBO Max uh, going to be offered on Amazon Prime once again for Prime members. Uh, so all of these getting hit today in the communications group, even yeah, energy stocks back downside 1% right now for the S&P. All right. Market bounce back a little bit. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I'm just keeping a very close eye on Netflix here as it comes through that 305. Uh, it's at 304.50. Remember, we're looking for that 300, but I do have to respect that 305 if we come back in. I still got that 307 as a stop, but at the same time, if this market's going to reverse, and this is wow. where I would start looking to potentially, you know, work some exits here. If this market reverses through that little consolidation base that we put in, well, I mean, the bottom end that we put in around 65. I think if we did what we, like, if we can stick with what we just have, what we just did here, which is break 60, snap down to 54, and then take out that 65, I think there's a real chance that we get some movement to the upside. If that's the case, then I do have to protect Google. Yeah, I'm gonna have to protect, not Google, no, Netflix. I am gonna have to protect some Netflix here. This is uh, starting to get a little stable here around that 305. So maybe it's time to get some of these, uh, come some of this out here. Let me work my way into something. And look, well, I mean, work my way out of something here on Netflix. All right, 131, 50, 132. I was looking to get back maybe. And so like we just talked about, man, spin money, the money one money, more time. Money, it's been a great money, day here. Money, uh, but money, look at Google, money, man. We money. talked about buying that dip. So again, like, you know, definitely taking advantage of some of these moves here today uh, on this market. So, so far so good here with uh, this trade up in Google. Uh, we are scalping it out a little bit because this is a nice 23 cent mover here uh, for us on Google. So good out for me. Uh, it would be anywhere around here, 70 
79.78. Uh, we've been scalping it out a little bit and look to take a little bit more uh, on that same move. So hopefully uh, this will come back in a little bit for us or, or back up to the upside. We're looking at 98. But this is what I'm talking about. It's a good take again for, for the way I trade. So, so far, so good on that. Um, we did scalp out a little bit and this is what you got to do, right? When you're trading a stock like an AMD, it's come right back up to the upside. I will reassess, but we're almost out. Like I only now have like 5% left. We took advantage of it at 71, then again here at 70, 80. So a little bit of a different style of trade, like we mentioned, but working out for both of us. There goes Google to the upside as well. We just took a piece out at 97.80. We were waiting there for that. So that was a good trade. We also scalped a little bit more out right now. I think, again, because we have upsized positions, um, you know, we're able to take some out and sort of in stages. And that's, that's kind of this trading that I'm happy to do. Um, and that's what I have been doing. So let's just continue with that strategy right now. Like right there, we take a bat, we, I, I use bats gateway. We took an out there um, and that might have been a little frugal. Let's see if this wants to continue to go back up to the upside Google right now, 20 cents in the money. Pretty good take on it. Um, hoping again, there we go. We just took another 72 out. Hoping to get a little more love for this. So uh, let's see if it continues to rip up again. Remember, any sort of strength in this market, we definitely want to try to take advantage of a long here um, in case there is that battle back from the bottom. Meta... I don't know where this bottom is going to be, down 6%. And then we tweeted that story out, man, as soon as that came through. Remember I had the 120 and I was like, nah, nah, we're going to cancel that 120 quickly there. Uh, so we did do that. Um, and now we're kind of out of the way here on Meta. So um, we get a 120 short, which was 119 short, which was fantastic. But again, getting out on that, that bottom seems to have been a little bit of a mistake as it just kept on floating back down in. So yeah. Hey, we're here. It's been a really fun day. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Uh, let's just keep this momentum going up uh, right now for me on the long side. And I know you're starting to clear some out. It's 1048. It's been a great day. I did say we'd look at some JP Morgan long. And I'm looking right here at 132 as a possible breaking spot. 13150 has been the bottom. So again, a name that's pretty strong, trying to get back to the upside right now. A break of 132, I like it uh, for a long. So let's wait to see if that can come into play. Yeah, this could be a this bounce could be actually a fairly decent opportunity on uh, in some names specifically Tesla. Uh, remember Tesla through 77 was the big deal, right? And we let me get you guys a bigger chart so you can see it. This is kind of the base that we were trying to work with, right? And then obviously we Call finally Justin. broke through. It's not your problem. You have to And switch. we actually got underneath. Now, if we bounce back up, I'll and this is him. what I would look forward to is if we can bounce back up cuz this red line is now gone. So top end level, I would call it 184, call yeah. it 185. I actually would You're use 185 to. here. Why? Okay, so let me go into some of these uh, levels or how I go through picking levels. I know some, some people had some questions about how I, uh, what levels I was using for some of these shorts like Netflix and whatnot. So how I go about picking levels, I know this is the zone that I want to work with. Based on the daily, I know that this 177 break is how I want to play. Now I know that there's a resistance level through this zone, previous support, now going to be resistance, so I know I have to Is respect your this. Not working? And then I go up and into these 182s, and I start to see this pre-market activity around 183 uh, uh, into 184, and then I see yesterday's action into 185-ish. So I'm putting my stop just above 185. That clears any sort of resistance that's here from the existing or previous support, clears any sort of pre-market activity that was here around 183, clears any sort of Previous support that we bounced off of yesterday, initially in the morning, in the pre-market, around 184, half and change. So 185, if you get to 185, that means that this trade has failed, that I can be confident that this trade has failed, versus getting out because I think it's going too high and then all of a sudden it just catches an offer that you kind of ignore it on the chart and then it just goes right back. I try to avoid that as much as possible. I know that it's sometimes it's like, oh, why are, you know, stops are too big, but... That's why you play your risk awards, right? If you can control your risk on the trade, I'm not going to take a trade at 177 with a 185 stop. That's not happening. But if I, I know that if we can get a nice rally going to the upside, I can potentially catch a much lower risk trade. 181s, 182s against 185, much more, in much more uh, reasonable in terms of risk. And it's still a short in that zone as long as you find the right read for it, right? So that's kind of how I go about it. Netflix, I did the same thing earlier on Netflix. I took that 310. We've already got some out of 305, by the way. Um, I took that 310 and I put it just above. Let me get you guys a 30-minute chart. 
I put it right above the oh, uh, pre-market high, which was three three fourteen. I mean, I, I put up four bucks looking for three ten, uh, not even three ten, uh, looking for three hundred as a first target. So I was trying to go for about two and a half to one in terms of risk reward. I got one to one paid out, fine, and I've still got some left. So if we take out that three oh seven, I, I net out average somewhere around three oh five ninety something. Anyway, so we'll just let that be. We've got some out here, Netflix. We got that Datadog out. We're gonna, th we're gonna get the rest of Datadog if it continues back above 69. Then we've got Etsy, we got half of that out. We've got Google, half of that out. So we're, we're definitely shedding risk at this point from all these shorts. So we're gonna be calming down a bit. Let's see if we can get some movement in the uh, futures. If we get above 70, I think I'd look at some potential longs on the futures as well there, Brennan. Hey guys, quick update for you on currencies today. Bit of a choppy day really coming off of what happened yesterday. Another move uh, downside for the U.S. dollar on that ISM uh, number. Uh, we're trying though, this is a daily chart. We're trying to hold some key levels from way back in August right now for the DXY after the huge move. Back to the downside, 105.34, basically break even. Everything else kind of back and forth today. There was uh, that Canadian data out this morning that we were talking about in the pre-market, 73 and a quarter. Downside for the CADs, uh, 0.4 right now uh, for the Canadian dollar. Uh, 121.85, meanwhile, for the British pound also. This was actually positive, up about a quarter of a percent at one point this morning. Uh, has since reversed, but uh, choppy day so far, guys. Uh, DXY, trying to hold on to long-term support today. All right, um, so we're taking out some Google here at the hub side, but we are gonna go siren alert because we have a new trade and it's uh, it's not working out. It's not working out yet, um, but we will uh, try to channel our inner hold here and see if it can hold it, but it's not gonna be for very long, man. If we take out 131.75 to the downside, uh, then we are going to get out. So here we go. We are into JP Morgan. Uh, your newest trade uh, attention span here for me is not gonna be very long. I thought that this break of 132 would be pretty good. It didn't come in. I'm gonna take a little piece out though, uh, if we can now, uh, just because it, it's failed here. It's failed at that 132 break. We do want to give it a little bit of time though. So we'll t I'll take out 20% there at 95, give a little bit of a 7, 8 cent hit. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a relatively small amount, I know, but I am waiting for 30s uh, upside rate where this level is. That's the 50 period. So I am going to wait for 132.30. So here we go. Hopefully a little bit of a climb back up to the upside on that trade. Um, Google's really, we've already talked about that a little bit. Uh, that's starting to blast upside, but again, not really working. It's bouncing off of 90, 97, 90. So we do have a couple outs right there. Really the newest position for me is the one that I have the most shares on. So we are talking about a long here in JP Morgan, but this market's gonna have to go as well. And it seems like, I know we're not looking at necessarily the NASDAQ, but for today, the ES and the NASDAQ are very, very similar. Although the NASDAQ's down more, obviously you're getting some hits from Apple and whatnot there, uh, but, or, uh, sorry. Meta bringing the NASDAQ down further than the ES as it's much higher weighted. So that obviously makes a little bit of sense. Uh, but unless this ES can get going, it looks like we're starting to fade back down. When the ES fades, man, so does JP Morgan. So uh, you have to watch out for that as bank stocks. I'm not normally in these names, but we've traded JP Morgan twice here today. And right now we'll see about a long. Although it's, start, it's having, see again, I'm going to... I'm gonna get out a little bit more at 99, like another 10% here if we can. It seems like it just wants to dance around these levels. And I, I just, we're having a good day. It's just, I would feel so horrible. There we go, we got out a little bit there at 99. I would feel so, hor now no more outs, man. I mean, we need to, we're, we have to let this stock move. Um, I just feel so horrible losing on any longs because it's really, we've been, hitting that short all day. So um, hopefully it can come back up. Here we go. We'll take out a 10 and then that will sort of negate everything we've done so far. And then we'll be able to hold the rest for that big rip up on JP Morgan. But you can see what's happening to the futures right now. They're actually moving down. So um, yeah, definitely trying to protect some of this JP Morgan. I like it. It's not moving down. So, so far so good. Let's just see if we can get this going back the other way now. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe you're right there, uh, God likes it. It's, uh... Maybe that's not a bounce. Uh, I'm looking for 70 to confirm the bounce, if there is a bounce. So uh, with the move back up, it could be some shorts just, you know, taking some uh, pressure off here as we... But the only thing is, though, we, we are in an area where we could potentially bounce. So I'm going to respect it. But at the same time, you're absolutely right. I need this market to clear 70. Uh, no, that's not 70. Why is this by fours instead of... By, oh, there we go. If you can clear this red line to the upside, 
then I, I, I would consider the possibility of getting longs. That's the only reason I've still, I'm still keeping five, six, no, I've got five shorts left, yeah, yeah. So well, we still got Netflix, we took some out just in case the market does turn, but for the time being, they do need to clear that 70 area on the futures. Up until that point, trend is still intact, resistance is still above it seems like, and we are working the mid-level, like Brendan brought you guys, this, this uh, little rally, oh, that's not gonna show it, that rally from last week when, the, when Powell was speaking is right here. We started this rally, at 1.30 the opening price is 56 quarter. Now we broke that today, not that it matters, that specific price does not matter, I'm just saying that there's gonna be some action here from 60 going on down through that entire zone. The lookout, the area that you've gotta watch out for is 40. If we lose 40, that was a low for a couple days before we got that big rally. So taking out that low, I would imagine is gonna open up some stops as well, and that could accelerate this even further. So for now, it does look like we wanna take another look at these mid 50s and we could accelerate if we start getting into these low 40s like the 45 44 it could get magnetic towards 40 even trying to look for some stops there so i would just watch out we are in a zone where this could slow down but at the same time it's not completely ready for a long but i am going to look for a long if we get above 70 but for now it doesn't seem like that's still about 10 points away we bounced to 65 caught an offer and back down we go so i guess was shorts are still intact and back to Netflix, and maybe I, I had to give up on that Netflix idea of 300 for a second there. I'm just like, ah, we were looking for 300, but maybe we're not gonna get it because of the rally, we took some out, and then now the futures market takes another look down. So maybe we, we could get it later on in the day, but uh, tune in in the afternoon, find out how this all turns out. Yeah, exactly, or just keep watching Netflix because you're looking for that level. So if you guys see that uh, 300 level, you know Arun's doing some damage on that name. Uh, so far, so good, man. Only two minutes left. Big day here today. We're getting set up for Ian and Luca. It's going to be a good show here on the midday. So uh, again, Sharif and Prad both not feeling well. So you're going to get a treat today uh, with Ian and Luca. They're really, you know, they've really, they been great friends. So it should be some uh, fun talk there on that show. Uh, but just quickly there, JP Morgan did have some problems at that 132.10. So we did get some out like we said we would be doing there um, when it did come back up to the upside so uh, yeah it looks like we'll be flat on this name today JP Morgan I mean I'm hoping still for a run back up to the upside it doesn't really look like it wants to do that though so um, you know we'll hold out for that there goes Google this is why we scalp it out man I was just watching that I, I didn't even realize it was all the way down there but I did see uh, that there was some high side on that so we'll cancel that offer and that's why we're able to make money on Google we're positive on it today even though we were just long there so that goes to show you know you can do that scalp dance a little bit and able to get out out of the way of some of those trades because they're not always going to just fall right into your lap like that like they were this morning right where some of these shorts um it would it, i think you're right uh whoever mentioned that in the chat there that it looks like this is just some, some sort of like exhaustion moment right now yeah. let the sort of futures and let the, the equities sort of drift back up to the upside uh before hitting the short one more time so yeah that looks like a great little call there should have probably done that on microsoft i again was just too obsessed looking at this JP Morgan. Microsoft, the short that we had, and we really like it, we hadn't seen this 50 period again. It came right back to it at 247.50, right where we got out. So missed opportunity not taking that fill as well on softy. So that would have been a good one. Um, all right, man, we only have 15 seconds now. Oh, yeah, the position board says I, I'm, I have no position. That's a lie. I don't know why it says that. I have, Liar. All, I have all my shorts. I, oh, oh Fahad he reset says it. it reset. It accidentally reset, Fahad says. He sure, just Fahad. To take it off. But yeah, we got the mid no, midday show coming up. Uh, uh, Pratt is not here. He says uh, he's sick. And, you know, a lot, Neil's sick as well. But he says that he's sick, that he may have to cancel his flight. Yeah, that's BS. I, mean, I told him. I, I'm you're starting not, to think that he just doesn't want to get married at this point. He ain't canceling any flight, okay? Because he can, he can figure that out. I, 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 he told me the same thing. I was like, no, you're not. Just get better. He's like, just go get married, man. Come flight on. It's not until the weekend, man. It. It's Tuesday. Like, let's go. He's, you know? what, he's leaving on Tuesday? No, it's Tuesday now. I mean, oh. he's leaving on the weekend. Oh, to clarify, to clarify things, we all suspect that he's going to go get married. He, he's saying he's going for his brother's wedding. But at the same time, we all suspect that he's, uh, he's going to go get married because, you know, it's about, I don't know, whatever. I, 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 feel like it, I feel like it's an undercover wedding for him. He may not That's even, what I feel like, He may too. not even know it because it may be set up by his parents, so who knows? Yeah. But uh, we do think that he's going to go get married, and he'll come back with, uh, as some people in the chat said, that he may be back with, like, a couple of kids or something. Who knows? But uh, we'll see.
We'll see. Yeah, he won't be back with any kids, but, uh, you know, that'd be... That'd be wild. All right, it's 11.01. A big thank you again to Sharif. Uh, to Sharif. Big shout-out to Fahad. Big shout-out to Brendan Arun. Thanks again for the day, man. Some big trades happening. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out for sure. We have a big show in front of you right now. Get ready for the midday madness with two hosts that I don't think we've ever seen together before, but it should be a great day. It's Luca and it's Ian. Let's go over to them right now. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the midday show. Uh, yeah, it's like kind of like a Luca and Ian special. Like Sean's right, we haven't uh, hosted the show before. We've been on obviously so many times now, uh, but never hosting together. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, but like we said, you know, maybe some uh, maybe some fire jokes, maybe some fire conversations. Uh, definitely some fire trades. So, you know, let's get into it here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off by saying I'm long in BA uh, Boeing right now. Uh, Boeing has been exceptionally strong. Uh, basically, the past trading week, I want to say. Uh, well, I mean, looking at the daily, it's been strong for a while now. But you know, it's it's broken out this 180 area. Uh, yesterday, I wasn't here. I wanted to trade it yesterday. Uh, but that being said, now it's holding this 180 area as support. It's bounced off there once. Uh, so now I am long on that. That part, uh, you know, for, for Boeing here, essentially I want to hold uh, to see if we can get a retracement back up to this like 185 area where it opened essentially. Uh, you know, Boeing, the resistance on this is probably like 188, 187. I don't know if we get there today, uh, but guys, I'm risking off of this 180, so going to be a clean out uh, on, on that one there. You might see me in, uh, in a couple of bios as well, VVNT, that's a, a new bio today. It's not going to really move too much, so I'm not going to really talk too much about it. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, you know, throw them out in the chat and happy to help with that. Um, let me keep going here as Luca is kind of setting up uh, Espresso Time. Luca, I think, yeah, everything's, uh, everyone's kind of excited to, uh, you know, for this midday show here. Uh, what have you guys been trading uh, this morning? You know, toss it out in the chat. Um, you know, we could take a look at that. I'm also looking at uh, Tesla here. I wanted the short init initially on this 178 break, uh, but that didn't really, like, it, it got there and it didn't really, like, uh, you know, show me uh, enough to want to take that breakdown, so I didn't take it. Uh, it although it did hold 179 to the short side uh, as resistance as well here, right? So, you know, I'm going to be patient and wait for this one a bit. Wait till like 180 uh, and then, you know, see until, uh, you know, if it rejects that area. Going to, you know, short off of that area as well. Uh, Tesla has been weak the past two days, uh, you know, after being so strong uh, a bit last week, right? So, you know, that one's going to be on my, uh, on my short list as well for, you know, possible trades here. Uh, I'm in the money, what is that, 20 cents on Boeing. That's not going to really, you know, excite me too much. Obviously, Boeing, uh, the spread can kind of open up here. But maybe, you know, I'm basically going off of a lower high here uh, on Boeing. So I like that trade as well. Um, a couple people saying Amazon short from 90 as well. So let me take a look at that. I actually haven't traded Amazon in a while. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's getting hit pretty hard today along with the rest of the market. Uh, the market, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this 39.50 area as potential support, 39.40 potentially. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously time will tell on that one. Uh, you said you're short from 90 on Amazon. So, you know, maybe that was, okay, I see what you're kind of going here for. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a lower, uh, a lower low breakdown. So so to speak, uh, and that kind of held as resistance. So, you know, Amazon's kind of just chopping around now, not really doing too much around this 88.50. I want to see the volume being done on this. Only 27 mil volume on the day. So, you know, not too much volume being done here at all. Um, oh, I'm seeing a little bit of a pop on Boeing for me, but I want to wait for like a dollar in the money. Then I'll start to take out there. Uh, actually, let me just, uh, and I hate to, you know, keep going back to this one, but I just want to make sure that I have this order out. I've talked to you guys numerous times about that. Uh, just having, you know, your orders ready, especially if you are going to be like, you know, here on the midday or whatever, you know, doing some chores, running some errands, maybe not at your desk uh, full time. You want to make sure that your, your, uh, your orders are placed there uh, to make sure that you get, uh, you know, enough out when when it does go in the money for you uh, on that one so you know just setting that one up on Boeing there uh, NIO long I, NIO and I guess the Chinese ADRs have been in play uh, quite a bit uh, recently um, NIO getting a little bit of a bump here actually let me actually consolidate this chart show the three minute chart so we can you know looks a little bit nicer for you guys it is going to push back up to this 200 EMA around the 13 area uh, it looks like 14 is where it had trouble yesterday and where it finally decided to pull back after having like basically a week straight 
excuse me, of trading days uh, to the upside here. So, you know, if you're thinking short, uh, you know, you got to be patient on that one. There is some size there on the book at 80. Uh, that's going to be like 400 lots there. Uh, that's obviously not going to be too much, guys. Uh, you know, obviously NIO, only 1280 a stock. So, you know, monetarily wise, that's not too much. So, you know, always think about that when you're thinking about, uh, you know, playing off size on the book and, and whatnot there. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, long Tesla, Intel, Netflix, Disney, that's a lot there, guys. Uh, you know, make sure you can manage your positions. I, I know a room was like short, like I think he, I heard him say six positions uh, today. So, you know, that, that's pretty impressive. Obviously, you know, I'm managing just a couple here and I'm pretty busy myself. Uh, Microsoft about to test days low. Okay, so there's, a, there's a, uh, a trade idea there. So let's bring up Microsoft. Um, let's see what this is doing. If Microsoft is testing days low, notice that the market um, is not quite uh, there yet. So, you know, maybe Microsoft is a little bit relatively weaker uh, in comparison to the rest of the market here. Um, I don't mind, you know, taking that that short to the breakdown maybe uh, of, of Microsoft here. But again, guys, only 5.4 million volume. So, you know, not doing that much volume on the day. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's not going to really excite me too much. Someone's saying that there's a spike on Meta. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, obviously, Meta has been, you know, quite volatile the past uh, past week or so. Uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a volume spike on Meta, so it was really, you know, testing these lows is down six percent. So, you know, we talk about something that's uh, relatively weaker on the day, uh, and you know, that's here on Meta uh, being down six percent, uh, testing back to this consolidation area. I remember looking at 118 on Meta, and that level, you know, kind of held as a multi-day, multi-week resistance, if you will. Uh, and then, oh, there's some size there at fifth. Uh, what was that, 63, 192 lots? Um, yeah, that, that kind of held as a multi-week resistance level. Finally broke out, uh, and then, you know, it, it's, it's obviously showing today that it can't hold up above there. So, you know, maybe if it gets up there again, 118, 119 area, obviously, guys, the more you use, um, you know, levels, the more recycled they will be. Uh, so, you know, you have to put, like, less, you got to size down, whatnot, maybe not take the same trade, maybe structure the trade a little bit differently. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, maybe 118 on, on, uh, on Meta there, 119 on Meta. Uh, for a potential short fade if the market, you know, kind of pumps up a bit uh, and then fades the rest of the day. So, you know, I'm not trying to get short now on anything uh, just because, you know, we're so, you know, overextended, uh, you know, overall in the market here, uh, down 1%. I think if you're not short already, it might be a little bit too late. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to be too, you don't want to FOMO into that. You know, we talked about that so many times already. Uh, you know, FOMO is obviously a, a very bad thing to do. Uh, so, on that note, um, you know, I, I just want to be patient now. If I'm going to short, I want to wait for these levels to come into play. Uh, and then if not, uh, you know, maybe we can find some support longs mm -hmm. like this Boeing trade. Uh, so I put that one on as soon as we got on uh, and essentially just took out profits there. Uh, 180 20 a dollar in the money on that one. Uh, and I was able to, uh, you know, get some uh, early profits there on Boeing, right? So, you know, still holding. I want to actually add to this if we creep back down here. It does look like Boeing is going to be relatively stronger here on a bounce. Uh, you know, that being said, you know, only a little bit of volume today, not doing that much. So I am sizing down on this trade, but it is something that I've been looking for for the past couple of days here on Boeing, right? So, you know, I'm going to keep that in mind uh, on this one, but, you know, so far so good uh, on that trade. Uh, dude, you should have bought a Dell. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're, uh, maybe you guys are having a conversation. I, in the, in the chat there. Uh, I believe my, I have a gaming PC. I can't remember what brand it is. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Pride knows all the brands and whatnot. Uh, is NIO breaking to the upside now? Let's see uh, on this one. I mean, Okay, so the high on NIO, uh, it looks like it opened around $13. So, you know, going to keep that in mind as potential resistance or pullback area. It is running into the 200 EMA now. Um, you know, that's what I use here on my charts is a 200 EMA. So it's starting to run into trouble there. I believe that size was at 1280. So, you know, that's what I mean, guys, with the size, relatively speaking, in comparison to, you know, obviously how much volume uh, has been, you know, been ding been been done on the stock here and uh, you know obviously uh, what was that like 400 lots that's not going to be that much at all here on uh, on NIO so you know NIO continues to push up uh, Baba strong as well let's take a quick look at that one 
I was actually thinking of the short this morning on Baba, but I didn't really care too much to pay attention to it. Uh, but it looks like I should have. It seems like every time Baba uh, has like some sort of you know potential gap up or whatever to any like sort of resistance areas, it just fades the move. Uh, so that's exactly what happened today with Baba. Uh, it crashed all the way down to 90, 89.50. Uh, I think the low was 89.20. Actually, it says there on our system. So uh, you know, good short there if you had it. Uh, but now it's basically flat, right? So I've seen Baba do this you know multiple times now uh, basically you know give a move in the morning uh, and then slowly just either sideways trade the rest of the day uh, or you know creep back up to uh, you know kind of where it opens so you know I'm gonna keep this in mind as well but uh, I might not be that interested in it what's going on everyone hopefully uh, everybody having a great day enjoying the show and uh, yeah you know Stan oh I do see you there saying will Luca talk and I was like I don't know how long can I go without saying an absolute word here thank you Ian for starting that off that was an absolute uh, solid 10 minutes. I think it was 10 minutes. <laughs> it I'm was like, 10 minutes. I'm over here and I'm like, okay, I'm, I think I'm ready, but let me just chill one more minute, you know, like kind of milk this. Uh, I'm really enjoying myself, you know? And uh, yeah, you know, I was just kind of setting my layup out here. It's kind of, you know, on these PCs, if you're on the left, then things are to the left. And if you're on the right, then it's kind of flipped. So, you know, fixing everything up over here. I think that's what Sharif was mentioning yesterday. And he's like, oh, I'm lost because I just don't know where I'm looking. I'm like, that's ah, okay, Sharif, take your time. Don't worry. Yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well and, uh, you know, making money. I'll share, I'll share a couple of my trades here uh, to start the day. Basically my day, and I'll just kind of summarize it with uh, absolute frustration on my part. My day, the challenging part was the fact that I saw like a lot of my trades uh, correct. A lot, of my, a lot of my ideas were correct, a lot of my trades were correct, but because I, you know, the sizing was a little bit different, kind of like slipped orders, um, didn't really give me kind of that opportunity to get in the money right away, um, sort of had to stop myself out and uh, you know, it is what it is, whatever. That's basically, um, sometimes it'll be like that, sometimes it won't, right? So you obviously have benefits of both sides. Some traders like to hold their positions and really size in and you know, they really hold big losers against them um, you know, as a professional day trader, yes, you could do that if you kind of have the, the, the skill and, you know, the experience to do that. Um, it's much easier to just be in the money right away and, and kind of cut your losses early. So that's kind of my approach to today. Wanted the short of XPEV around 12. When I came in today and saw this closer <coughs> to 12, I think Sean made a good point. He said, you know, 11 maybe bounce play. And then if we break 1080 short and I'm like, oh, man, this, this is either going to 12 or it's going through 11. But the short is probably going to be good. And I'm like, okay, let me, let me try to, you know, figure out where I want to short here. And XPEV shorts have been free for so long and then go figure, now they're not. So, so got to imagine so many people are short this name. Um, anyways, we run up to 12 here. And let me just quickly fix this as I uh, uh, put the range in just so you guys can see uh, kind of uh, the broader picture here. Yeah, so um, started the day, ran up towards 12, broke above 12. And I'm like, okay, if we get over 12, I love the short. I want to slam this. I want to watch the tape. And this is where tape reading comes into play. And the reason I say 12 is because if we back up just a little bit further, um, you know, obviously everybody remembers the move up. We're trading it along the way. When we broke through 12, this was sort of like the, the over-under, right? It's like we broke through 12. Then it, had, it gave you the 50% retracement on the day. It was an absolute banger short off that 13. Then we opened above 13 and just failed right through. So it's almost as if that over 12 area is the perfect short, assuming, you know, you want to kind of swing this back down, right? So not all traders are day traders. Some traders are, you know, sizing in above 12 and, and they're actually looking for the fade back down through 10, cover like seven and whatever, right? So um, essentially this is my kind of perspective on the 12 area. And so today I said, you know what, if we can get to 12 and break 12, <clears throat> this is where I'm going to apply some tape reading. This is where I'm going to say, okay, what does the tape look like? Because we should see some selling um, above 12. If we don't, then that means there's a potential squeeze to the upside and then we could be at 1250, 13 very quickly. I think A++ would be over 1250. However, I was willing to short it at 12 considering the fact that I didn't really believe that we can get to 13 uh, today after we already had this kind of move yesterday. I just feel like XPEV is done. I feel like we're trending back down. That's kind of my bet. And so, you know, going into the day, uh, looking at the 12 area, breaking above 12, kind of tape spazzing out, um, you know, anybody who is watching it, lots of action and then kind of offer, offers coming in. And I'm like, all right, here we go. This is the area. So I try to hit that short. And unfortunately, you don't see an arrow there. Unfortunately, I missed the short. 
and uh, absolutely ruined my day. So, you know, that was basically, what, 9.32. So 9.32, I'm already like, man, this is like super frustrating for myself, but it is what it is. I think just as an example, if you guys look at the volume, and I hope you can see this, let me just drag the chart up over here. Um, you know, volume is always the tell, right? It's nice to use indicators, but you always want to use volume. Volume obviously subsided for the rest of the day right now, but right off the morning, running its way up, breaking that 12 area, perhaps running the stops, then size coming in, boom, everybody is short. About, you know, big size short above 12. That's kind of the feel that I got. And so if you have the 12 short, I mean, go figure. Now we're kind of, you know, inching back above 12, going to the upside. You know, this is definitely an area to watch right now if you're uh, uh, currently looking at it. But, you know, that 12 area, definitely interesting right off the morning. Hopefully somebody had the short there because you were instantly in the money and then this thing just kind of came down. I eventually ended up shorting uh, VWAP breakdown, covered a little bit and then short. And I thought, all right, I think I'm good here for the move back to 11. And so I held that all the way against me, then tried the short again, then stopped myself out. And then it was just kind of chop city and then lost a little bit more. But yeah, XPEV definitely my worst, my worst uh, name on the day. Um, you know, things could have been differently if I, if I captured the short above 12, but you know, it's not gonna be like that all the time, right? That's day trading for you. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, it is what it is. I just love sharing experiences because I'm sure there's somebody in the chat right now um, who had a challenge and uh, you know, not, you know, they're, you know, maybe you're upset the way I'm upset, but it is what it is, right? You just come in the next day, uh, try your best and, and go from there. And uh, yeah, that Tesla 180 level, man, that was pretty solid as well. I was thinking bounce play initially. I didn't end up, I didn't end up getting to it, but I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe that 180 bounce from yesterday maybe comes into play today. Um, as soon as we kind of broke through it, I missed it. I looked back, I said, okay, maybe the short is good. Tried a very, very small short, considering I'm shorting into a hole here at the, the 176. This was essentially a break even. So flat trade, I just said, you know what, this is a kind of asymmetrical. It either, you know, runs to 175 and then breaks that and keeps going and I'll get $1.50 out of it, or I break even and lose five cents. So it's no big deal. That was a five cent loss on, on that part. And uh, you know what, even though XPEV is my worst name of the day, I have to admit, Amazon is the most tilting for myself. And this is just a product of, um, you know, when you, see a, when you see a level like 90, and I think Arun was mentioning this on the, uh, on the morning show. You know, he was, I think he had like six shorts going, as Ian was mentioning, and uh, if I have that correct, six shorts going. And, he was, and at the time, he was like, I don't know, like maybe Amazon short, but, you know, got to really get a feel for it. Um, for myself, that 90 level, I've been watching it, I was, I've been waiting for it for like a week. And I'm like, I think 90 is, is like the level. Like there should be some size at 90. And for anybody who was watching 90 on the way back down, there was actually like two to 4,000 lots at 90. So, you know, on a given day in this particular market that we're in, you're not gonna see 4,000 lots on a level on a large cap anymore. It's just, it's just, not, it's just not the case anymore. But Amazon, you know, two to 4,000 lots, I'm like, okay, we're probably gonna break this. And if we break this, it's probably gonna fill my, you know, short through 90. And we're probably gonna be in the money right away. And I was actually expecting this move, right, to continue. So flush down to the 80s, I covered a little bit, kind of, you know, hedge myself, create the free trade, considering <coughs> I'm taking uh, quite a bit of size. And, you know, if we come back through, and even if we pop like, you know, 10 cents, I don't really want to get smoked, right? So kind of cover a little bit, create that kind of window of uh, error or margin of error, if you, if you will. And then uh, just kind of holding the rest of the size, hoping that we would flush. And then as soon as we kind of rip back up, it didn't really look too good. There's a lot of volume coming into the buy side. I'm like, man, if this is a fake out, because it, considering the one minute ran back up, I'm like, if this is a fake out, I'm going to get smoked on the rest of the size. So, you know, even though I like the short, I, I can't really give it to VWAP. Um, I'm okay with it. I think I run that 10 times out of 10. So, you know, it is what it is. It's just the kind of way that I trade. But, you know, hope maybe, you know, if you're going to learn from this, it's a little bit less size. Hold for the move. Um, if you have a lot of buying power, yeah, you could run it this way 10 out of 10 times and you're profitable overall. But uh, I'll tell you right now, it's super frustrating. Uh, I'm not really too happy about it. But, you know, it is what it is, right? It's, uh, it's trading your, it's, I think I was speaking to someone, I can't remember who, and they said, why do you think you're going to come in and just make money every single day? This is the most competitive job on the market. Um, I think some people will beg to differ, but you know, it is, it is. And uh, that's kind of what makes trading great. Everybody has a chance to be great. And uh, if you don't do well, or if you're frustrated on the day, you know, go for a walk. It's all right. Uh, you know, let out your anger, if you will, and, uh, and keep going because there's ample opportunities and that's the best part of this job, right? Uh, currently, not really sure what I'm looking for uh, for a trade here, but I'm sure I'll find something in the next five minutes. Guys, I, I've been waiting for Luca to stop talking so I could spend this money, 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 which I'm slamming now. It's not working. 
Is it working there uh, no, for you? Okay, here. okay, there we go. Money, money, money. money because money, I got this money. meta short or meta long on actually uh, off of one fifteen fourteen. So that's almost a dollar in the money. You're almost taking a, a, a page out of Sean's book on that one. Uh, let me show you what I what I saw, guys. You know, to initiate this trade here, uh, looking at the five minute chart, you guys call it out actually uh, that uh, you know meta was kind of pushing up here and doing a little bit more volume, uh, and that's exactly what happened here on this five minute. So I was particularly looking at this candle here, a lot of buying volume here on this five minute. And what I saw was the market was actually pushing down uh, a little bit more <laughs> and Meta wasn't. Meta was actually holding up uh, there in, this, in the 50s there. So, you know, I added to that, uh, to, to that position uh, and, you know, quick scalp out, uh, you know, for 50 cents. And now I'm holding a piece, uh, a dollar in the money on Meta. So, you know, that was a quick trade there, uh, some quick outs and some quick scalps. Uh, this is going to be something, now we're testing VWAP, right? So, you know, this is going to be something that I want to try and build into a bit. Uh, if we get a little bit of a pullback, excuse me, if we get a pullback uh, back to this 115.60 area, that area was, uh, was super interesting to me. So, you know, I'm going to be waiting for that one to, to come into fruition. But uh, solid trade now on Meta uh, on that one, uh, easily going to the top of my, uh, top of my blotter on that one. Uh, still long BA uh, as well. That one's not doing too much. It is kind of fading back to my price. So, you know, this is why I talk about, you know, make sure you get some out uh, when you are in the money. So a dollar in the money on that, on that first take here. I am looking to add to this one. You know, we are kind of making uh, higher lows, if you will. Let me actually consolidate this one, consolidate this one to the three minute chart. Uh, we actually are making higher lows, uh, if you will, here on BA. So, you know, that long continues to work for me uh, on, on that one there so uh, but yeah a couple good uh, good trades here right uh, off the bat here for me uh, meta I saw some people saying that uh, meta was incorporating soul I don't know if that's true guys uh, you know don't go off that one I haven't seen or heard anything uh, I'm sure that if they uh, if they are we would definitely hear about it uh, around here but uh, I haven't heard anything, but you know, if that is true, it uh, could be the reason why for this little, uh, you know, volume bump to the upside. Uh, you know, testing that dollar in the money area for me, it's really testing this VWAP area. I'm thinking maybe do I just cover the position since I don't have that much left, uh, and then you know try to build back into this position if it comes back down. Um, that being said, uh, I think I'll probably just hold on to it and you know see if we can keep going from here. Let's send it to, to Brendan at the big desk for social sentiment. As we'll give you an update here on a uh, pretty negative day shaping up, pretty negative sentiment coming through on social media as well. Very red board to have a look at here. Uh, it is the overall market that is leading the way, SPY downside in a big way. The Q's here as well in the red as well being uh, discussed. Mullen, COSM, both on here for the past couple of days to the downside. Uh, this one though, this meta materials, it's the OTC listing getting most of the discussion here. Uh, MMAT, the NASDAQ version of MMTLP, uh, but you can see the size difference here, getting all the measurements is that uh, OTC version, uh, WORX, AA, another OTC listing here, AABB popping up today on the positive side. There's SMMT, made a big run up to 150 as well, up big time today on positive news. Uh, very red day otherwise, right across the entire board for uh, social guys, back to you. Thank you so much for that, Brendo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, guys, Meta absolutely uh, destroyed on today. And it's kind of funny because looking back uh, from yesterday, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, that 123 area, that's the level on the daily. I think that's kind of where I want to short. But it wasn't really a, I mean, it wasn't really a level yesterday uh, per se. Like just to kind of give you guys, anybody who's just tuning in right now, just to uh, look at it together. Like this was yesterday, right? It, it clearly went through 123. It's not really doing anything. But if you guys pull up the daily and look at it, like, you know, it's running into resistance, 123, 125. I think, you know, from a day trade, you kind of pick your spots, maybe closer to 125. But I'm almost telling myself, for, yeah, from a swing trade, you know, this is, uh, you know, short over 123, you have a great average. And then go figure, you know, kind of a uh, big down move, uh, you know, coming out this morning, right? So this just flushed to the downside. I glanced over. I had no trades on Meta today, but I did glance over at it. Uh, every time it was approaching, you know, another kind of level to the downside, another dollar, half dollar. And I'm just like, man, there is absolutely no buyers on this name right now. And it's just kind of flush to the downside, just like, you know, 120, 119, 118, 117. And then here we are bottoming out at that 115 area. Um, kind of, you know, had a feeling that maybe 115 support just because of $5 level, um, you know, now going back to VWAP. I almost want to say on a day like today, you're probably like, 
I would be surprised if Meta runs all the way back up and reverses this move. Like, I would be surprised. I think, like, you know, like, considering, you know, the down move, considering yesterday rejecting off the daily level of that 123, um, you know, not to say that there's a lot of selling in the morning. You've got to be very cautious. Maybe playing off of, specifically off of a VWAP level, um, kind of using a hard price is not the best idea, especially on a name like Meta. But it kind of does feel like if we, if we pop above VWAP, like, I want to short this name. That's, that's the feel that I'm getting. Um, we are kind of trending back to the upside now, but I feel like at the first break of trend, um, if everything else adds up, kind of feels right, then maybe, maybe the short makes sense there, right? So probably get some VWAP action here. I'm going to try a short, uh, you know, closer to 17, kind of over under, and then give it maybe 50 cents, a, a dollar. Uh, yeah, maybe 50 cents there, try to risk uh, 50 cents, and then see if we get a move back down to that 115, and then that'll be my cover spot. But yeah, we do have to get over that 117. I don't want to, you know, risk a dollar on it from uh, kind of from this spot over here. And uh, yeah, guys, just make sure to um, uh, let us know what you're trading in the chat as well. And I want to quickly comment saying, you know, Ian started the show. He ran for 10 minutes, and I was like, that, uh, you know, this guy's an absolute legend. So I was like, I figure, I, you know, to uh, even it out, I'll talk for another 10 minutes, and then uh, we'll go from there. So yeah, all is well. Um, last thing I want to talk about about my morning trades here. Um, this is an, another example for everybody. You know, there's something to be said about, you're going to be in a lot of trades sometimes um, on a given day, right? And I think, uh, you know, I can tell you how not to do it, and then you guys can look back at a rune and be like, all right, this is probably how to do it. You know, if you're managing a few positions, let's say you're in a losing position, and it's just not working for you, so you take the loss, and, and you know, it is what it is. And then you're in a winning position, and you're like, oh, man, I have to sell this winner to fund my loser. That's what I'm going to do here. So <clears throat> here I am, short, short Microsoft, uh, on a 250 breakdown, and we just flush right away and, you know, kind of create the free trade, scalp it out. And then as we kind of flush lower, here I am, you know, looking at my XPEV. It's not really working for me. Kind of upset about Amazon. I go, you know what, let me, let me get out of this, uh, let me get out of this Microsoft, uh, you know, kind of fund my loser over there. So I actually had a really good idea, a really good trade on Microsoft. And initially, I probably would have held it. I, I figured, you know, like 250 to 249 is, you know, you're selling yourself short. Easily, Microsoft goes two, $3.00. Um, and, you know, maybe normally I would have held the rest for a little bit of a lower move, but here I am, ah, let me sell my loser to fund my winner, and, or sorry, uh, sell my winner to fund my loser, and uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of frustrating, but uh, again, is what it is, right? So don't do that, right? Don't do that. If you have a winner, let your winner run, and if you're in a loser, you know, don't, you know, maybe the winner can surpass the loser, and then you do extremely well, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, somebody in the chat saying Amazon up. I don't know where we are. I kind of feel like Amazon is, is done. Uh, I don't know if I'm wrong to say that, but it really does feel like uh, the fact that that 90 level was cleared, I feel like 90 overhead resistance. So if for whatever reason we get back to that 90, I think you could play off 90 short um, just above VWAP and then kind of look to hold for a move back uh, towards VWAP or back towards call it 89.50, 89 area. Yeah, so that's going to be my play. So if we get back to 90... 90 20 area that's going to be a short for myself on amazon um, i'll have my orders out to make sure i get that one a couple things here guys uh, if you guys haven't already uh, please participate in the poll uh, we got a new poll going on here i'll show you guys that one uh, jim kramer kramer is urging investors to sell their crypto are you are you selling or holding uh, i vote i voted hold uh, i'm i'm i've been holding uh, at this point uh, you know, for me in, in my portfolio, uh, I think I just got to keep holding on that one. Uh, another thing here, I did end up taking my, or covering my meta position there, uh, um, you know, in front of uh, VWAP or just above VWAP there around 116.50. Uh, it was starting to really struggle with that area. Uh, and I want to make sure that if I'm getting this pop, I'm going to, you know, be taking advantage of it. Uh, plus, you know, when I heard Luca kind of talking about potentially shorting above VWAP there on meta, I think, uh, you know, I thought to myself, maybe I should just, uh, you know, cover this one. Still going to participate this one. There is, uh, you know, stacked bids there uh, that got just chewed through. So, you know, got to wait uh, and be patient for this one. Uh, you know, I think probably more down to this 115 area uh, is going to be a little bit more interesting. I'm also eyeing Tesla now, and it seems like the bounce on Tesla 
uh, excuse me, was, uh, was going to be a lot better there. It bounced off this 176 bottom uh, very, very nicely, and it's now all the way back up to 180. There was, uh, what I saw was a lot of size, you know, kind of stacking up on the offer, but, you know, big buys as well, you know, chewing through that size. So I'm thinking that maybe if the market is going to start to bounce here, uh, you know, maybe taking a 180 uh, breakout long here on Tesla to see if we can push back up to this 182 area or back to these highs around 184. Uh, but Tesla, you know, popping up on my radar now, uh, doing some decent volume to the buy side, right? And, you know, kind of holding uh, higher lows, if you will. So, you know, I'm watching this one very, very closely here. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, something of interest uh, for me. I'm still in that BA long uh, as well. Uh, that one's not really doing too much. I'm bidding on that one to get more, but uh, it hasn't really, uh, you know, came down to that uh, to that area. Uh, NIO called it early. Um, yeah, NIO is breaking out 13 now. So, you know, whoever did call that out uh, of it breaking out, uh, you know, through the highs, uh, that was uh, that was a good call there. Uh, obviously, you know, if you would have taken this 13 long, uh, you know, obviously 20 cents on the money is, doesn't sound that bad, but you got to size appropriately uh, if you are, you know, kind of taking that one. I see someone saying Tesla short. Uh, I don't mind that either uh, the Tesla short off of that 180 area I, I mentioned that a little bit earlier uh, look for Apple too let me take a look I was looking at Apple briefly but you know I saw the volume on it and I wasn't uh, that interested in the name so you know I kind of steered away from it a bit um, but uh, yeah here Apple is kind of giving a bounce off this 144 area a lot of things uh, in the tech uh, sector kind of bouncing off uh, VWAP now so they kind of you know made a made a little bit of a bottom uh, a little bit of a push back up to VWAP here, a little bit of a retracement, uh, and then, you know, uh, starting to pull back around VWAP. So, you know, that was Meta, uh, now Apple as well. Let me see if Microsoft made that similar move, all within, uh, you know, us just kind of coming on here. Uh, Microsoft hasn't, so, you know, Microsoft a little bit more weaker on the day. Uh, I want to show that uh, that Meta uh, trade again, though, just to show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, that's exactly what happened here on Meta. So, you know, a couple good trades here uh, on that one. Uh, that Apple show you could have done, the, or the Apple long, you could have done the same thing uh, on that one. So, you know, if, if, you, if you had that trade, congratulations as well. But, you know, it might be time to uh, start thinking about taking off a, a good chunk of your position in front of VWAP here. Uh, Tesla coming back up. Uh, yeah, I saw that as well. And guys, I told you, I'm watching this one on my side screen closely. Uh, it is creeping back up. It tested the 179 flat area and then kind of just bounced from there. Uh, I was thinking, you know, maybe do I start along there? But I'm, I don't know. I, I just want to see if I can get along uh, on the break of that resistance. So, you know, watching that one closely now. Yeah, guys, so I'm here short Neo, and uh, somebody in the chat was mentioning, yeah, Neo high a day, and uh, I know uh, Ian was uh, briefly talking about it as well. Uh, keep in mind that it kind of feels that XPEV and Neo are going to give the same look, uh, um, you know, not, the, not necessarily the same trade, but they're sort of moving together, right? So a lot of these names, they move together, and I want to quickly look at Billy Billy as well, not to say that this is uh, moving kind of together. I just didn't really glance at it today, and I just wonder where it is off that 20 level. Didn't look at this, but guys, keep in mind that 23 area on Billy Billy or uh, was uh, uh, very, very interesting, very interesting uh, uh, from yesterday, kind of faded and went all the way back to 20. So gave you a $3 win if you short, if you short and kind of held and, and then used uh, the previous day's resistance level. Now holding 1950 to 20, sort of looking like it sold off just a little bit through 1950 and then ripping back to the upside. So yeah, if this thing gets closer to 23, feel free to uh, let me know in the chat. I'm not gonna keep it on my watch list uh, for right now, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll get there, but. If it does get there for myself, that'll be uh, another kind of short level that I really, really like there. And uh, yeah, XPEV now kind of given that flush. So Neo star, well, not I shouldn't say starting to work, but I, I feel like I have a really good average on that. So I'm going to try to hold on to that one. And uh, XPEV kind of flushing back down through that 1220 area. Um, I wonder if, yeah, see, this is the thing. If this is like, if everyone's short 12, right, as we kind of slowly get closer to 12, like, look at this, look at this robotic move up. This is, this is basically what this is. Look at this robotic move up, just following trend, not really doing a lot of volume. And then I hope you guys see this. Look where all the volume is starting to be done, right? Volume doesn't lie. So as we're kind of, you know, going above VWAP, you know, very lackluster, not really a lot of volume, then boom, all of a sudden we break through, we're going to get squeezed. What's going on over here? And so breaks above 12, volume comes in out of nowhere, sort of squeezes, right? And now you get this kind of break of trend flush back down. Maybe we get a little bit of a, of a pop back to the upside, but I almost feel that, you know, 1220 to 1225 is now going to be that resistance overhead. 
um, after the kind of blow off top here. So if we can get closer to that, I think I want to size into it uh, short there for a move back to VWAP. If we just flush from here, then it's uh, uh, maybe I'm just going to have to let it go. No, but I kind of like this. You know what? Let me take, uh, I'm going to take less size on this one. I'm just going to get myself in right now. But I'm okay to size into this one if we get back to 1220. Um, if we flush from here and just, you know, slowly grind lower, then it is what it is. I'm just going to have to deal with uh, a little bit less size. But you know, it is what it is, right? Don't make sure you guys don't take crazy amounts of size at the levels that you don't love. Um, you know, you want to, because then if you get there, you're just kind of like, oh man, what did, what did I do to myself, right? Doesn't make any sense. So uh, yeah, that, that's my uh, thoughts there. Someone's saying small F, Neil, 35 million watch shorties. Okay, I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, and the poll, guys, vote on the poll. I'm not sure where it is on my side of things, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are vote. Uh, somebody's saying VTGN. Let me pull that up very quickly. VTGN, is this on NASDAQ? Probably. Yeah, on NASDAQ. Oh, this is a 13 cent stock. All right, so I don't have much opinions of these, uh, you know, sub, call it sub 50 cents, sub dollar names. Um, you know, it's up 12%, kind of faded. Uh, I don't know about this one. This one kind of feels like uh, nothing's really going to happen here. So really no thoughts on this. I normally don't trade things that are below a dollar. I just kind of wait for them to either get close to a dollar and then size into a short or just, you know, uh, uh, let them go, right? So I'll let this one go. I'm not really sure what's going on over there. And uh, let's just check back to see where are we at Amazon. Uh, yeah, still not. I kind of feel like there's a potential that this doesn't even break VWAP. To the upside so maybe the short closer to 90 is probably not the best idea but uh, I'm gonna stick to my level I think I, I'm gonna have to just respect that there and see what happens somebody also was asking before about AMC are we going to six I think so I, I mean I think so but uh, here's a kind of good example from yesterday and somebody called it yesterday as well that eight dollar level so I was actually talking about the eight dollar level initially giving an example for anybody that was watching from before saying you know you got to watch these levels and you got to remember them, right? You got to remember them because we were above $8. A lot of people were shorting AMC above $8. And then we kind of, you know, died off and let, and let the data load and you'll see what I'm talking about. But we were over $8 and it's the same thing with XPEV at 12. You know, everybody is short AMC over eight because it's like, okay, this is a good kind of risk to return. I'll take the short. It fails, right? Then it actually fails. And it's like, okay, it looks like, you know, maybe we're headed back to six right? We, we tested eight, we had the run up, it's all done, is what it is, done. Then we sort of get to eight on the 23rd of November, we don't break eight and we go back down. So like, okay, now for sure it shows that eight is the rejection. And then we finally break eight to the upside and this thing just boom, runs into a halt. So clearly everybody had their stops, 801, and uh, you know, not every day do you see AMC go 801, boom, 864 into an up halt, right? So kind of crazy, there's definitely a lot of big money that was short there for, for a move like that to happen. Um, then does a bunch of volume, and now look at this move. Now you're gonna, you're probably like, see how it held up for so long. So it's like everybody's short, but it's just holding up for so long. Then it breaks. They all get stopped out. It makes a new high, and now it kind of feels like you know this thing is done. And going back to just make sure you guys are remembering your levels. I'm not sure if this was if this was real. If we broke eight and then kind of went back to the upside. I think we did on that day. But you know, kind of does a bunch of volume. Then when we finally break eight, you know, eight is clearly like. Not so much a hard level, but it's, it's, it's a level of interest for sure. And now that we broke eight back to the downside, like look at this, it's just like absolutely destruction yesterday, absolute destruction today. We're probably going to six. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, by the end of next week, AMC is just done trading at like 6.56 around there. Um, I think it's done, right? I think it's done. AMC, uh, someone's saying AMC is a trash stock. Yeah, uh, I mean, gone are the, the good old days of AMC at 65, right? Hopefully nobody's holding from up there. Uh, if you are, I feel bad for that. Um, but you know, there's always other opportunities, so don't be too sad. Uh, uh, good things will come. And I want to quickly glance here at Apple before I pass it back to Ian, wondering if you know 144, 145 is sort of a level of interest. Apple has been one of the names that I, I thought, you know, for anybody who was watching earlier this year, I made a bet with Prad. I said Apple will trade at $80 a share before the end of the year. And as we approach the end of the year. I'm almost sitting here thinking, damn, I'm going to lose my money. Good thing I only bet $1 on it, uh, kind of uh, trading places there. And uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely not going to trade at $80 a share. Um, now, how silly do I look? Uh, but I figure, you know, bring it up. Yeah, somebody's saying AMC to 20 cents next year. I just think no, because everybody's short. So it's like, that's just not going to happen. But yeah, no, I think uh, it's, it's, you know, the days of plus $20 a share on AMC are, are gone there. Um, so yeah, I wonder if Apple has some re uh, resistance going into 146. I think it was Arun who mentioned, you know, over 148 is a potential good, you know, like he was thinking short there. 
Um, I'm not really sure if he had the position, but yeah, yesterday blowing through that 150 and then today kind of rejecting 148, 149, then giving the final fade. It sort of gives, like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple trading closer to 140 um, before the end of next week. That's kind of my play on it. Uh, but yeah, not so much a day trade, more of kind of a swing trade idea uh, for myself there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody else has the same bias there as well. Uh, guys, I am short uh, Tesla now. Uh, on this name here. I was I told you guys I was thinking about taking that 180 break. Uh, that wasn't going to happen and I saw it really struggling uh, above 179 uh, and I thought maybe the market is starting to pull back a little bit as well. So uh, I hopped in short Tesla here. Uh, I did add to it on the breakdown of 179 uh, again there, you know, to tighten my stop uh, and manage the position accordingly. I'm trying to bid out and see if I can get a, a decent winner now uh, on Tesla. I am in the money 30 cents, but you know, that's not going to be that much on, on a name like Tesla. Tesla, obviously, you know, we've seen this name whip around quite a bit here, but uh, I know a couple people were asking about thoughts on Tesla there. Uh, if you are thinking about the long on a dip buy, yeah, guys, you, I think you got to wait uh, to this 176 area now that that has kind of shown its, uh, shown its face, if you will, uh, as a potential support here uh, for Tesla, right? So, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm in a decent position here uh, to the short side on Tesla. Uh, again, you know, not going to give away my whole day or anything like that, but it's really kind of starting to struggle now uh, to, to hold above this 50 EMA uh, area. So, you know, it did reclaim VWAP. Uh, that's why I am bidding to, uh, you know, cover the position in front of VWAP or, or at least cover some of the position in front of VWAP. So, you know, I'm going to keep uh, tabs on, uh, on that name there. Uh, man, I haven't looked at, uh, I haven't looked at uh, Boeing at all here, but... Uh, um, Okay, yeah, let's send it to Brendan here. Uh, sorry, guys, we don't have the, the earpiece in, uh, in our ears, so we can't hear Fahad talking to us. Hey, guys, yeah, just wrapping up the day for European markets here. We'll get you some closing numbers as we wait for the final prints to come through. I just read a very interesting stat, actually, on the S&P as we talk about Europe. Uh, last time the S&P 500 started a month with four consecutive negative days was 2018. So it's been a while. Uh, here we go. Uh, 0.6 and 0.5 there for the main indexes, stock 600, stocks 50 uh, in negative territory. So you can see not as bad as uh, North America, but uh, definitely following things southbound uh, for the European markets here. Uh, 1.3 for the Swedish market leading the way, Turkey doing its own thing higher at the end of the day as it typically does, guys. Thank you so much for that, Brendo. And uh, yeah, both my positions now sort of starting to work uh, nothing too crazy, you know, 10 cents in the money. It's uh, we're trading these uh, smaller kind of lower price stocks here. I think Neo, uh, I think if we get back through 13 and this is kind of the feel that I'm getting same kind of ideology with XPEV. It's like very low volume. Then we break 13. OK, nice in the money right away. You know, does a bunch of volume. Now I want to really see how it reacts over here. Do we have enough gas to actually keep going and run to the upside? Or are we going to slowly get back to 13, break through 13, and then it's going to be a good uh, VWAP cover? So I think my cover is going to be VWAP on that one. So call it, you know, 1285-ish area, 1281-ish area. Probably uh, going to hold on for that. And uh, as I line up that order there, I'm just going to make sure XPEV is in as well. Um, this one, I actually want to say, I mean, they're going to move together. But I almost want to say that XPEV has a better chance to go through VWAP to 11 fit. Now that's silly to say, because they're, they're gonna move together. So I'm gonna do the same thing on XPEV as well. I'm gonna cover VWAP on that one. Um, if we get there, if we get that flush going, it is what it is. Even if we get down to like 1150, it's, it's not really a big deal for myself. And you know, the fact that we're now kind of approaching uh, middle of the day, less volume, it's just gonna flow, right? It's just gonna float. So yeah, if we get the VWAP, it'll be a magnet effect. That's where a lot of volume is gonna be traded. So I'll trade with the volume over there. That makes sense to myself. And uh, somebody in the chat, I want to quickly comment. They were like, I've, I've been around a long time, Luke. I heard people saying Netflix was dead at 15. And uh, I don't know, is, oh man, is that me? Is that because I was referring to AMC? But uh, I know for sure that, you know, a lot of people take that approach, right? They say, no, no, Bitcoin, it's going to be dead. Um, you know, it's dead at $5. It's dead at 500. It's dead at 5,000. It's dead at 50,000. And then we're going to probably go to 500,000 and then 5 million. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. The kind of whole, uh, you know, FTX situation is unfortunate for everybody that was involved in that. You know, I think Warren Buffett said it best. The, okay, no, don't quote me on this one, but he says the two most dangerous things in the world are, or three most dangerous things, two more, uh, alcohol and leverage. And then if you combine the two, oh boy, we're, you're in for a storm. Um, but yeah, you know, so there's a lot of leverage involved there. And I think that's the kind of 
uh, you know, blow up situation that's bound to happen. And then, you know, whether fraud is involved or not is not up to me to decide. I guess uh, more information will come in the future. But uh, yeah, you know, for the actual idea of blockchain and crypto, uh, uh, you know, I almost want to say super bullish. And yeah, top dog, that's the other one that I just didn't want to say. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, for future reference, uh, for future kind of technology and growth, I think, you know, blockchain is extra, is really exciting, really exciting. It's kind of efficient and they just have to figure out, you know, how it's going to play itself out and, and what does that mean. That doesn't necessarily mean price appreciation on, on all of these kind of uh, crypto tokens that they've been creating, but just the, the underlying technology is, is super interesting, right? Super interesting. So I think there's a lot of potential there and that's kind of, um, I would bet on that, but not so much uh, price appreciation on some of these tokens. Kind of gets scary, and uh, you know, who knows? Who knows what happens, right? I'm still, I'm still waiting for Pulse to come out, by the way. Which, uh, you know, hopefully Richard Hart. I see him; he's driving around in Lambos. I was like, oh man, is that my money over there? I don't know, but uh, yeah, no, it's. Uh, we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, still no fill on Amazon or Meta. Um, I want to check back here. Amazon. Oh, Amazon actually flushed initially right off that. Uh, that VWAP area. So I guess uh, safe to say, you know, and I was actually having a conversation with Greg about this. If you're going to play bounce plays or if you're going to play a certain level, you know, a lot of the times my approach was no, 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 let it get to the level, then try to put the order in. But the problem with that is you, sometimes you might not get the fill, right? So you want to have these sort of, you know, it, it has a nice move into VWAP. You want a short VWAP. You want to have those, you want to have that fill right away for the quick rejection. If we come back up again, you know, maybe it's worth the short, but just keep in mind that everybody who's short here who didn't cover as we get back, maybe they, they panic, maybe it causes a little bit of a pop above. Um, that's kind of why I wanted, you know, closer to 90, just because, you know, I know that 90 maybe is the wick up to 90 fill and then flush back down, whereas VWAP is more of the, uh, oh, hang around a little bit longer and then maybe go back down. So, yeah, that's kind of my logic, just playing towards my strengths there. And uh, is this just the Luca show? No, man, are you late to the party? Come on, Ian spoke for like the first 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a healthy combination of, uh, of both of us here. And uh, yeah, no, I'm loving these comments that are coming through right now, but I have no comment on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm watching Tesla here. I did get stopped out on the long side uh, above 179.50 there. Uh, it still hasn't truthfully like tested 180. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being patient now. I, initially, I talked to you guys about wanting the long. Uh, then obviously I canceled that and, and tried the short. That didn't work. It looked good there for a quick second, but you know, with the market, uh, you know, kind of almost catching that bottom around 39.55 uh, and, you know, bouncing off of there, um, it, it didn't really, you know, push lower and, you know, start to reclaim some of these highs here uh, from, from, you know, just recently. So I'm, I'm just waiting patiently now to wait for this 180. I feel like it is going to come into play uh, here on Tesla. It's kind of being, uh, you know, magnetized to it, if you will. So, you know, I'm going to wait for that one to come into play. I don't know if I want to take the long or the short yet. I, I'm basically just kind of waiting to see if there's any sort of uh, inclination or, or size on the level. But, you know, it's really trying to start to struggle uh, to get there. So, you know, maybe I'm just going to have to jump in short again. Uh, I see a couple of you guys uh, saying be patient. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know, patience is obviously a huge part of uh, a part of the game, right? Especially when things are kind of just trickling, not doing that much volume or, you know, you're waiting for your plays to kind of come into fruition. Uh, you have to be patient, guys. You know, you can't... Uh, uh, just kind of jump into trades uh, unwillingly or, you know, FOMO into trades or rush into trades, right? Just be patient and wait for your levels. I, I think that, you know, we preach that enough, uh, you know, here on the show um, on that one. Uh, a couple people saying BA putting me to sleep. I actually just got filled uh, again there to the long side. Um, yeah, it, it has basically been uh, been putting me to sleep too. I, to be honest, I haven't really watched it. Uh, there is a little bit of a, 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 a decent sell candle coming in there. I actually want to just check where I placed my stop. Wow, wow I almost got just stopped out there uh, on, on Boeing there. Uh, let me actually just uh, adjust that one. Yeah, sure. Uh, Take your time adjusting yeah, yeah, that. And it. I want to quickly look at Tesla. I'm not sure if you're in a Tesla short right now or if you're talking about it. But yeah, it's, it's back at that 180 level. Maybe you're going to get initial rejections the way that it's kind of setting up right now. I think the high of this wick area is like, 179.75 and um, yeah you know kind of interesting I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up breaking over 180 but it'll be really nice if we get a sort of quick move through 180 a flush back down and then you get that final move back down this is all going to coincide with what the market's doing right and you know obviously in the past six months the ES is kind of losing uh, the stronger correlation uh, with the Nasdaq on an intraday basis at least from my my experience 
Um, so, you know, I'm going to pull up NASDAQ as I'm talking about Tesla to just kind of look at it. And it's sort of, you know, you have that morning sell off in kind of everything. And now it's just kind of channeling, right? So I don't actually think my opinion going into, you know, going into the end of the year is, is I'm sort of bearish. I don't think we're going up. I'm not really sure what's going to happen next. I'm not really here to kind of predict the future, but obviously I have a bias. And my bias is that we're not going up, we're going down. And I sort of get the feel that just looking for that initial move through, through 4,000 on the ES. And uh, okay, now that we finally are through 4,000, you know, we, do we have room to the downside? Are we gonna break 39.50? Are we gonna go to 39? And then, you know, go test the lows at some point early next year. Is that a potential? I have no idea, but um, that's kind of my bet. Now that we sort of, you know, went back through 4,000, I think we're gonna trend. And then where are we gonna trend? Well, I'm gonna say that the fact that we're trending the past two days down, maybe going down is, is kind of where we're headed, right? So again, take that with a, a grain of salt. I'm not here to, you know, make predictions. I tell myself and I'll say it out loud over here, but again, it's, I'm not really too sure, but just kind of getting this feel of, you know, two red days, you know, maybe if we break this, you know, short-term support area, then we break 3,900 and then we go down, right? So um, if that happens, then uh, a lot of these names are obviously gonna trend down. That'd be the reason as to why we go down. And then maybe the 180 short on Tesla is, is, uh, is you know, a good kind of swing trade to hold. And then we go test that uh, post uh, pre-split 500 level, which is the uh, 166, 167 area. Um, you know, that, that'll potentially be a bottoming area. You know, now that we officially rejected 200 on it, it's kind of like free float, but where are we gonna float? Maybe we float lower. So these are kind of the biases that I take. Um, and so with that being said, hopefully we get some pop action over the 180 level. That's where I'll try a short on Tesla for a move back down to first VWAP cover and then 176 cover. That'll be my kind of trade going there. And uh, yeah, XPEV, NEO still kind of slow, not really moving, not too much action there. But yeah, I guess XPEV is uh, sort of looking a little bit better here. Um, this was my thoughts, right? It's like, you know, you get that kind of death candle. Hopefully you're short on the break of that, right? If you kind of recognize that 12 is the squeeze area, you either scale into it accordingly, or you wait and just kind of smash it, you know, s smash it short on this candle. Hopefully you're short above kind of 1210, call it. Now that it's sort of making its way towards VWAP, you know, it's, it's probably not going back to 1210, 1215. It's just gonna, you know, grind lower, uh, get to VWAP, do some action around there. And then after that, I'm not really too sure what happens next. Um, let's just check quickly on NEO. Yeah, these are my, this is kind of my worry, is that NEO is sort of the, uh, the one that will probably hold up and, you know, do, uh, a little bit less of a sell-off. So yeah, maybe I'm aggressive in saying VWAP, but I think we could get there. So I'm gonna keep my order there and, and see what happens next. Um, and think QQQ is still going down. Well, yeah, I think everything's going down, but again, take that with a grain of salt because uh, I'm super bearish, um, super bearish, but at the same time, as I say that, you have to stay bullish. You have to stay bullish. If your time horizon is 50 years, 100 years, you can't just bet on the collapse of everything because then who cares? You're not gonna get paid because the world ends. So you might as well go long um, it's an asymmetrical risk, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, just hopefully you understand what I mean by that. Um, yeah, Tesla now going back down through 179. So yeah, maybe we don't actually get that pop action over 180. I'm just gonna quickly glance back at AMD as well because I know this one, um, yeah, okay. So it's actually interesting uh, that it's sort of giving a very, very clean level at 171.50. So, you know, I don't know if we get back there, but if we get close to there, I'm gonna short that in front of 171.50. And uh, stop is very clear on this one. Um, you know, look at this, right? It is literally showing you that 171.47 is the high. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So seven, you know what, seven, lucky number seven. Seventh time's a charm. Um, I'm taking that short and then we're finally gonna flush towards 70 hopefully. So yeah, let's see if we get back up there using VWAP too, so it kinda looks good. Yeah, if we break through uh, uh, 71.50, then you know, at that point it could easily pop 15, 17 cents. Um, and then go from there. So I'm not gonna hold that. I'm gonna use a tight risk on that one and see what happens. Um, somebody in the chat also saying Neo to 20. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't wanna say you're wrong on that. This name's been beat up for so long and let me like load the daily. I'm not sure if it'll, uh, you know, probably take a little bit, little bit of time loading lots of data here, but okay, yeah, there it goes. Never mind on that one. But yeah, Neo to 20, I don't know, maybe. But you're definitely gonna have to get through 15 first. So, you know, uh, I think safe to say, just say Neo to uh, 15 and then maybe 20. Um, and then kind of reevaluate on that one. Uh, I'm thinking back uh, on this Tesla short again. I I'm just going to jump in here uh, with a starter position, uh, similar to what I did before, uh, just because I think, uh, I think the short might be in here. Uh, it, it, I don't know if it gets up to 180 to test 180 uh, to give us that chance. I really liked uh, you know, the thesis that Luca was saying 
Uh, and that was exactly what I was thinking too after I stopped out of the previous short, waiting for that 180 to kind of come into play. Uh, but now, you know, here I am short uh, again, just around that similar area uh, that I was on Tesla before. Uh, so let me just actually just place that stop in there uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, in case it does rip up, uh, you know, I don't get my face ripped off or, or anything like that. So, you know, now short uh, on that name, I did end up getting stopped out on BA, guys. Uh, you know, I, basically flat now for me on that name. Uh, it did stop, stop me out basically at low a day there. So, you know, not trading that one. Uh, I think I kind of missed the boat, uh, you know, the past couple days there trading BA. Uh, it was a lot more strong, or it was a lot stronger uh, the past couple of days there off of that 180 breakout to the long side. I thought, you know, maybe we can get a similar uh, price action, uh, you know, move today. Uh, it worked the first time, uh, and then, you know, I got that kind of second leg up, uh, if you will. Uh, I'm not going to try it again. I think there's probably a, a few better uh, opportunities on the board, uh, you know, instead of, uh, instead of BA, you know, it's not really doing that much volume overall, right? I was thinking about the long on meta, and then, I saw that, uh, you know, Sean kind of spammed the chat there with all his positions. Uh, he was actually short meta up at 116.57. Uh, and then I quickly checked my last out. My last out was 116.50. So, you know, we almost traded shares there uh, on, the, on the way out from my long. Uh, and then obviously, you know, Sean's short now. Uh, that's a, a dollar fifty in the money uh, on that name. I don't think I want to go long on this name just because it's, uh, again, you know, relatively weaker on the day, down 6%. Uh, you know, it really kind of struggled with VWAP. That's why I took out uh, the position that, there at VWAP, right? Uh, obviously, there was a lot of buying uh, volume there for a brief second, uh, you know, so jumped in long, got a quick scalp, uh, you know, solid trade there for meta uh, to the long side. But I guess that just goes to show that you can make money, uh, you know, either way, uh, long or short, uh, in in this market, right? Depending on your you know your strategy and what you kind of see, I saw I tried to bring it up uh, quickly there, but I saw briefly uh, there was like maybe 200 lots on the offer there on Tesla. But I've been you know seeing that uh, that size kind of get uh, uh, taken out quite uh, quite quickly there on Tesla. So I'm not going to be too too concerned about that. But you know, with that uh, being said, you know the more and more I see that uh, maybe. Uh, the, it, it's just going to show that there's more interest in, uh, in, in you know, selling this name right now. Um, you know, guys, uh, spam that uh, like button. I see a couple people saying spam. Uh, I guess spam, I guess it's like a gaming term when you like kind of just like overuse a move or, you know, if you play like Smash Bros. Melee or something like that, you're like spamming, uh, you know, the kick button or the punch button or whatever. Uh, that's what I'm referring to. But guys, uh, spam that like button. 2.2K uh, likes uh, on, on the show today. That includes the morning show. Uh, you know, let's get, a, get that up. Obviously, we got to get that up uh, above 3k likes guys uh, on on that uh, on that front so you know if you guys haven't already obviously we uh, we really appreciate the support hit that like button guys uh, and you know check out the channel hit subscribe if you haven't already so you, you know, get notifications uh, if you uh, if we post videos right obviously we live stream every day uh, from uh, from 8 30 to 4 uh, and then we post a lot of content uh, throughout right so you know, uh, you don't want to miss out on anything. Uh, I just got stopped out on Tesla. Uh, you know, I'm going to give it one more shot here. If it does, does give like a little bit of a, you know, potential flush move uh, back through 180, uh, there just isn't that much volume kind of going off for me to really kind of attack this trade. Uh, that hard, right? So, you know, if I do end up taking one more trade on Tesla, it's probably going to be for, for smaller size than I've been doing. Uh, again, guys, you know, this is something that I've been preaching to you uh, the past few times I've been on the show. Like, if, uh, you know, if you are trying to trade something, you take a loss once, okay, that's fine, right? It didn't work. If you want to trade it again, uh, maybe size down, <laughs> uh, risk a little bit less. Uh, three strikes, you're out, I feel. Uh, you know, after that third time, if you, if you take the loss, I think it's probably just time to move on. So, you know, I'm going to be really picky now with Tesla. Uh, you know, you guys have seen me trade Tesla pretty well on, on the show, and you know, you don't always win uh, uh, trading Tesla, that's for sure. So, you know, uh, that being said, now it is kind of, you know, giving a move back below 180, but, uh, you know, the market uh, is really trying to decide what it wants to do, right? Uh, you know, it is bouncing off of this 3950 area. I don't think we've uh, seen it breach that 3950 to the downside yet. Uh, but uh, obviously time will tell. The market's not really doing too, too much, though. Uh, the past hour uh, pretty much just chopping around. Yeah, guys, so uh, kind of uh, watching Tesla as Ian's talking about it, and I'm like, this is doing exactly what I want it to do right now. So, yeah, if I can get into the short here, I'm going to try to get closer to 180.50 and then play off that 181 level. Um, again, not to talk about the same name, but just kind of uh, this is something I was discussing. I'm, I'm currently not short, but, yeah, if we can get just a couple more wicks to the upside, that would be great. 
and then get the fill. If not, is what it is, whatever. I'm not going to really chase that name. Um, and then something, uh, oh yeah, on the spam comment, you know, spam the likes. I'm sure, uh, you know, ask Jim Cramer what he thinks of spam. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw oh, that video, but... Uh, that I kinda... saw that, yeah. That was kind of <laughs> funny, eh? Like, um, he was, like, drinking the juice out drinking of the... the like, juice that's disgusting, the that's man. Disgusting. Like, I don't know, he... like... That's some sick stuff, man. Like I don't even know <laughs> why one would do that. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, something else, whatever. Um, I want to, so, okay, to bring up, uh, just to kind of step away from trading quickly and, uh, you know, still in the realm of gambling, yesterday somebody <laughs> asked me, and I'm not sure if that same individual is watching this right now, but I was talking about the World Cup, talking about, you know, there's some crazy, uh, you know, parlay that some guy called all the winners on all the games and, uh, and he has France for the win. So here it is, I found it, so you guys can look it up on Instagram if you want. Um, it is BR Football. I think that's the account if you want to like look more. This is where this post is. I just basically screen munched this. And uh, yeah, so this person, look at the odds on this. I hope, hopefully you guys can see this. Look at the odds on this. Plus 2.1 million, seven leg parlay, okay? And then I'm just gonna quickly screenshot uh, what he had going there for anybody that doesn't want to go on Instagram. I'll just uh, do all the work for you here. Check this out. Anyway, oh, sorry, where, where am I looking? Yeah, plus 2 million, absolutely. I don't know if that's correct to say, but it's plus 2.1 million. But I don't know if that means 200, whatever. Anyways, I'm not a gambler. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is their bet. This is their seven-leg parlay, whoever took this trade or uh, this gamble. Kansas NCAA men's basketball to win, check. Golden State Warriors to win, check. Colorado Avalanche to win, check. AC Milan to win, check. Los Angeles FC to win, check. Man City to win, check. Now, all they need is France to win, and, and $25 wins $560,000. $25 wins $560,000. Like, I'm sorry, that's insane. That is absolutely insane. So whoever put this through would have had to say that, yeah, France is going to win the World Cup before they even qualified for the World Cup, which, you know, it's France. They're... I mean, uh, anything's possible. Italy didn't qualify. But, uh, yeah, France, you know, that, that was, look at this. This is a crazy seven-game parlay. Um, somebody was asking about it, found it for you guys. And, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't gamble in the sense that I'm not, like, <laughs> I don't gamble on sports, so I'm not really too sure uh, about all that stuff. But, yeah, no, I definitely, uh, you know, have my fair share of, uh, of stock gambles, I'll say. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, and uh, Zach saying, Luca must be sitting in Pratt's seat. That seat's rubbing off on him. Yeah, you know, I was like, I just got to, I got to pull this up. And I even sent this to Pratt, too. I was like, yo, check this out. This is ab absolutely insane. And I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure which, or BR betting, I'm not sure if they offer, like, cash out options. But uh, kind of interesting. Oh, okay, yeah. We're going to pass it over to Brendo now for an uh, update. Yo, can you... Hey guys, yeah, heading into lunch hour. Let's get you caught up on things here. Still a red day, unfortunately. We are uh, off the lows for now. Anyways, uh, still showing a lot of underlying weakness, though. Our tech stocks right now, one and a half, one and a half there for both the NASDAQ composite and the 100 full percent right across the board for the Russell. One, two, and 3,000 has been uh, relatively weak all day as well. 0.75, 1.09 there for the S&P. If you joined us pre-market this morning, we were discussing J.P. Morgan GameStop and GitLab, among others that were all uh, moving around. JP Morgan, a uh, number of comments uh, coming out of this banking conference today uh, in Washington, including Morgan Stanley with a positive note on JPM. Uh, GameStop, yeah, they're uh, beginning layoffs, apparently. That was positive initially, not so much anymore. Same story for GitLab off of earnings. There's JP Morgan faded that initial move. We got to 135, uh, all the way back to where we were yesterday and then some for JPM. Thank you so much for that, Brendo. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, anyways, going back to quickly just this parlay thing. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. And, uh, you know, I'm sure whoever's watching that is very, very happy. And hopefully they now understand how to hedge that bet because, you know, it's uh, quite, quite a nice paycheck over there. And uh, thank you so much for the Super Chat Playmaker, Diamond Realty, Miami, as the local. Okay, I think you're talking to somebody else there. But yeah, thank you so much for the Super Chat. And uh, yeah, just quickly looking at these comments. So yeah, guys, I'm currently short Tesla over here. Um, got the fill perfectly. This is exactly what I wanted. A little bit of a wick up. Not so much the wick that I was hoping to see, but at the same time, uh, whatever. It is uh, it is what it is. It's not like, you know, I was kind of hoping that I could get the fill and then we flush back down quickly and, and kind of stay at like, you know, 179.50. But you can't always get it the way that you want, I guess, um, is what it is. So I'm short over here. My cover is going to be VWAP if we can get there. 
Um, if we continue to hold trend and push to the upside, then it'll probably just be a loser. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I feel like this could potentially be a good area uh, to short. You kind of have it defined out uh, going up to the upside. And then, you know, maybe that 181 uh, holds there. So yeah, hopefully it works for me. Uh, but if it doesn't, no big deal. And um, yeah, you know, hopefully you guys enjoying the show. Yeah, guys, we appreciate the likes. Let me just quickly check it out over here. I normally don't ask, but yeah, 2.3K. Let's get that to three. That would be absolutely awesome. I think yesterday we didn't ask at all. Me and Sharif kind of first uh, doing the combo together. And, uh, you know, we didn't ask. And then I glanced back. I go, oh, man, nobody, nobody liked since Sean and Arun were on. I'm like, oh, man, I must be doing a really bad job over here. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys, you know, if you enjoy the show, hit the like button. We appreciate it a lot. And, uh, yeah, you know, James Choi, hold your Tesla Meta Amazon calls. They will bounce. Well, yeah, I think uh, Michael Burry agrees with you on that one. And uh, somebody saying getting greedy, Luke. I think you're talking about the Tesla trade. Not so much, man. I think just, like, you know, it's kind of things, large caps tend to always, you know, come back to VWAP. So not to say that this is going to come back to VWAP, but, yeah, I want to take my bet and uh, uh, see what happens there. Yeah, we'll see. Tesla to the moon. Well, hopefully not right now. Tesla to the moon. That would be bad for my position. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if... Uh, you got anything exciting? I, I, I'm, I'm sure Tesla too. <laughs> I, I'm sure Tesla too. I'm giving it one more shot there. I, I talked about, you know, uh, you know, potentially shorting this one again. Uh, so that's uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here uh, on this name. Again, sizing down, guys. Uh, you know, I've already taken uh, two L's on it. Uh, actually, let me bring it up on the main screen there. Uh, I've already taken two L's uh, on it there. You know, small L's, obviously, relative uh, to, to my account. But, um, you know, that being said, I don't want to, you know, keep losing, so to speak. So, you know, three strikes you're out, so to speak, uh, on this one. Uh, if I, uh, you know, get, get shot, stopped out uh, here on Tesla, you're probably not going to see me in another trade uh, on it. And if you do, maybe you guys, you know, you can kind of call me out and help me uh, hold hold me accountable. Uh, I like Airbnb. Uh, I saw a comment about Airbnb earlier in the chat. We didn't really kind of get to it. So uh, let's bring it up now. Uh, down 4% on the day. It's doing four, 4 mil volume. I'm not sure if there's any sort of particular catalyst on this name, uh, you know, for you to show a particular interest in it. Um, it is kind of making a little bit of a bottom here around 92. Uh, let's just round it to 90. Obviously, you know, you, you want to kind of risk off of these uh, these whole va value or whole number values. Uh, I feel like there's just a little bit more significance when it comes to it, uh, especially with uh, a lot of these like large cap stocks and whatnot. But it does seem like, you know, Airbnb is trying to make a bottom uh, around this area. But uh, that being said, guys, you know, having a bit of a negative day today, it looks like it couldn't really hold over $100. Uh, you know, we talked time and time again about how this $100 area is, is, a, is a key level for a lot of stocks, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, if you are long this name, uh, you know, maybe for a potential swing and whatnot, obviously that $100 is going to be a... Uh, uh, going to be a key level to potentially take, uh, you know, profits on, or it's going to be a key resistance area, uh, to say the least, uh, on, on that one. Uh, market about to head north tomorrow, green. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if the market is going to be doing uh, that that much until we get, uh, you know, the likes of next week, obviously. Next week uh, is going to be uh, CPI Day, I believe, is on Tuesday. FOMC is going to be on the Wednesday. So that's going to be super interesting because I don't think we've ever had uh, that sort of setup uh, this this year at least, uh, where CPI is the day right before the end of the FOMC meeting. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be interesting. I don't know how much of effect, uh, you know, the CPI uh, number will come into, uh, you know, for the Fed uh, to make their decision. Let me actually bring that up. Uh, I always like to bring this up with you guys and, and uh, you know, um, uh, show you guys what we kind of use uh, to, to, you know, base the prediction of what, what's going to happen that day. Uh, obviously, guys, you know, don't anticipate. Uh, always participate in the trade. When you start anticipating, that's when you can start to kind of get in trouble. Uh, obviously, these FOMC days, uh, CPI days, uh, any of these, like, big, huge, like, economic policy, uh, you know, numbers have really kind of shaped the market and moved the market a lot this year, right? So, uh, you know, you don't really want to be risking too much going into them, obviously. Uh, you know, obviously, afterwards, uh, you know, maybe uh, the move comes in, and then, you know, those days have been uh, known to be quite volatile. So, offer good trading opportunities, but it looks like now 77% uh, chance of getting, you know, a 50 basis point uh, rate hike uh, next, uh, next Wednesday, that is. Uh, so it seems like that's pretty likely going to be looking for any sort of like surprise, right? Uh, you know, if let's say, for example, I'm, and I'm just thinking of like possible scenarios, I'm not saying that anything of this is going to happen, so to speak, but you know, if let's say CPI comes in hot, uh, you know, last time it came in, I think it was like point 
five percent uh, light of the prediction. You know, so next time maybe if it comes in hot, uh, you know, the market uh, can potentially tank off of that, right? And you know, maybe uh, you know the these percentages change, and and uh, you know maybe the Fed uh, raises uh, back seventy five uh, uh, basis points again, right? So I think it's been four jumbo, so to speak, rate hikes they've uh, they've done now in a row. Uh, so, you know, why not a fifth one, right? So you, you can't rule out all possibilities. Uh, obviously, it's going to be something that, uh, you know, the floor is going to be eyeing uh, very, very closely. Uh, and we're going to be watching that very, very closely next week. But, uh, yeah, as I said, guys, don't expect uh, any sort of huge, uh, I think, uh, volatile moves until then. Uh, trade the range. Trade the range and, you know, do what we've been doing uh, pretty much all year now. And, you know, risk management is going to be key. Yeah, uh, risk management, absolutely key. And uh, somebody was saying in the chat, uh, I don't know if you thought I covered my NEO, but no, I did not. I'm still in my NEO. But yeah, it's not really failing the way that I thought it could. And now I'm looking back and it's like XPEV is now, you know, slowly grinding back to the upside. So I was hoping that it would get closer to VWAP for the cover, but um, it's still sort of robotic and not really a lot of volume. Um, so I'm going to give it the original stop that I wanted. Uh, no big deal there. And yeah, Tesla starting to work almost a dollar in the money on this one. Um, yeah, I think if we, it's going to chop around for sure a lot. I, I don't know if uh, VWAP is going back to the, not, not so much greedy, but yeah, this could easily run back up, stop everybody out, and then finally go down. That's kind of the way that Tesla trades. Um, but I'm going to keep my original stop on that one as well and my original covers. I feel like it's, uh, it's probably good for the flush and just kind of going back to where we are in the overall market over here. Uh, yeah, you know, market kind of moving back towards the bottom of the range. So, you know, maybe 3950 wants to get tested on the overall ES. This is going to line up uh, uh, very closely with the NASDAQ coming down and sort of testing that, call it 11600 area, 11, just below that uh, kind of low day test. So, yeah, if we get that, then for sure Tesla flushes to VWAP and then I get the fill. So, yeah, I'm going to hold on to that one and, and see where we go from there. And uh, somebody also saying, Luca, it was an Apple to 80, it was Amazon, and it was 120 at the time. Thought he was crazy. Yeah, you know, so I probably gave a lot of calls, just to be transparent, I probably gave a lot of calls, a lot of bold statements where I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to 80, so is Apple, so is all these names. Uh, you know, Tesla's going to 100. I probably said all that. So, you know, some will be wrong, some will be right. Just don't make sure, make sure you guys don't remember the ones that were right. Make sure you also balance it out with remembering uh, how bad some of the calls were and then realizing that, you know, like not one person can call everything, right? It's all about managing risk and, uh, oh, well, assuming you're putting a trade on. If you're just calling it to call it, then, uh, yeah, call it to call it, right? Why not? And uh, Meta is a value stock now. Uh, I don't know about that. But, uh, <clears throat> Let's quickly look at Meta to see where we are. Oh, here we are back at 115. I th I'm pretty sure Sean had the short at VWAP. And, oh, man, I'm kind of upset about this one because we were so close to my fill. I think I wanted 116, like, 85 area, kind of playing off that 117. And then I realized we were down at, like, 116. I was like, okay, it's probably not going to test. And, uh, yeah, so this was the move that I was sort of looking for. I just didn't get the fill. Um, it was a good idea. Hopefully somebody had the short. I know Sean did. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, calls don't make you money. You got to obviously execute on those calls. Uh, no big deal is what it is. Uh, there's a good comment by Luca. Yeah, thank you for that. I say, uh, yeah, some are good. Sometimes maybe good. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I want to address a couple comments here. Uh, Playmaker, Ian must be having a bad hair day. Uh, best trader hair on the market wearing a cap. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, you know, thank you for the for the comment there. Uh, you know, best trader hair. Uh, yeah, you know, my hair's getting kind of long. Uh, I am, you know, looking to get a haircut soon. Uh, I wasn't fully expecting to be on the show today, so, I, you know, I didn't do my hair. You know, a lot of the time, uh, you know, and I, I've heard Arun say this countless times, too. When he trades, he just likes to be comfortable, right? So, you know, usually when I trade, um, most of the time I'm, I'm in, like, a hoodie, like how you see me in a hat, uh, you know, just chilling. You know, I'm comfortable, right? So uh, that, that's, that's my outfit today, and, you know, we're rolling with it. Uh, but, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's a funny comment there. Uh, on on that one, uh, bullet bike hairdo. I don't I don't know what that is. Maybe maybe you can like link a uh, link that in the chat. I have no idea what that is. That's that's kind of interesting. Uh, can you guys talk about S and P support at thirty nine fifty? Uh, I've been I've been kind of talking about that uh, throughout. Right. Uh, it seems like. Um, the, the ES here or the S&P, like you said, uh, is, is kind of holding up support 39.50. I think, guys, you've got to give it to that 39.40 area. That's the level that I've kind of charted uh, on, on my charts there on the ES. Uh, it is kind of making a base uh, around that area. Uh, but that being said, guys, like, you know, uh, I've heard uh, Sharif talk about it plenty of times about these, uh, I think he calls it like a flat bottom breakdown. It, it looks like it, it could be potentially setting up for that. But, uh, you know, we're down 
1.2% today. Uh, something that I've been looking at uh, a lot is, is, is the SPY volume. Uh, I've been looking at the SPY volume a lot. Uh, it's only doing 30 mil volume today, uh, which guys isn't much at all. Like I think the three month rolling average for the SPY uh, is around 90 mil uh, volume, right? So, uh, you know, that's not going to really, uh, really excite, uh, ex excite me too much, right? So, uh, I think my, uh, my, my chart just crashed, it's just reloading there. Uh, so, that's not going to really excite me too much. So, when you see it kind of doing this, uh, you know that potentially you got, uh, you know, maybe a lower volume kind of trading day on, on your hands here. So, you know, you got to size accordingly. Uh, that Tesla trade is uh, really starting to work now uh, for, for Luca and I. Uh, I am bidding. Uh, in front of this 179 area to get filled and take some of the position off here. Uh, but, you know, that being said, uh, like I said, I, I sized down a bit uh, on that position. So it is going to be a dollar winner, uh, but uh, I'm basically going to be flat on it uh, after, after taking those uh, two L's earlier. Uh, but that's okay. You know, I, I don't mind being flat. I think, you know, flatter forward, as Luca always likes to say, um, if, 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 you're, if you're flat on a trading day, uh, especially when a, a trading day is, like I said, it's not doing that much volume or you know, not giving you that many moves or in, in setup for you, uh, then uh, I think that's okay, right? So you know, that's going to be basically my day here on Tesla. I'm just waiting to get hit now. I think I'm bidding 179.05 uh, there on Tesla, right? So that's probably going to get hit, and I'm going to start taking profits on that name. Uh, and I'll clean up this, uh, this dark pool wick there uh, on that one. Actually, let me just do that uh, here with you guys. Yeah, and just to give a, a sort of um, alternative approach, you know, maybe the 179 cover is the spot to cover, but I am not covering there, I'll tell you that much. I'm covering closer to VWAP. I'm not selling myself short on this one. A lot of times I'll be in scalp trades, and then sometimes I'll be in these kind of intraday swings, and I really want to uh, kind of try to hold on to this Tesla because I think we probably get the VWAP where I want to, you know, get some out. But I think we get back to, you know, 177, 176. So I'm going to hold on to the short and, uh, you know, see where we go. It just kind of feels really, really good, especially on a day like today. So, yeah, we'll see where that one goes. And, uh, yeah, kind of looking. No longs on board. And somebody was asking, uh, they're saying, Luca, how much do you think you're going to make on NNVT or something? I think so the position board is, uh, is flipped. So Ian's actually here. I'm, I'm on the other side. So, yeah, I have no longs on board right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, somebody else made a funny comment saying, this chat talks way too much about hair. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, it's all good. All good across the board. Yeah, no, XPEV now finally going back down. This is the thing, man. These bots, they wow. just want to stop out everybody. Um, wow, Tesla. Okay, is that what you're saying, Wow Ball? The market. the market flush. Okay, there we go. I'm seeing Tesla now finally giving the flush. And you know what my problem is? My problem is I always will remove my order to cover. Because I'm like, oh, now that that flush came into play, like I'm removing my order, but I'm going to leave it there. And the reason being is this. This is another good example for everybody. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people already know this, but you know, for anybody that doesn't know this, VWAP is obviously where, where there's going to be a lot more volume that takes place. And so let's assume that you have like, and this is an arbitrary example. I did not have this kind of size. But let's say you have 20,000 shares of Tesla at above 180, right? And again, I, I do not have 20,000 shares. I will repeat that. I do not have 20,000 shares of Tesla. But if you <laughs> did, and you're like, okay, I'm short, where can I get out of this large position at one price? VWAP, that's where you can get out. And so a lot of the times what you see is you'll see a flush into VWAP, and then you'll see either a quick bounce up, or it'll be just like a lot of trading. You'll see some size on the bids. It'll be stacked size. Um, a lot of times nobody just throws out 20,000 shares on the bid. Maybe they split it, you know, 2,000, 5,000. But essentially the whole idea is if you want to get the fill and you don't want to worry about it running away from your fill or the market kind of saying, you know, this is uh, detecting a big order, let's not fill it, you know, that's where you want to trade, right? So again, I don't have that size, so it doesn't matter. But I like to think that I could get to that size, so I want to kind of create these good habits, and that's sort of my ideology. Um, and here we are. Now there's uh, um, 11,000 shares offered on Tesla, in instantly taken at VWAP, instantly. So, you know, you think Tesla's going to low a day. You want that insta-fill. There you go. You got it right there. So I'm sure whoever's – if you're watching the show and you're short that, um, hopefully the best – Hope, hope the best for your trade there because that's a, that's a nice trade going. But, yeah, no, who knows? There's a lot of uh, action at VWAP there. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Sean here, let's go because I'm sure he's short all these names. I mean, where's Meta right now? we got to check because this for sure. Meta's down to like 114.75, oh, wow. right? So, you know, that, that's he's a dream cover nice. for me, I think, uh, on Meta. And, you know, I, I said it earlier, like Sean started to short uh, around that same area. Uh, so I guess it was a good cover for me on, on that front. Uh, but now, you know, Meta's just uh, kind of tanking towards these lows as well. 114.41 was the low on 
on Meta, so you know, watch for that to come into play. I did, you, you guys will see me, I have covered um, that Tesla long uh, there in front of 178. Um, Luca mentioned there was uh, some size on the bid. I saw a bunch of size on the bid kind of pop up and you know, it was getting taken, uh, but to me, you know, that, that, that kind of says to me that uh, you know, I, I probably want to start uh, covering this position. So I did, uh, that ended up being almost a $2 winner for me uh, very, very quickly there. I know uh, Luca's still short there and uh, I think his price was a little bit better uh, than mine, but uh, man, it's crazy. And you know, Luca and I kind of talk about this all the time, but it's crazy how uh, you know we know what's going to happen. Like we know the short is going to be yeah, the play yeah. here. It's our job for no. Tesla. Like uh, you know, here I am trying to short it uh, 179. There was a little bit of weakness, guys. Like you saw that there was a little bit of weakness uh, above 179. Obviously, gave a little bit of a, a push up or whatever. I guess it just needs to you know maybe exhaust a few uh, a few stops or something like that. Catch some more liquidity. Uh, uh, something like that, but um, man, uh, you know, the 180, I guess we just need to be a little bit more patient for that one because now, uh, if you had that short guys, 180, uh, you know, now you're $2 in the money. Hopefully, uh, some of you guys had that one, uh, you know, uh, for, for that one. Uh, guys, a couple of you guys uh, asking why I'm long VVNT. That, that was a buyout that got announced today, guys. Uh, these aren't going to range that much. Uh, you know, Neil has mentioned it before on the show. Uh, maybe, you know, they range like 10 cents or so. Uh, it really depends on size, guys, and, and, and leverage and whatnot. So, you know, it's not going to be too, too exciting. But, uh, you know, if you have leverage or something like that, then, uh, you know, you can participate in these sorts of trades. But, um, you know, that's why you'll see me kind of in and out uh, on, the, on that one. Uh, Tesla's still above VWAP, though. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's exactly why I started to kind of, you know, think about really covering that position, right? Uh, you know, $2 winner, uh, you know, middle of the day. I think that's a solid winner in, in, in my books. Obviously, this can keep going a, a little bit further down. We have broken below this 3950, guys. Uh, you know, on the ES. I mentioned that you want to hold it probably till 3940, potentially. Uh, you know, we've seen, um, you know, these kind of moves uh, really, you know, kind of break down and then, you know, run some stops and then kind of bounce back up, right? So uh, that being said, uh, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, stopping out just quite yet, but uh, that was a pretty big sell candle there that we saw in the ES after, you know, this, uh, this decently long consolidation, pretty much since we came on the show. Uh, Luca, the, the market's been consolidating around that 39.55 area, finally starting to break, uh, break down from there. Uh, I did try an Apple long earlier, uh, and guys, this was basically just like, like I kind of said, um, you know, the market was consolidating, not really doing too much. I saw the same sort of price action happening on Apple above 144.50. Right, so uh, that being said, um, you know, uh, you know, 144.50, it finally broke down, and I stopped out of that one. Uh, you know, maybe I, I was a little bit too late to the party. Uh, you know, on that one, it bounced off a couple times. Uh, that being said, you know, third time, probably not the charm on this one. Uh, quick stop out, uh, small loss, uh, you know, move on. Uh, maybe it bounces off this 144 area, uh, but Apple wasn't really on my, uh, you know, trading plan this morning, so probably just gonna stay away from, from it uh, for the rest of the day. Someone's saying Russia, oh, I don't know if that's true, um, but yeah, maybe we'll get more information on that. But, uh, huh? No, yeah, okay, no, no, I was going to say that's terrible. Um, yeah, okay, Sean's saying covering AMD. Let's quickly look at AMD over here and uh, uh, see where we're at. Yeah, no, I didn't get the fill, um, you know, I, I said seventh time's a charm. Yeah, go figure. Seventh time, it actually falls, and I'm not in the short, but congratulations to anybody who had that short, anybody who saw that 7150 level. When you see a day trade like this, something that sets up that shows you multiple times that this is the level, then you know you take your shots. This is where you take your shots. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if there was size there. I'm not sure if there, it was iceberg, if there's dark pool, but you know, it's basically showing you. It's showing you what it wants to do. Then it finally goes down and now we're at low of day. Safe to say, use this volume of selling at low of day to cover that. Um, approaching the $70 level, I mean, maybe we get there, maybe we don't, but gotta imagine that, that you know, this thing was at almost 74 to start the day. Um, feels like this is the uh, the range of AMD. So I'd be surprised if we sell through 70 and then are at like 69 by the end of the day. It just doesn't feel like that kind of day. Um, so yeah, maybe if we get to 70, I'll try a bounce play on that, but I really doubt that we get there. Um, and going back to, uh, you know, kind of this, this Tesla trade that I'm currently in, it's working exactly as I wanted to see it. Give that little pop over 80. Then we finally flush, cover some at VWAP. I didn't cover at 79. I thought about it as Ian brought it up. And I'm like, I don't know though, because... I want to let Tesla run. There's a lot of other names I will not, but Tesla is one of them that I'm going to let run. And I, I'm going to, my next cover, just to kind of be transparent here for everybody, is going to be probably, hopefully, below 177. 
uh, but for sure in front of 176. So just that kind of general area, just kind of low a day. I, I'm just gonna let VWAP play itself out. If for whatever reason VWAP holds and then we go back to the upside and we get through 179, I kind of have a feeling that we're gonna get to 180. Um, so for now, my stop is sort of 180, but you know, if we get there, if we you get even close to there, like we're for sure gonna run the stop. So it's more of a discretionary stop. We'll see what happens. Um, Neo worth twice as much. Oh yeah, somebody whoever said in the chat Neo is gonna have a run like Tesla had. Eh, I, I don't I don't know. I kind of disagree with that. He had that run. No, yeah, like, that's know, what I, yeah. It went to like what like back in the day like it, 70 bucks. Like uh, it was yeah, it ran like, to like you know 60, 70, 70 dollars. And uh, it kind of coinciding with everything else. Just, just remember one thing, you can't fight the Fed, right? And uh, since 2008, stonks only went up and kind of you know, cheap money going around. So growth was, uh, you know, big money is just kind of putting all money into growth because uh, interest rates are zero. So why, uh, why be a value player? But you know, now that interest rates are back up, you can actually take a you know, fundamental approach to investing and say like, oh, this is good value, this isn't. And that's why a lot of these kind of growth names are selling off. Not necessarily because people are just like, I don't believe in the company. It's more of just like, you know, where is money going to be protected? Where is money going to be made? Now that you can actually, you know, oh, there is a risk-free rate to play off of. And uh, uh, this makes sense. And that's why a lot of these value names are up and growth is down. Just kind of big money rotation there. So I really don't think it has the steam to have a run per se. Um, but obviously, it's going to range in and out. You're going to get uh, a lot of opportunity intraday to, to trade it. So um, yeah, definitely exciting to be a trader right now. And uh, just glancing back at some of these positions, I want to look at Apple. Where's Apple on the day? Um, let's see here. Oh, no, this is Neil still. Apple kind of, oh, that, that rejection off 145, that's, that's actually really nice. I think if you have an Apple short, I was talking to a friend who short Apple just above 150 and now is in the money. And, uh, you know, I don't necessarily tell people what to do when it comes to investing, trading, swing trading, whatever. But uh, I, I was like, because he's my buddy, and I was like, I don't care, You're, you know, like do what, do what you want. I know he's gonna do what he wants. But I was like, hold on to the Apple Shore, man, because maybe you finally have the top, and this thing's going down. And he's like, you've been saying that every single time for everything. And I was like, yeah, I know, that's why, don't listen to me. But uh, yeah, no, kind of interesting. But funny to see that 145. I wanna say that 145 was a level. We sold off into it, sold through it, and then the bounce back, that's actually a really good short, kind of lining up with everything else. Um, hopefully somebody had that as well. I kind of missed that. I'm kind of upset about that one. Uh, I'm kind of just figuring out uh, what to potentially, you know, take on another trade here. So if you guys see something, you know, feel free to call in on chat. I saw a couple of things here uh, that I wanted to address in the chat. Uh, Tilray, um, someone said the weed stocks are just <laughs> kind of getting hammered. Uh, wasn't Tilray, Tilray was at like $5 yeah, the other day, right? Yeah, I went right? long like and it, I made money on it. Yeah, you went long, okay, nice. Yeah. Um, it's been kind of having four? this like run up uh, the past couple of days, <laughs> no. right? It's down 15% oh today, like God. just getting absolutely destroyed. Um, it seems like every time, guys, like these weed stocks, it's sell the pops, right? Sell the pops. I don't know about particularly like the day trade, uh, but you know, swing trade, so to speak. Uh, um, you know, sell sell the pops. So you know, big pop to five here uh, for Tilray. Look at the. I mean, look at this, guys. Look at this. Uh, last time it was up here at 450. Uh, sold, sells off, uh, you know, th this big up move here back in October, uh, sells off, guys. Like, so I'm not like, uh, you know, talking out of nowhere here. Like, this is literally what always happens uh, with Tilray, right? It's a reoccurring pattern, right? So, you know, that's all we kind of do here in the stock market is we, we kind of take advantage of pa uh, patterns. But, you know, the same sort of thing that's happened here on Tilray, it's going to be SSR now. Uh, down 15%, so you know you can't uh, kind of short it now. Nor would you, would I think like you'd want to jump into the short now. Obviously, the short was uh, was this morning closer to that five area. Uh, but but man, what, what, what a move! What a move! Uh, I, another thing I wanted to address was uh, was Lucid. And uh, you know, speaking on the on the EV kind of kind of sector, and, you know, Luca was talking about NIO. Are uh, you guys were talking about NIO potentially making that run up, uh, like it had? You know, it, it kind of already had that run up, right? And you know, Lucid um, is one of those very very interesting names. Uh, this guy's was a spec. So if you guys have been trading long enough, you'll know that Lucid was a spec. Uh, CCIV. Uh, you know, if you if you're a real one, uh, you know what happened with that name. Uh, I was I was participating in that name. That that ran up to like seventy dollars, uh, and that was like one of those like crazy kind of squeeze name, so to speak. And uh, you know, it was a lot of fun uh, to be trading it when it was a spac. But spacs guys, uh, they start at ten dollars, right? So now we are below that spac price of ten dollars. Uh, you can see here on the daily, and this is something that like uh, Brankles has been talking a lot about. Um, but it's basically been kind of you know figuring out what it really wants to do around this ten dollar area. 
Uh, and then yesterday, uh, kind of got the breakdown below, right? And you know, we tested that low uh, of the 960 area and broke down. That area actually held as resistance today, right? So um, I didn't pay for shorts on Lucid this morning, um, but uh, man, what a, what a good short that would have been. Right off of that 960 area, I think I wrote that down in my notebook uh, last night, and obviously, you know, I didn't, I didn't participate in the trade today, but uh, that would have been a, a really great trade, so, showing a lot of weakness now. Um, you know, I do have a little bit of a connection with Lucid. Uh, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend used to work at the, at the company, and I'm not going to, you know, say bad things about the company or anything like that, but I did gain a little bit of insight about, you know, the, the inner workings of that company and, and how they kind of operate, and obviously coming from the car industry myself, uh, you know, it was a lot different, right? So I'm not going to say too, too much, but um, I, don't, I don't really like the play of, uh, of, of Lucid, uh, you know, rallying, like you guys are saying, becoming the next Tesla or something like that. The EV sector is so, like, kind of diluted now, guys. Like, it's so, um, you know, obviously you have Tesla. They're the first mover. They, they're the biggest one. They're the biggest and the baddest, so to speak, right? But, um, you know, as more companies, and, and more importantly, I think, as more car companies, uh, traditional car companies like Ford is already, you know, g and getting involved a, a lot uh, in the EV sector, I think you're going to see some of these, uh, I guess, like, you know, uh, exclusively EV brands, uh, you know, maybe taper off, right? So, you know, who, who knows? Obviously, only time will tell. Uh, I think, obviously, the world is shifting away from, you know, gasoline cars. That's, that's, that's pretty obvious now. Um, but, uh, you know, who knows who's going to be... Uh, who's going to be the top dog, right? I think the industry is going to just become, uh, continue to be diluted and, and uh, you know, keep getting more saturated, right? Uh, if Lucid is Tesla, then Mullen is Ford, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's kind of funny. There's so, see, there's so many, uh, there's, so, there's so many different, uh, you know, EV companies. Um, I mean, just go what you like, right? Uh, go with what you like. Uh, I know, uh, you know, Ford is coming, with, coming out with a lot. Uh, I do like their, uh, I think it's the, it's not the the Mustang. Well, I think it's like the Mustang, like uh, e vehicle. But sorry, yeah, the Mach E. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Mach E. Right, right. So it's a little bit of like I guess like a crossover vehicle. Um, I've seen like a, a handful of them on the on the road. There, they they look pretty sick. Uh, I I like them. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, with more and more cars coming out, uh, you're going to see uh, a lot of cool cars coming out. So you know, don't put your eggs in uh, in one basket, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I like that, uh, that ending there. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. <clears throat> Unless you're highly convicted, then, you know, that's a different story. Um, and there was something I want to say. Oh, somebody kept asking about GOSS. So GOSS is down 75% today. Uh, they came out with some data, and uh, I guess investors didn't like this. This thing was uh, way higher and just kind of sold off. And I don't, so I don't mind answering questions at all, ever. But uh, I will never answer short or long, never. So I could just speak towards the technicals. And the one thing I'm going to say on this one is, you know, you can't really, I mean, what's your risk to return, right? This is the daily. So just keep this in mind. Trading is all about risk to return. Even though you see something down, even though it feels like, okay, there's a lot of volume, it's dead. Maybe it goes through two and goes to 180. It's very tough to justify shorting into a hole because you short here, you know, what's your, what's your upside? I mean, you're short, so you want it to go down, but what's your upside on the trade, right? What's your upside? What are you risking off of? How many times do we see these kind of biotech names, you know, not really do much, then they gap down, they tank, it's down here, it goes sideways for so long, and then it has like that kind of short squeeze play, right? So um, I would say just be careful. Obviously, trade your own book, whatever makes sense to you, but it's not something that I would consider short right now. I currently have no trades on it for the day and for good reason. Um, you know, it's, you see these and you're like, yeah, it's probably going to go lower. And it was a good short if you managed to get the short right off the open. But uh, it's SSR. It's a tough short. You know, you can't look at a chart on SSR and be like, oh, yeah, like I would have just punched in over there. Because you don't necessarily get the fill for perhaps the size that you wanted. Um, so these are all things that you should ask yourself. It's just kind of my, my take on that one. Um, and thank you for asking that question multiple times. Sometimes I don't see the questions in the chat. And so um, it's nice to see multiple. And then I go back and go, okay, this person asked, like, couple times, three times over here. So yeah, I might as well answer the question. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, so that's basically my thoughts on that one over there. Uh, yeah, still kind of holding on to these shorts over here. Um, surpri I mean, surprised, but not really that XPEV and NEO are not really flushing. I thought for sure we would be lower, but maybe it's just going to be a, a slower trade, less volume. The, the robots are taking over. I'm kind of confident that XPEV is going to get to VWAP. So I still do want to hold my target for that 1180, 1185 just in front. 
Uh, hopefully uh, get that fill there, but if not, uh, whatever, no big deal. And same thing with Neil, but yeah, Neil's kind of given the feel that it is holding up just a little bit better, so we'll have to see what happens over there. And somebody was asking, oh, AMD potential bottomed out um, area. This is the thing, when you have these big kind of sell-offs, and then it runs back to VWAP, does a little bit of sideways action, and then gives you the next flush down, gotta imagine that people are using the low of day, call it low of day stops, if you will, that kind of volume to exit the trade. And so like if you're short from this level, which is probably a good short level, then it flushes, you're already like, what is that? You're short 7150 area. Now it's at 7050, so you're you're in this is a dollar winner, right? Like use the volume to cover. And as you guys can see on the chart over here, and I'll drag it up for everyone to see, um, it didn't really, I mean, like, so look at this, right? Volume is just kind of, you know, very muted, volume picked up a little bit, but look where the volume picked up. Volume picked up on the low of range break, and then it quickly reversed back to the upside, right? So um, then it kind of runs up, it shows you that this level is still in play, then it starts to fade, and look at this, it makes the low of day, it sells off, makes the low of day, does a bunch of volume, and now quickly bounces back up. So use these levels that you kind of identify, use these key areas, you know, high a day, low a day, use all of these areas, and then uh, um, look for volume, right? Volume is the tell, you see volume pick up, maybe that's a good reason to cover over there. Um, and Sean mentioned it in the chat, he said covering 70, 60, right? So there's a reason as to why he's covering that. Like he felt that that's the area to cover. Um, not to say that there's a per perfect science to the trade, but you know, he covered there. And a lot of other traders probably covered there. And then that's why you get that quick whiplash back to the upside. You know, the market already gave you the low of the day test and break. And now that kind of idea of that trade is done. You're either nursing the shorts on some of the large caps that are going to trade in tandem with the overall market, or you're not, right? So going back to the idea of you know nursing the shorts, here I am in my Tesla trade. The reason I covered VWAP initially is because there's going to be a lot of volume there. That's where I want to cover. And now look how long it's just chilling at VWAP, right? So it's giving you ample amount of, t of opportunity to, to get a VWAP cover. And now we're sort of you know making our way back to the upside. Um, so I don't know. This is going to have to be a discretionary trade. And this was my worry. If we do start to go back up, if we break through 179, there's a really good chance that we just easily get to like 180 and then you know anybody who didn't cover like myself is trying to get out and they all get stopped out and then maybe it makes another high and then goes back down. So that's just something I'm cognizant of, but we'll have to see what happens there. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for the likes. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. And someone saying SPX levels, please. I'll leave that, with, I'll leave that one to Arun later on. He'll come back on for the, uh, the afternoon show. Um, <clears throat> when I talk about the overall market and futures, I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of the times I'm like, yeah, 4,000, you know, 3950, 39, 3850. <laughs> I'm just over here using like $50. I'm like, yeah, hopefully nobody. And but this is the thing, a lot of the times it's just like a psychological level. So maybe that's kind of the areas of interest, but not all the time, right? So yeah, I'll leave that one to Arun. He's definitely got a lot more interesting, uh, interesting thoughts on those. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're good on Tesla here. There's there's some program selling still taking place, so I think we're we're probably good here. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And uh, Tesla under 150 to start building a position. I don't know if that's a question. Um, yeah, you know, it's. I would say 150 is gonna be an interesting area. The same way how 250 was. So 250 was that kind of it breaks 250 and then doesn't really look back. It just kind of runs to 200. Um, Tesla has shown that every $50 level has been super significant. But the one thing that I want to just make, uh, make sure everyone is aware of on Tesla, and I said this before, but I'll just repeat it again, the 166 to 167 area, so that's this bottom area, is 500 pre-split. So if, it, if they didn't do the three to one split, this is 500. So <clears throat> you know, if this was, this is the daily by the way, if this was 500, you can imagine that there's gonna be some type of bounce action at 500. It's a very significant level, right? And so if you're wondering, oh, why did this bounce right at 166.50? Well, because you know that was 500 pre-split. So it does make sense. It kind of gives the feel that we are gonna go for another test of that level. And I do think that if we actually breach that level to the downside, then you're getting that 150 test, right? Um, it's not rocket science. This is uh, just kind of taking into account the split, so it didn't actually gap down. But it's not rocket science. It's like Tesla is, going down, right? And their PE is a lot higher relative to some of these other names like Amazon and Google. And so I think there is still room to the downside, but I almost want to say like, if we're going to go to 150 from here, like this is going to be, you know, call it a $28 move going into that 150 level. You know, 150 will be interesting. Do we break through 150 and just continue to sell off into 100? These are questions that I'm asking myself. Do we get to 150 and then bounce back to 166, 170, and then kind of go sideways and then finally fall off? Not really too sure, but just obviously manage your expectations accordingly. Like Tesla likes to trend. 
but then it also likes to chop everybody up for a long period of time. Then it trends again, then it chops everybody up, then it trends again. So just, um, you know, maybe, I almost want to say that a break of the low would kind of give the feel that, yeah, maybe potentially now that the 500 area pre-split is now breaking, now maybe we're going to actually go for the 150 test. And then if that's the case, the 150 bounce could be a play. Um, but, you know, you could have said that with 250 and then 250 bounce play just wasn't good. The short through 250 made sense, right? So obviously just be discretionary when we get there. Uh, that's probably the best thing to do in this type of market. It's really tough to, you know, like have ideas uh, and swing trade ideas because some of them look really good and then some of them just kind of backfire on you very quickly. Um, going back to one of my other ideas, you know, XOM, just oil short going into next year. I like to bring this up just to remind myself, you know, uh, it's like, oh, good job, Luca. You called that one perfectly on the upside and the downside. But no, yeah, it's not always going to be like that. But look at this, man. XOM, lots of time just kind of chopping around, not really doing anything, looking like, okay, maybe 114, 115 is going to break and we're going to run to 120. And then we finally fall off and the past two days are just like downside moves. Wouldn't be surprised if we get another downside move. I'm not really sure. I mean, I originally said maybe 105 is like a support area, but yeah, it just kind of broke through 105 today. And it's not really bouncing back or showing any kind of strength there. So, yeah, maybe this is just on trajectory to give that 100 test. Um, and I kind of feel that if we get the faster that we get to 100, the more that I like the 100 area for like a trade idea. So that's definitely on my radar. I don't necessarily trade oil too often. I don't trade XOM too often. But, yeah, key levels, it's uh, very hard to pass up there. And, uh, yeah, kind of, I, I don't want to say nice to see this, you know, going lower. But nice to see that, oh, I had, I had the right idea there. So, you know. Um, it's good. It's good for the future progress of my trading career. Uh, I guess I'll say that much. Um, a couple of things uh, here. It's always nice when you look at the chart and uh, your covers look super cool uh, here on Tesla. Uh, and it does seem like I uh, I had the right idea to cover around VWAP. Uh, obviously, you know, Luca and I were both in a short trade here on Tesla. That similar sort of trade thesis around that 180 area. Uh, you know, and, uh, did you take anything off uh, on that Tesla like near VWAP? Uh, yeah, there? I yeah, I took a uh, took portion off. Yeah, yeah. So you know, obviously, depending on size, you know, we're all different traders, so to speak. Um, I actually covered the full position there, obviously, uh, and then 178 started to bounce, right? So you know, I still like the short idea, like like Luke was saying uh, on Tesla here, but I think if I'm going to jump back into it, I got to be more patient with it. Um, you know, I talked about uh, I talked about that earlier, and you guys saw me uh, kind of get run over a little bit. Uh, you know, twice there on Tesla. So, you know, now I'm flat on, on Tesla. I want to kind of want to stay that way uh, until I see a, a better opportunity come into play. I was thinking about uh, that AMD short as well. Uh, and then I kind of just uh, <laughs> voted against it. But now it's down yeah. about 10, 15 cents from where I was thinking about it, above 71. Um, look at this consolidation, guys. I, I know like Luca kind of mentioned it a bit, but, but look at that consolidation above 71, 7110 to 7140. Uh, you know, how often wow. do you see um, these names kind of trade uh, that tight of a range, right? Uh, you know, especially something like AMD. Uh, you know, it is doing less volume and whatnot today, but, um, you know, it does seem like it's going to respect that range, right? So maybe if it creeps up uh, back above 71 there, uh, try to get a, a filled short. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll quickly offer there on that one and, and see if we can kind of build a position uh, you know, on, on that name. It looks like it, it should eventually get hit there. I was looking uh, back at BA, and this is why, guys, you gotta, you, you got to trust your, uh, your stops. you got to, you know, trust your, your risk management and whatnot and trust your plan, right? So I had a plan basically, excuse me, risking off of 180.50, uh, the lows here on, uh, on BA. You know, I talked about how, you know, potentially it had some strength above, uh, you know, above this 180 area. Uh, and that's how the trade worked for me in the beginning. Uh, reluctantly now, obviously, you know, hindsight's 2020, but, you know, tried to add to the position and eventually got stopped out. But now look at it. It's at 179. So it looks like BA having a little bit, uh, you know, more of a pullback day today after having some, you know, really solid strength the past couple days, uh, you know, pullback on less volume. So, you know, I'm not saying that the, the, the clear uptrend here, just look at this daily, man. Like the BA has been just crushing it to the upside here. Um, you know, it doesn't always offer the best day trading opportunities, but, you know, for swing trades, obviously for investments, uh, you know, it can, be, it can be a great one, right? So, you know, BA is kind of pulling back uh, 
uh, here on, on, on that one there. Uh, bang on NVIDIA, uh, playing that 160 long and 161.50 short. Uh, so, you know, Daryl has kind of nailed it here. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, kind of trading this range. On, on rangy days like today, uh, you know, days where the market isn't really, you know, after it does its morning push, morning drive, so to speak, if you will, um, you know, obviously, every, every trading morning, uh, every morning that the market is open, it's going to offer some banger opportunities uh, at the open, right? There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's obviously about stock picking and, you know, your setups and whatnot. But once you miss that, that morning drive or that morning session to like 10.30, 11, you know, 11.30 on some of the more high volume, uh, busier days, uh, when you see the market kind of doing this, uh, this sort of sideways price action, it's not gonna, you know, particularly interest you uh, in taking large positions, uh, you know, for the rest of the day. So, you know, you kind of gotta get uh, creative uh, with it. Uh, like, you know, Daryl Flinch is saying, uh, you know, trading this range, right? Uh, man, it, what a range. Uh, you know, Daryl kind of nailed it on this one, uh, 160, 150, uh, literally the tops here, uh, and then, you know, to 160. So, you know, great range there. Uh, it did give you another chance to enter short uh, off of that 160, 150 area. Uh, again, you know, not giving, uh, you know, again, it's below VWAP. So, you know, NVIDIA clearly, clearly weak here. Uh, I'm kind of trying to trade the sympathy uh, move here in, uh, in, uh, in AMD. It looks like I'm right at the offer, man. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now we are short uh, on AMD for that one. Uh, start a position on that name, and we'll see where this one can kind of go. I'm basically, you know, same sort of idea um, here. Going to risk uh, up to the 7140 area. I do want to add to this position, uh, you know, with, uh, with my size right now. I do want to try to build a position here uh, and see if it can really respect this uh, consolidation area. Of course, if we start to really reclaim VWAP, push above 7140, uh, you're probably going to see me stop out of this name. Uh, but now, uh, guys, short on uh, AMD. I'm going to see uh, if that one can work. I, I I see Sean saying, uh, should we cover Meta here? Uh, is Meta still kind of making those bottoms? Uh, yeah, yeah, like it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of at the lows now. And it's just like, uh, you know, it hasn't even actually made a new low on the day. The low I see there is still 114.41 uh, from earlier in the day. So it's kind of just like trickling down to these lows. I mean, like, if you're holding like a small piece, you might as well just keep holding, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, in case the market continues to fade here, but uh, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a banger short. Meta, clearly, clearly weak today. Um, there was a little bit of a volume spike to the upside earlier, uh, but that might have been, you know, looking back on it now, maybe just shorts covering from the morning, right? So, you know, it clearly it couldn't, uh, um, you know, get above this 123 area. This 123 area actually is quite, quite interesting on Meta just because there was this consolidation. Uh, let's just call it 125, wow. up to 125. Uh, and then, um, you know, obviously the big breakdown, I think there was a gap down that day. So, you know, there was a gap that needed to be filled. That gap has since been filled now. Uh, and we've rejected 125 uh, kind of right on the dot, right? So now we're all the way back down to 115, 114.60 today, right? So, you know, clearly Meta, um, you know, is, you know, kind of making a little bit of an uptrend here, but uh, definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, one interesting thing I saw actually before I send it uh, back to Luca here about Meta, and I know we always kind of like to, you know, everyone in the chat likes to, to hate on Meta a bit, but um, man, Meta owns obviously Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, and WhatsApp. Their market share uh, of just like kind of social media apps is, is still quite large, right? So, you know, obviously Meta has had a lot of negativity or whatever surrounding it. Uh, you know, they're, they're spending a ton on the metaverse, obviously, and it's, it's hurting their, uh, their balance sheet, uh, at least in the interim, right? So, um, but that being said, guys, like I know, like, you know, we've mentioned it before, like we don't really use Facebook that much. I know it's like a little bit maybe, um, a, a, of uh, past generations and whatnot, but it's still, Meta still holds a huge market share uh, in, uh, in the social media sphere, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. I, I think it's still a great company. Uh, you know, maybe it just needs to be uh, uh, priced a little bit more fairly, who knows? But uh, yeah, Meta obviously getting hurt today. What is going on in this Spain game right now? What's up? Uh, is this, is it done? I think it's done. Every, is it done? They're out. Spain's out. Oh my God! No way! What what a World Cup! What a World Cup! Yeah, you know if uh, actually no, I'm not even gonna say that. 
That's, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's wild. Hopefully I didn't spoil that for anyone. I'm just so surprised. Um, yeah, guys, a little bit of updates on my positions here. So XPEV, um, somebody actually was like uh, XPEV, uh, Luca, and I, I saw that, so I covered. And then as soon as I covered, there was some big size that sort of came in afterwards and slammed it down, and then they were sitting on the offer. So I was like, all right, let me just try like another, another short in front of that size, and I'll just stop myself out if the size uh, gets taken. And then there was some stack size, so somebody was trying to kind of short playing off the size. And so I'm like, okay, like I think I'm good, but I'll just put my stop in. So that was stopped out, and then... Um, yeah, that was just a keystroke. Don't mind that long there. That wasn't supposed to happen. Um, I'm kind of done with this trade. This was the ideal, like short cover VWAP. Size came in, scalp trade, but that didn't work. But it's uh, no big deal, no problem there. Covered the Tesla. This is, I don't know if this is the right idea, but um, yeah, I had the VWAP cover and then I was trying to hold for 176. But now that we're kind of inching back up and we're holding trend, we're in the middle of the day, like Tesla, I feel like it, it's going to be very robotic. And if I put my stop at 180, I just kind of feel like it's going to run 180 anyway. So I just kind of take, take the win on that one. I, I tried to hold, but uh, whatever, no big deal there. And still now in the, uh, the Neo short, which I'm going to quickly look at right now to see where we are. Yeah, this is not really doing anything. The thing with Neo is like, I mean, I say this probably every time I come on the show, but it's like it has like a move or two. And then it just kind of, you know, is very robotic. Like, like Neo is not going to most likely reverse this move and then get to like, 12.60 today, right? It's just gonna, you know, I'm just kind of looking at the daily, like, where are we? Like, there's a really high chance that we just kind of stay here. So it's not really working for me, but it's not I'm, It's not really going against me. At this point, uh, it's very clear though. I'm gonna put my stop in. If we break high a day, which call it 13.30. Um, yeah, if we break like a 13.30 area, then, then I'm gonna stop myself out on that one. So I'm gonna enter that stop right now. And uh, hopefully it doesn't hit there. And then, uh, yeah, if we, if we get back down, I just want to say that 13 is my cover. So instead of taking a VWAP cover on that, I feel like I'm just going to cover right in front of 13. So try to take a extra, little bit of an extra win on that one. <clears throat> and uh, someone's saying, let's make a bet. What teacup does Arun bring on the table at two? Ooh, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, guys, bet, uh, bet amongst yourselves. And uh, yeah, Sean saying, the minute Italy wasn't in the World Cup, was it really a valid cup? No, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, yeah, no wonder the World Cup looks like this, because Italy's not in it. But yeah, I don't want to say that. I'm obviously just, j just joking around there. Um, every, every, a lot of countries have really good teams, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm Italian and I'll, I'll, I stand by it. You know, that's, that's what I got to say there. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, France, right? Money's on France with that, with that uh, parlay legend over there, Seven Lake Parlay, uh, to win 500K. That's absolutely insane. Uh, Sean's like, yeah, I'm not joking, however. I'm just joking because I'm, like, saying it on live. So I was like, yeah, guys, you know, I'm joking. But then I turned around, like, no, not really. I'm going to tell you an after. Like, this, this cup sucks. Like, I don't even <laughs> care about anything that takes place over here. Uh, it's all a bunch of bogus. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, yeah, now just kind of looking at a few of these different areas. Uh, if we go back up, I mean, oh, yeah, I guess. Uh... Wait, what the hell? Oops, sorry about that one. Um... Yeah, Rivian. Oh, Sean's saying short Rivian. Let me let me have a look here. I don't know if you want to take that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can talk about it. Uh, you know, in the in the likes of this, uh, you know, EV kick, we're kind of going on today. Um, Sean is now short Rivian, right? So Rivian. Uh, clearly weaker than some of the other EVs we've talked about today. Down 5%, 5.7% uh, actually, and now it's breaking actually new lows. So, you know, that's going to be a, a quick uh, scalp winner there for Sean there. But um, this one's breaking down this 28 level. Uh, you know, it seems like it made a base um, earlier in the day, and now that's breaking down. So, you know, clearly cracking down new lows. Um, I don't want to look at the daily here to see, like, what kind of levels we're looking at. This has been a level uh, for Rivian uh, since November, right? So this 28 area has been kind of a level. Uh, you know, we do have room to the downside, obviously, right, uh, for this name. Uh, going all the way back to July in the summer, uh, 25, right? So there is space to the downside. Um, looking at the daily, this, you know, this is, this is pretty basic. It's clearly in a downtrend, right? So, you know, shorting this name, uh, I don't mind that at all. Uh, you know, one of the weaker names on the day. I want to check back on Tesla. I, I've kind of veered away from it, uh, you know, sort of speak uh, after, you know, covering that position. Just because, one, I don't want to start over-trading Tesla. Uh, you know, that's something that I've been, I guess, struggling with uh, throughout November. Obviously, not through much so uh, through December, but just over-trading a lot uh, on names. Um, is something that I've kind of struggled with. So, you know, one, I don't want to start overtrading Tesla, so I'm not going to, you're probably not going to see me in another Tesla trade unless it comes back up to 180 and, and shows me something uh, really, really nice and juicy that I really want to take advantage of. But 
Um, you know, this being said, it is kind of holding above VWAP, right? So, you know, if any sort of, uh, you know, pump up happens with the market here and, and it, it starts to, uh, you know, really kind of blast off these bottoms, so to speak, and, and, and give a nice bounce, um, I could totally see Tesla kind of rallying back up to, uh, you know, to the highs uh, where it opened 182, 183, right? So, I think uh, unless uh, I'm not going to start shorting it earlier like I, like I did, you know, shorting above 179, I don't think that's the play anymore, uh, especially now that it has held above VWAP. So, you know, just going to be patient with that one. Nice $2 winner earlier on it. Uh, I'm flat on the name, and, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live with that one. Uh, you'll see my AMD uh, is kind of funky here uh, because... I have mistakenly flattened myself uh, once again, and then I just added back to it, and I added back to it again, uh, and then scalped out some. So, you know, that one's 15 cents in the money. Uh, this one's working now to the downside off of the 71. It, it looks like it is trying to, you know, at the very least, uh, respect this consolidation area, um, you know, to the short side and, and hold as a potential resistance now above the 71 area. Uh, I'm going to be bidding near lower days. I think that's fair uh, on this name on, on AMD, but that's the one uh, short basically that I'm in. Um, Tesla fly, yeah. It, like, like Lucas said, like you know, oftentimes you'll see um, these things just kind of just chopping around uh, a lot for the rest of the day. So that's why I'm not really going to, you know, try to really get involved, right? Uh, did you end up covering uh, Meta, Sean? No, yeah, so Meta is, is almost starting to look like it wants to bounce a little bit off this 114.50. I'm watching this one uh, closely on my, on my screen as well, uh, on my side screen, that is, um, just because it is kind of making a base now. Um, it hasn't cracked. Oh, it did actually crack lower there um, and tested, one, tested below it and then just kind of reclaimed the level, right? So, um, you know, I'm going to watch on, on that one there. Um, what else was I looking at? Uh, Apple. I, I know I told you guys I probably wasn't going to trade Apple again. I'm going to stick to that one uh, just because I didn't really plan for it this morning. And, you know, I, I don't want to start, uh, you know, over trading something just because I, I took a loss on it earlier, so to speak. So it is kind of holding above this 144 area. Uh, it did dip lower, guys. You know, 143.50 is the, is the low on the day. Um, Apple's not really doing that much, right? So, you know, I'm more used to seeing Apple... Uh, doing the, vo the volume of like 100 mil, right? Those are the days that I really want to start trading Apple when it's really in play. Obviously only doing 30 mil, less than 30 mil volume on the day. Um, with the majority of the trading day done, I don't really see Apple making that many more moves. So probably just going to stay away from it, right? So this is the sort of thing that you kind of want to do as you progress uh, later into the trading day, right? As things sort of die off is... Uh, you more so want to talk yourself out of taking trades as opposed to uh, talking yourself into taking trades. Obviously, if the setup is there, I see a, you know, a, a big, fat, juicy level like I was talking about on Tesla or whatever, you're going to see me take that trade, right? But if it's not there, I'm not just going to start uh, going into trades for the sake of going into trades, right? So you're going to be try to you know, be super disciplined. Uh, I think that's going to be my motto going uh, forward in December. And you know, we're going to see, obviously, next week, I talked about that earlier, uh, next week is going to be uh, something pretty spicy. I think there's also the quad witching uh, on, on the Friday there. So, you know, that's going to be something to watch and, you know, something to be excited about. But, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, heading into uh, the rest of this day, uh, I'm not really seeing uh, too, too much, uh, you know, potential opportunities, for me at least, uh, for the subs that I like to take, um, you know, moving forward. Yeah, and... Um... <clears throat> Somebody in the chat was asking, Luca, where can I see that bet? So I just brought it up again over here on screen. Um, I don't know how this works, but it's like two accounts, I think, on Instagram. So BR betting and BR football. So I guess if you go on Instagram and you see BR, BR football. Uh, yeah, BR football. Sorry, right here. This is, uh, I don't know when it was posted, but I'm sure you could, you could find it. Um, just look for kind of this image over here. So BR football, and it's with BR betting. I'm assuming that's, that's an app. That's a sports book or FD Sportsbook. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where you can find it. So uh, hopefully that helps you there. Be our football uh, account and then go from there and I'm sure you, you can figure it out. Uh, but yeah, what a, what a crazy, uh, what a crazy seven leg parlay there. Somebody was saying, what kind of sports book gives plus 650 on France? Um, yeah, but, but remember, this was, these, these were the odds before France even qualified, right? So France to win the World Cup before they even qualify, 650, uh, plus 650. I mean, I don't know, it kind of feels, like obviously they won last time, uh, kind of feels right. But uh, yeah, no, that, uh, man, Morocco and penalty kicks, Jesus, Jesus, that's, uh, that's absolutely crazy. Um, 
I'm kind of uh, on the hunt for another trade idea over here. Not really too sure what to think. A lot of the times when these things are at, now they're at low days, and it's kind of like, I mean, may, I, maybe I just kind of premature with the Tesla cover, but uh, I don't know. I just felt like the right thing to do. I could always get back in, but it does feel like we could easily just get closer to that 180, so I just want to see how that one plays itself out. And, uh, yeah, Neo Tencent's in the money. Apple kind of inching its way towards low a day. <clears throat> um, yeah, Meta, I think Sean said he's, he still hasn't covered Meta. I heard him reference 115. So I'm assuming that if, if we, you know, go back through 115 with volume, then he's just going to, you know, take us out over there. Because here's the thing. If you're short, you got a good average. You want to let it work for you. If it's, it's not necessarily showing you that you're wrong. It's just kind of floating around. And, you know, I guess the real thing is what is the expectations, right? Is this going to, it could go to 114, but maybe not 113. That's probably uh, uh, super aggressive. But, yeah, who knows uh, what happens next. It's kind of very muted. Now we're sort of uh, approaching 1 p.m., and uh, yeah, you know, hopefully holding uh, some of the shorts and nursing those. And uh, whoever took that size on XPEB, that was the right idea. I just kind of had a cheat. I already had the shorts, so I was like, okay, great. And then I kind of jumped in front and then stopped out. I was like, okay, whatever, no big deal. But uh, yeah, no, now sort of failing back down. And uh, I'm not in the trade, so I can be objective about it, looking at it. I really just feel like, you know, XPEB is probably dead. And uh, for this to go back up through 12, it would just take some serious uh, short squeezing. but. Volume is very muted. We probably just trend lower. If I was still in the short, I'd probably be trying to target 1160 um, for whatever reason. I feel like that's kind of another area that I was thinking about. And then, you know, I wouldn't, um, I would, I'd be surprised if this is at 11 by the end of the day. I just don't think there's going to be enough selling that comes into the market right now in XPEV. So, yeah, maybe that 1161 is a potential uh, short term bottom on it. And someone, time trader, I think I am addicted to taking risk. Um, there's actually a video that I watched on Instagram where somebody's saying um, it's all risky, right? Taking risk is risky. Not taking risk is risky, right? So, um, yeah, it's, it's all risky. So, you know, pick your side, right? Uh, pick your side. Just make sure that it lines up with you. And, uh, you know, don't take too much risk if it's uncomfortable because then, uh, yeah, that can, uh, that can be uh, super uncomfortable there. Somebody's saying PAFO. So let's have a look here, PAFO. Um, I saw somebody talking about this before. Oh, this, this up halted today, actually. Uh, kind of interesting there. Oh, up halted twice, but is this? So do, doing nothing in the morning, volume kind of coming into this later on. PAF, well, I'm not really too sure about this. Where are we on the daily? Oh, wow. This is, uh, yeah, let's look at this together here. Uh, PAFO had a flush. I don't know if this kind of gave me a feel that maybe this is a SPAC or something. There has to be like some type of reason as to why this is taking place. I don't know if it was announced by Brendo. Um, a lot of the things that he, he says, I, I sort of miss, so it's uh, my own fault there. But um, yeah, down then up, $10, definitely a level of interest. Like, is that a hard 10? Oh my goodness. On the daily there, that's a, that's a hard 10 level, isn't that? Okay, so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting there on this one. Um, I don't want to get too excited about it, but yeah, if we get the 10, maybe get a trade going there. We'll see what happens. Uh, this thing kind of going into an up halt, halting again, going down, holding, going into another up halt, clearing high a day, um, then kind of flushing. Now it's inching towards high a day. If it maybe breaks high a day, which is that 950 area, maybe goes into another up halt. Um, but again, I don't know what's going to happen. It's SSR. Um, the spread is, I mean, it's one cent right now, but yeah, anything could happen. I think we're going to go pass over to Brendo real quick. For you on uh, how oil markets and the energy sector in general doing so far today. We had, if you remember going back to last week, we had a whole bunch of headlines regarding the fact that uh, output or uh, sorry, OPEC and OPEC Plus were both talking about cuts potentially going into the new year. This is the headline today. Uh, not so much going back in the other direction. Uh, yeah, U.S. crude output specifically, so not necessarily uh, OPEC or OPEC plus, but petroleum demand to rise in 2022, meaning, yeah, we need, guess what, more oil, but uh, also talking about uh, higher inventories as well. So downside today for energy uh, in general, as we were discussing with Arun as uh, he was looking at this in the pre-market this morning, uh, back to 77, which was that support uh, going back to yesterday, but we're right back to day lows, two days in a row, uh, downside here for crude oil. Thank you so much for that, Brendo. And uh, yeah, you know, oil uh, continues to fall here. XOM continues to fall. One, 104 and the break of 104. Is that real? Yeah, that is real. 104 breaking 104. Um, I guess taking the size out 104 and now sort of uh, doing its little dance over there. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, someone's saying, Luke, I see 108 as support. Hmm, I don't know what 108 as support. No. 
there's nothing that's around 108. I don't know what you're talking about there. Maybe uh, let me know uh, just uh, further what. And here we go, XPEV. Okay, now flood. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look yeah, at that, that. That's painful, man. I cover, the size comes in, I short more, it stops me out, I say whatever. And then here we are, 1160. So, you know, yeah, you know, I'm uh, just not having it today. Uh, but whatever, no big deal. Ronaldo not in starting lineup. Yeah, Ronaldo, I think, secured the deal with Saudi for like 200 mil a year or something. Did he actually take that I, deal? I'm pretty sure. I think he wow. took it. Yeah, I think he took it, which is actually interesting. I mean, he's all about money for sure, but uh, that's crazy, man. I mean, 200 he's probably got year. enough of it by now. See, the thing is, is I think we were talking about this too. I'm like, he's already loaded. What is 200 million? But I guess it's still... 200 million. I mean, it's still 200, it's still million. 200 million. I mean, like, like you're worth no matter how much money you have, I think, you know, if you, someone hands you like a fifth of a billion dollars, like, you're not going to take it? I don't know. I, I, obviously, it depends on his family. Maybe he's going to have to, like, move there or something like that. Uh, yeah, the money has is, is definitely been turned on, uh, or the money printer has definitely been turned on for, uh, for uh, Ronaldo there. Real quick, guys, um, you might have seen me in and out of, uh, of a trade on Amazon there. Um, and I was like quickly commenting with Sean. There was a little bit of like a brief, like a little bit of a burst of buying uh, that randomly just came in there. Um, I was longing off of this size that I saw it at 88.88 uh, on, on Amazon there. And it did give a little bit of a pump. I added to it. I tried to make it work. Uh, and then the, guy, the, the size just got pulled uh, and it wasn't there, right? So, you know, this is what I talk about, like, in terms of, like, you know, structuring a trade, right? So if my original thesis was being involved in the trade because of there was size there, right? So it's a front run trade, right? I'm front running that size. The size gets taken away. Uh, I got to cover that trade, right? Or at the very least, take some size off uh, on that trade. Uh, I just, um, you know, opted to, to cover the entire trade. I covered for flat on the trade. I think I lost like one cent or two cents. Like, who cares, right? Um, but then, you know, that big flurry of buying came in and it ra rallied up to 89.10. But here we are breaking down, obviously, below that price. So I'm not going to be caught up uh, in a ways about it. Uh, you know, I, I tried something. Uh, the, the size uh, disappeared, and, it, and there was no longer a trade there, right? So going to be disciplined on that one. Uh, lose two cents. I don't really care. Uh, this one is testing lower, though. Uh, the low of the day, 88.53. Uh, it hasn't breached it yet, but, uh, man, a lot of names just kind of trickling down to the downside now. Uh, the market is kind of just giving that sort of move, too, right? So uh, that one just, and the market is just kind of trickling down to this 39.40 area. I'm really curious to see that if this 39.40 area is, is going to hold up, right? So I talked about, uh, you know, giving uh, your stops a little bit extra uh, leeway, I guess, uh, to the downside. One thing, though, that I have noticed, and I think it, I, I got to start uh, maybe potentially uh, starting in this position uh, now, and I'm just going to risk uh, to the low guys uh, on this one. Let me make sure that I, I put my stop in correctly and don't fat finger myself out of it, but uh, I'm now long meta, uh, just because meta has kind of made this base now around 114.50. Uh, there is a little bit of buying volume coming back. Uh, let me actually consolidate a little bit more uh, on the five minute chart here. So, you know, we are making a base around this 114.40 area. That's where I'm gonna risk off of, risking about 40 cents on this trade. Uh, you know, it's basically flat right now, but if we can get above this 115 area, I think, uh, you know, it could really start to maybe p push back up the VWAP and, you know, maybe uh, get one of those retracement uh, trades on that one. Not risking too much on this trade. Uh, you saw me take the win on Meta. Uh, I'm not risking anywhere uh, close to that sort of, uh, sort of size on, that I had on it earlier. Um, so, you know, with that being said, um, you know, this could be a potential uh, good long trade here on Tesla that it's held up now, uh, or sorry, not on Tesla, on, on Meta uh, on that one. Are you still short uh, Tesla? No, no, no I, I covered Tesla and I, I got filled on NEO actually. And um, <clears throat> yeah, NEO, it's kind of funny because sometimes I have, so I'll have like a stop out and then I have a bid out. And then sometimes I see like, oh yeah, like uh, filled on Neo, and I'm like, oh, did I get stopped out or am I like in the money? So yeah, I covered at 13 over there, pretty clean. Um, got the fill. I, I mean, I'm assuming now we're gonna probably break 13, but it's, uh, it's fine. I'll take the win on that one, uh, not too upset about it. But uh, yeah, no, what I am actually pissed off about, I'm not gonna lie, is uh, Nvidia, man. Somebody in the chat called out Nvidia, and I was like, hey, I haven't had a look at this today. Uh, let's, let's quickly look. And um, as soon as I pull it up. One, I don't know if you guys saw this, 160.50, 
There was like size at 160, 50, 51, 52, 53, just stack size, 300 lots, 300 lots. I go, oh my God, what? Like I've never, like this is like a rare occurrence on NVIDIA. I'm like, let me take a short here. So I take a short and as soon as I get the fill, the size disappears. Like, what do you mean? We're, we're, like, I don't understand. How can you, so, you know, most likely a product of uh, whoever put the size there is like, okay, let me just iceberg the size because I'm just not getting the fill. Um, and now we're getting 200 lots here stacked on the bid. Um, that's probably going to fill. But yeah, basically, uh, I don't know, like, I don't, it's like, you know, short here, there's all this size, and then all of a sudden, the size disappears, stops me out, and then it, it goes down anyway. So um, it's just pure games, right? It's just like, man, this is trading. It's going to frustrate you from time to time. But yeah, size disappearing is the theme. It's been the theme, man. And you know what the thing is? This is, maybe I'm not correct to say this, but I, I sort of feel like a lot of the times, um, a lot of participants in the market, in the markets are algos, right? They're not actually traders. And so what tends to happen is the algo throws out the size because it's just like, hey, let me throw the size to see if I can get the fill. And then someone like myself, you know, like shorts and then puts a stop like above the size as an example. And the algo recognizes that and says, okay, pull the size, trigger the stop, stop those shares out and then put the size back. And so it's not, it's like, it's targeting, you know, me and everybody else that takes that trade but it's not like you'd be surprised. It's because the algo is just like I'll just take that free shares because it's just it's just so easy to do that, right? Because they are the size. So I almost feel like that's kind of um, Daryl Fr Flinch saying that was m me, sir, Nvidia. Yeah, no, it could exactly. It could be you. It could be a, a human. It could be an algo. But going back to my algo example, it's like a lot of the times if it's an algo like running these kind of very tight spread situations, it's so easy for these algos to just do that, right? So. That's why you don't want to really compete with them. You want to, like, I'll take my shots just because, you know, look at this. It's like I short, I, I cover, I lose. Now that it's going down, it's sort of painful. But because it's NVIDIA, I'm not really, and let me just kind of zoom out here. I don't really want to short here and risk like this because look how many times it just chopped around, right? I didn't, I don't know if we're going to actually start flushing from here. So I was like, okay, I'll play off the size. But if it disappears or whatever, or if it fills, then I just have to get out of that. So, yeah, no, it's, it's easy to do, uh, exactly, easy for algos to do. Um, so easy for them, man. They, uh, yeah, they make lots of money. Um, Tesla is the king in the market. Tesla, yeah, the robots are the king on Tesla. I'll say that much. And uh, yeah, I want to look back at the chat, see if I missed any uh, kind of comments here. Ronaldo coming off the bench. Yeah, I don't know, man. If you pay 200 mil, you pay 200 mil a year for this guy. Uh, you probably start him, right? And uh, Zach saying, you say words the same way my ex-girlfriend from Toronto. Um, well, I'm from Toronto, so I assume we all have kind of, you know, give or take, uh, very similar lingo, right? And uh, Tesla will not go below 178. Yeah, I'm not really too sure about that. Let's look back at Tesla, see where we are. Oh, it is at 178. So yeah, I guess my short was terrible, or uh, my cover was absolutely terrible. Um, you know, cover here, cover the top. Now we're going back down. I guess I should have had the stop at 180. Uh, go figure, the one time it doesn't run the 180 stop. Um, uh, is what it is. Always learning, always trying to get better. Someone's saying Apple low of day here. So yeah, let's have a look. Apple low of day. Um, pushing low of day. I wonder if there's, I wonder how like, I, is 143, no, no, that was 144.80 last time. Yeah, no, that's not uh, anything. Oh yeah, and Rory here saying SMMT, uh, you got a small position going there. I know somebody before was mentioning uh, SMMT and bringing it up. And it's kind of attractive to, uh, you know, like I'm not really sure the float on something like this, but seeing it up 80%, I'm assuming, you know, $2 stock, low, um, low float, sort of low, potentially low float, uh, small cap. Every time I see these setups where they, you know, pop to the upside and then run and then potentially make a high, like I'm, I'm looking to short and you guys know that I bring that up every time, kind of like a high day clear out type thing. But when I brought this up, see how choppy this looks? Like my first glance is like, this is gonna be pure headaches. Like even if we do make a high a day and then flush, like we're not even gonna flush to VWAP because it's either gonna be overcrowded or it's just gonna be terrible. It's not actually gonna flush, it's gonna hold up. That's been the common theme on a lot of these small caps that I'm looking at. So. Yeah, it is what it is. I, I mean, I, that's why I stayed away from this one, but now it's kind of pushing back to the upside. This sort of is reminding me of SHPH in the sense that it's like, oh, it looks like it's gonna fail, then it doesn't, and then it runs, stops, and moves back to the upside. But it's, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, 93 million shares traded. That's actually pretty insane. That's kind of wild on this. Holy, 93 million shares. That doesn't sound right at all. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Tesla here. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Luca. No, no, I no. tried a long at 178, and I'm reading a couple people in the comments uh, saying Tesla will not break down below 178 here. Uh, it's, that's exactly what I tried um, on, on this one. I did see some size there. Uh, there was some size there on the bid. You guys saw that. There was like 200 lots there. That got run over right away. 
Um, I saw size kind of stacked up at 178, so I tried a, a little cheeky long there at 178. Uh, this candle's wrong, guys. It did not whip up to 178.40 um, on that one. Otherwise, that would have been a decent winner for me. But um, yeah, you know, it was a tight stop. Uh, I only risked about 10 cents on Tesla. And when you get those kinds of trades where you're risking off some size uh, on Tesla and you're only risking like 10, 15 cents, I think those ones can offer the biggest R to R, so to speak, right? Obviously, if that runs up a dollar, that's like a, a 10 to 1 R and R, right? You know, day traders uh, dream of those uh, sorts of wins, right? So. Uh, it didn't work, uh, tight stop out. Uh, I think I'm done trading Tesla now uh, for me on the day just because you know, I thought maybe there was a little bit of a bounce potentially uh, you know, with Tesla holding above VWAP, right? So, uh, but uh, I guess it just isn't in the books, guys. Uh, you know, seems like should have been loading up more on this short. Uh, you know, Luca and I nailed that first trade on Tesla. Uh, with the short off of that 180, um, it seems like something uh, we should have been uh, trying to reload a little bit more uh, potentially. But at the same time, you know, Luke will say the same thing. Like, where do you add to that one, right? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, looking at the chart in hindsight, you could say, yeah, I should have been adding above 179 like the first time when I was shorting, right? But guys, there was no size in the book. Like, they're, 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 the Tesla's not doing that much volume on the day, right? It is one of the leading volume um, names on the day, but... Uh, by any means, like it's not anything special, or so to speak. There's no specific catalyst, so to speak, on it. So, you know, it wasn't something I was gonna really go too too hard on today. Um, but uh, that being said, if you guys had that short and you're still holding, this might be one of those names uh, to continue to hold, right? And and see if it can, like Luca was saying, uh, see if it can drop back down to 176 area. Uh, and test back those lows uh, once more here on Tesla uh, now that it's broken down below VWAP, right? So, you know, if you guys are trying to long this name around this VWAP area, you guys had sort of the same uh, trade thesis that I quickly just had there. Uh, but now that, that trade thesis, I feel like, has, uh, has come and gone, right? So uh, I don't think that one's really in the books uh, anymore. Uh, so just kind of stay woke, uh, beware on that one. Uh, Amazon will start to buck the trend and will start to recover soon. Um, let me actually take a, a look at that. I, I'm obviously you're referring to, uh, you know, the longer term here, uh, man, our, our daily chart, I'm just going to bring it up on this one. Uh, but our, since the split, uh, Amazon, the, the chart has been kind of uh, messed up a bit. So I'm just going to bring it up here to see what you're, uh, and then you'll get a sneak peek of uh, the lines of Ian here. <laughs> the um, lines of Ian. Uh, on my Amazon oh, chart. Um, but yeah, essentially, like, I, I label it here. This 88 area is interesting. Um, you know, obviously in a clear downtrend, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we can reclaim that $100 level. Like, obviously, you know, this $100 area, look how nicely it held after the split. Um, you know, I think the split was back on uh, June 20. Uh, no, what does that say there? Uh, June 6th was the split, right? So, you know, after the summer, that 100 area held. Uh, and then obviously broke down uh, a lot further, uh, and then here we are now, $88, right? So, you know, clearly getting, uh, can hurt, uh, continues to get hurt like the rest of the market. Um, but that being said, you know, uh, maybe it does buck the trend like you said, uh, but I think it's going to need some sort of catalyst uh, and overall just some positivity into the market. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Could turn around uh, next, uh, ne next FOMC meeting. Uh, if they do decide to raise 50 basis points, man, imagine they raise like 25 basis points or imagine they like oh, man. cut the, the interest rate. That's going to be the big trade, I think. Like the trade that they actually start to cut back on interest rates, um, that's going to be a huge trade, I think, to the upside. So, you know, I, that, it's probably not going to happen until next year, though. See, I think, and uh, I just want to quick, before I get into this, I want to just say uh, shout out to Rory. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm dancing here. I'm dancing. I'm long SMMT. Let's, uh, let's see where this goes. Maybe high a day. The fact that it held up, that's basically why I'm long. I'm going to give this, uh, you know, if we get down back below like what, uh, 1140, basically 10 cent risk, I'll just get out of it. But yeah, no, I'm long here going for the high a day. I just feel like if we do break high a day, then uh, yeah, there's, there's maybe a little bit of room to go there. It's just kind of holding up. So yeah, I'm long. We'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, just be cautious of, you know, a high and then a flush. That's kind of a super danger. Um, if we break the high and then flush back down, you don't want to be in the long anymore. Um, so yeah, my stop is in there. But yeah, just to quickly go back to the um, the Fed talk. See, the thing is this: everyone's like, "Oh yeah, turn back the turn the printers back on." Blah blah blah. Um, keep this in mind: the Fed loses all credibility 
if they start to do anything else besides trying to tame inflation, right? So if they come out and they say, oh, yeah, you know, like, uh, we're going to turn the printers back on for whatever reason, um, you know, they lose credibility. And then it's uh, not to say that it's hyperinflation, but, you know, instead of it now being stagflation, it is now hyperinflation. And it's not so much risk on. It's more so um, your cash is, is trash. You better have some type of assets. And so money probably flows back into assets, right? So I don't think the Fed is malicious in their approach. I don't think, you know, their job is to just try to control inflation. And that's what they've said that they're going to do. And that's what they're trying to do. But they don't care if they do it or not. They hope that they can do it. But their job is to try to tame inflation, right? They'll do their best to try to do that. And so if for whatever reason they pivot, when the numbers are showing that the pivot doesn't make any sense, then they lose credibility, right? And so if you don't trust the Fed, you know, they say don't, don't fight the Fed. But if, you know, the Fed loses control of inflation, which I personally think they already have, there's actually a stat out there that says if inflation goes higher than 5%, then it takes 10 years or more for it to come back down to 2%, right? So this is like, we're talking about like years of pain here, um, and this is just the beginning. And if that's the case, then yeah, the Fed is going to probably continue to hike rates and a lot of the times what they could do is they can just, you know, hike 75 basis points, hike 100 basis points, and then go back to 50, and then go back to 75, and then back to 50, back to 75. So they just kind of keep it, you know, in line with what does the current economic picture look like, but then that could change by next quarter, and then kind of things change and, and whatever, right? So, um, Luca, it's still transitory. Yeah, no, I love that statement. But, uh, you know, people when are... inflation is transitory. Yeah, that? but I also wanted to take that even a step further and say that, you know, um, the watch market, for anybody that, that likes watches, you know, Rolexes, uh, Patek Philippe, whatever, um, the watch market went crazy. Used, used car market or just car market in general went crazy. And now it's really coming back down. You know, like watches are a lot cheaper. Not a lot cheaper, but, you know, they are kind of coming back down. And, you know, a lot of memes on, uh, on social media just saying maybe it was transitory because we're now... Uh, you know, slowly coming back down. But yeah, no, so just to kind of go back to the Fed talk, it's like, you know, they're very, they're very, um, when I refer to robots in the market and how they're like putting orders and pulling them and trying to push everyone off positions and with these small caps, they're trying to break high of day to clear out to then go back down. It's very like malicious. They have like malicious intent because they want to get the fills. It's very competitive. I, the Fed is not like that. It's more like slow. It's based on the economy, based on the numbers that are coming out. They're telling you, look, we're going to raise, and then they raise. They're telling you, okay, look, we're going to slow by the end of the year, and then they slow by the end of the year. So it's very, very straightforward. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. The Fed, a lot of the times, uh, you know, Jerome Powell, he comes out, he says a bunch of words. He's very boring. He's very straightforward. He's, uh, you know, just kind of saying what needs to be said. And uh, investors, obviously, kind of position uh, based on that. So, yeah, just keep, keep all that in mind. Hopefully that, that uh, helps you or adds some value to you guys. That's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, some of these watches come down a little bit more because I would love to pick up a couple more, uh, couple more time pieces. I'm definitely a, a huge watch guy. I saw a guy uh, with a pretty nice Rolex today on the train. Uh, the train was packed this morning. I don't know about, about you, but it seems like, I don't know, the Toronto Transit, it, it, there's always something going on. Uh, you know, me and Brankos were talking about that a little bit earlier. Um, guys, I'm, I'm, I was long meta here, uh, and it was like 30 cents in the money. I took some out. Uh, Going to be a decent, uh, you know, quick scalp on me uh, for me on that one. Um, essentially, you know, risking off of the lows again, guys. But um, you know, when it was kind of testing above that 115 area, I did notice that uh, it was rejecting like 115.15 area. Uh, you know, there was some selling up there, so you know, scalp some out. Uh, you know, easily said, uh, but. Uh, uh, you know, decent uh, 30 cent uh, scalp on there uh, for me on Meta. So, you know, we're still long that name. Um, I am kind of looking uh, back at, uh, uh, no, no, sorry, I wasn't. Um, I was actually just looking at um, one of the other things that I traded today, and I'll speak about it. I Prad's, Prad's traded it before, um, and he's, I'm sure he's talked about it, was, uh, was Activision. Uh, I was trading Activision uh, a lot this morning, just off of the 76 area. Uh, we're right back at this area again, um, so you know I'm thinking about trading it again, maybe to the short side though. But but we'll see. It seems like it's kind of almost iceberging the 76.40 uh, resistance, so to speak. So you know that could be coming into play uh, for me on 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 that name. Uh, looking back at some of the other names that I've traded today. Uh, BA, yeah, good, good stop out on that one. I talked about that one, how 
uh, you know, you got to respect your, uh, you got to respect your stops, man, and you got to respect your plans. Uh, that's exactly what I did here on BA. Um, AMD, I, I ended up covering that one. Uh, you guys might have saw me uh, in and out of that name. Uh, I ended up covering that one for like a 20 cent winner. Um, you know, so, so decent scalp there. You know, it wasn't that much size, so I'm not going to be like jumping up and down about it, um, you know, regardless. But um, it does seem like, and the reason why I tried to cover there, uh, and I did get a bad cover, I kind of chased it a bit, but the reason why I covered, guys, is because it held uh, above this low. It held above the 70-60 low uh, and went into the 70s, and I saw just like a flurry of buying kind of step in. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wasn't too interested in the trade anymore, so I just covered. It wasn't that much size anyways. Um, so, you know, just cover that one and, and, and chalk it up as a winner for me uh, on the day for, for AMD, right? So, you know, that one's going to be okay. Um, but now it's still kind of, you know, resisting the 71 area, but not really making the range uh, that I want to see it make, right? So, you know, my, my thinking for this trade was, you know, we talked about this consolidation, on AMD here above 71 to 71.40. I want to see, it, it broke down there, right? So, you know, that would have been a quick, uh, you know, good short there, 30 cent, 40 cent winner. Um, but the, the, my thinking for getting short now was to basically reject this resistance or hopefully this, you know, support that was there turns to resistance, which it still kind of is, but I want to see it kind of fade the rest of the move and, you know, push to lower, uh, to a new low a day, right? So sometimes you just got to put a time stop on things. Uh, and that's exactly what I kind of did on AMD. So, you know, I'm out of that trade and, you know, it is what it is, right? So I think, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, guys, and, you know, uh, we're getting close to the, well, there's a half hour left in the mid day show and we're going to send it over to the closing show uh, and it's going to be a brand new show guys so you know make sure you smash that like button and uh, when it switches over but um, guys I think if I had a like for every time that uh, Lucas said it is what it is uh, you know this 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 uh, video would have like probably like 5,000 6,000 likes right so you know he said it a handful of times smash the like button for it is what it is uh, that's three now for me uh, I don't know how many times Lucas said it but but it's much more than three um, on that one uh, if you guys haven't already you know hit subscribe uh, check out the channel guys um, I know Prad's been talking about how we're apparently removing the store and maybe starting a Shopify store. You know, don't quote me on that one, but, uh, you know, it might, this, this, this merch might be limited. Uh, I'm actually wearing this one today. Uh, the I'd rather be trading. Uh, just super clean. It says I, uh, Trader TV Live uh, on the front there. It's obviously just the black one, but that's the white one there. Uh, cool merch. I know, I know Luca has a couple uh, items as well. Uh, from the store. If you guys are interested, obviously check that out. Uh, one really neat feature, guys, uh, that I, I cannot stress enough and something that I didn't even know um, that, uh, you know, the channel had or YouTube had um, before, you know, kind of hosting the show here. But you can go over here to the search bar and just search like whatever you want. Like, okay, so VWAP and then a bunch of videos uh, obviously relating to VWAP from our channel that we posted come up, right? So, you know, make use of that. Um, you know, you can also join uh, the community. Obviously, you know, Pratt has the Discord as well. Uh, you know, so check that out if you like, uh, you know, Discord exclamation mark. I believe it is in the chat. Uh, Bears versus Bulls will help you out with that one. Um, but, you know, as always, guys, uh, you know, thank you for your continued support. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Uh, and let's, uh, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, somebody said 10,000. Yeah, I almost want to say 20,000. I just uh, very loosely use that. Like, I guess, it's like, up there. It's up there. It's way up there. We, we talk about this. Like, yeah. imagine, like, when you die or whatever. Oh, there's uh, a there's, there's, there's a little stat sheet, right? Yeah, there's a little, yeah. they, they hand you a big book or a big binder and yeah. says all your stats there and be like, for Luca, it'd be like, it is what it is counter, right? How many times? Like, yeah, yeah. How oh, many man. times you said it? Yeah, so guys, just to clarify, because we're me and Ian were talking about this, I was like, imagine at the end of your life, you know, there's a guy sitting or a girl sitting at, in a chair, and they're like, they see you and they go, all right, what do you want to know? And they just whoosh, dust off the book. And you're just like, my first question is, how much money did I lose in the casino in total? <laughs> and they just go, you lost $800,436. I go, wow, I should have just saved that amount. Or, I, or just like anything that you wanted to know, right? So uh, yeah, no, it'd be, uh, be kind of cool to get that. Like how many espressos did I drink? And it's just like 1 million and I, or like 999.99 million. I go, oh my God, like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool to know all those stats. So yeah, we're, we're, it's, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have their own questions about themselves. 
Um, you know, and, and it's unfortunate that you're never going to know the answer to this, right? But imagine, imagine you do get the answer. Then, you know, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool, right? And there's nobody to tell you that that'd be true or not. So uh, believe it if you will. Somebody asking what is happening to SPY. Um, and actually, before I get there, so SMMT is finally breaking out here. And uh, yeah, this is where now I readjust my stop to below um, the 50s. So my stop is in, you know, if we keep going to the upside, great. I'm gonna try to hold on to this. And I'm gonna quickly bring up the daily, maybe two. You're gonna probably get resistance at two. So um, if we break back below that $1.50 um, within the next, call it, you know, 15 seconds, I'm gonna stop myself out of this one. And I don't know why it's sending that order there. That's actually ridiculous. Um, okay, here we go. That's the right order. And yeah, so if this thing goes back to uh, below 150, then I'm just going to get out of the trade. And reason being is because I've seen these so many times where it just kind of breaks, does a lot of volume flushes. I actually like the short when it does that. And so if that's the case, I'm just going to get out. And even if, even if it goes up after, I don't really care. But if for whatever reason it holds right now, holding trend, moving to the upside, then my target on this is uh, potentially closer to two. So I'm going to try to hold on. Um, if it doesn't stop me out, I'm going to hold on for a potential two target on that. Yeah, finally broke high a day and sort of holding up and not really doing too much. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to dance. Uh, uh, Rory, I think it was. Yeah, Rory, exactly. Yeah, I'm ready to dance. Let's go. Don't stop me out. Straight to the moon on this one. I'll be pretty happy. But uh, just to kind of give both sides of the picture here, just keep in mind that two, it popped the two last time and rejected. Um, and then this is kind of where support was before, before it broke down. So that's why I'm saying two is where, like, you know, maybe the short gets a little more interesting. So I'm sure that you have to pay for shorts on this one. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. So let me just check that, actually. Actually, I don't even know how to check that. But it's traded 99 million, so maybe you don't have to pay for shorts. Let me just quickly check that here. Where am I looking? Oh, you don't have to pay for shorts. Okay, okay. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to put my stop back in there and, uh, you know, hopefully don't get stopped out. And then if we get there, yeah, we'll definitely be eyeing the short and we'll see what happens there. Um, I'm definitely close to getting stopped out, so, you know, I probably do. But hopefully it just does get to two because then uh, I get the flip side of the equation. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. And I want to quickly comment on uh, some of the super chats that we received. Let's see here. Kenny Gilbert, new member. Welcome to the Trader TV family. Hopefully you're still watching this. I feel like that came in a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining. Hopefully you're enjoying the show, uh, having a great time, staying profitable. And uh, uh, a few other questions. Rohit saying $2 super chat. Thank you for that. Oil jumped all of a sudden. Any questions? Oh, that was, at, that was like earlier, I think. So I don't know if these were actually touched upon, but and then somebody saying thanks for meta short news, Cassie. Yeah, no problem. That's what we're here for. Coming with the latest news and information. We got Brendo on top of all of that. Um, it's actually really, really nice. I'm not gonna lie, trading at a prop firm is nice because I'm just sitting here and then I just hear like, oh, this news on meta, like short it. I go, okay, yeah, no problem. Um, so absolutely, uh, you know, free information for us. That's that's pretty cool. And we provide the show for you guys for free. So you know, hit that like button because who else does that, right? I'm sure. You know, a lot of other news outlets give you the news, but not before uh, they allow, uh, you know, actually, I shouldn't say that, but uh, yeah, whatever. And then, yeah, Playmaker, thanks for that super chat from before. We, uh, we touched upon that one as well. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens for the rest of the show here. I don't know if, I don't know if there's uh, kind of uh, anything going. I, I, there's one other thing that I wanted to say, but I kind of forgot now off the top of my head. I'm going to glance back at some of these positions. Uh, let's see, XPEV. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, I guess 1160 was the level. I'm like, oh, now that I'm not in the short, it's clearly going to go to 1160, and that's the area. And this thing goes to 1160 and then bounces. So I guess that's an area that a lot of other traders were looking at because, uh, you know, the short is good, and then, you know, covering comes in and kind of gives a little bit of a bounce there. Um, yeah, that 1160, man, I should have just held for that one, but uh, whatever, no big deal. Um, AMC back down. Where's, I think, uh, do you have, I'm just looking over. I see you have, like, a meta long there. No, uh, I'm, I'm long meta. That's just kind of cooking. I'm is doing its own thing. I was actually charting uh, some levels on the ES, and, you know, these levels or these numbers, they just didn't really come out of anywhere, and this is what I kind of want to talk about. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of an insight into the lines of Ian here. So um, essentially, um, the 3940, guys, um, this was the level from last week that was holding up. Uh, as a support, right? So, you know, that's pretty basic. Uh, but now we're obviously breaking down below that, right? And the reason why I'm bringing this up, uh, guys, is just because I saw a couple people in the chat, like, saying, like, what's happening with the market? Like, why are we <laughs> down, like, almost 2%? Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, so this is the thing, right? So, obviously, had that big run-up. Uh, and I think this was, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Luca, I think you probably recall, this was the day that uh, j had that speech, uh, and then it ran up to, like, 4,100. I'm... 
I'm correct yeah. in saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. and then and then it kind of like resisted 4100 for the next couple of days. Obviously, this is a 50 minute chart, guys. It rejected that level, and going into today, I was just looking to see if you know the market would make a new low, right? So yesterday's low was 39.90. I'll zoom in here to see it. 39.90 was the low yesterday, right? So you know it's, it's pretty basic, guys. Sometimes you just need to just dumb it down and not you know overthink it, so to speak, right? So you know if the 39.90 area was gonna break down. Maybe it's going to be another short day. Maybe it's going to be another short bias day. Uh, you know, look to take some breakdowns, uh, sort of speak, and look to fade some uh, resistance levels, right? So uh, that's exactly what kind of happened today uh, in the market, right? So this 39.90 area broke down, and now we're testing the lows of the support, right? Obviously, these lines, um, they're not the end-all, be-all, right? I'm not placing my stop right at like 38, 89, 75 to take it short, right? Although that would have been a great trade, but... Um, that being said, guys, these are zones, right? These are, so to speak, like resistance zones, uh, support zones, supply and demand zones, if you will, right? So, you know, we are testing now um, the support areas from, from last week. I'm not saying that the market's going to bounce here. Obviously, the market's been super weak, right, uh, this week, right? So since that 4,100 rejection, right? So, you know, got to keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, leading into next week, I'm expecting a, a muted market, um, for the most part, right, and, and unless some sort of individual catalyst kind of come out uh, on individual names, obviously going to be on those ones, but um, until next Tuesday probably, next Wednesday when FOMC comes into play, uh, expect a muted market, guys, and then we're going to start to really uh, see what the range is going to be, uh, you know, moving forward into the next, uh, into the rest of the year, right, into, into the end of the year. Um, man, I can't, I know about you guys, but I can't believe how fast this year has kind of gone by. Um, you know, I, I remember just starting on the prop floor, um, you know, I guess in March now, it's almost like nine, nine months ago, essentially now. Uh, man, uh, I remember starting here just as like a, a trainee, being the first one on the floor. Uh, it was quite incredible, and now obviously there's there's tons of people on the floor. Not so much today because a lot of people are just uh, you know away trying to heal up. But um, you know that being said, uh, you know I feel like the floor has come a long way, and it's been a great year. Uh, there's been opportunities to be had for sure, um, but uh, you know it's definitely been a learning year. It's been a hard year. It's been a learning year. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously going into next year, uh, it's going to be exciting. Hopefully we get a Santa Claus rally, uh, you know, going into the end of the year and uh, we can really uh, start to pick up into, into January. It can be, uh, you know, super bullish. I, I know everyone likes a bullish market uh, more so because when you, you know, stonks only go up and when you buy, a, when, you, uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you buy, you know, they just keep breaking tops. But, um, you know, hopefully those days uh, come back sooner rather than later. Yeah, guys, and I'm going back over the chat here just to see some of the comments that came through, um, a lot of funny ones. But I want to say Third Eye Brand, thank you for the super chat there. Can you remind us about Abort the Short quote? Yes. Oh, yeah. So if Abort the Short, the long can't be wrong, right? And you can flip that. And if the long is wrong, do not abort the short. Yeah. You know, obviously have a time and a place for it. Um, but yeah, you know, if Abort the Short, then the long can't be wrong. And, you know, sometimes it's a banger, right? So, uh, yeah, maybe hold on there. But... And uh, going back to Rory saying SMMT, I hope I didn't convince you into the trade. Nah, man, I press the buttons. You guys press the buttons. Take responsibility for your actions. If you lose, don't blame somebody else because then you're just a sore loser. Um, if I lose on this trade, whatever. You know, I lose on the trade. No big deal. And uh, there was one, a few other things here. Uh, buy a AMC or AMC coming into support level. Um, no, no, there was one uh, te Tesla. Yeah, no, uh, Sharif, unfortunately, not in today. But if he was here, I'm sure we would have heard uh, Tesla a few times with that banger short off the 180 level. Obvious stop run on Amazon there. Yeah, we could have a look back here at Amazon very quickly to check it out. And uh, yeah, Amazon low a day. Now, like, everything's at low a day. And I think somebody made it uh, made a really good point saying, you know, there's, there's room to the downside on the overall market. A lot of people perhaps are positioned to the upside based on, you know, j Powell comments, based on the fact that it sh sort of was showing that you know, the, uh, the trend to the long side looks good. Like if we break the lows here and then go back up, this will be an epic stop out. Like this will be an epic like, oh, like, you know, push lower, run the stops and then just go back to the highs. Like that would be, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised after this year of trading, but um, you know, I, I kind of still would be a little bit surprised um, to, to run the stops, stop everybody out, you know, look like, oh, we're gonna go through 3,900 and then hold and then go back and, and you know, we'll be back at 4,000 very quickly if that does happen. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I guess just wait for price action to confirm for you. 
And uh, yeah, you know, see what happens next there. Um, 168 Tesla solid buy, should I wait? I don't know, man. I feel like Tesla's headed to 166 area again for a test and then, you know, whatever happens there, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, yeah, currently just flat holding SMMT long, which is basically flat. And I kind of feel like because it didn't go, it's so close to stopping me out. I probably do get stopped out on that. Um, so yeah, it's what it is, no big deal there. And yeah, thanks so much. Oh, and the Santa Claus rally. That's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Santa Claus rally. Every time I hear it, every time I hear, see somebody in the chat saying, uh, you know, um, oh, when's the Santa Claus rally coming into play? I'm always like, I don't know, man. Like it, it should be here some t at some point. So yeah, you know, hopefully Santa Claus rally. Um, it's so much easier trading the market to the upside as a day trader. I thought, you know, to the downside, it'll be good. I thought like, oh, we're going down. It's going to be as easy as when we go up. But what I failed to realize is the lack of liquidity in this kind of current environment because um, it's obviously, you know, you get the fill, there is liquidity, but it's just not the same, right? That euphoric kind of feel to the market when things are going up is, oh my God, I'm gonna miss out. Whereas a lot of people don't necessarily short, like everybody's long, right? People are buying, people have, investors have long-term time horizons, so everybody favors the long. Whereas, you know, on the short side, it's more so like active traders like ourselves over here or like smart money hedge funds that are shorting and then, you know, trying to cover. Um, so it's very competitive to the short side. And, uh, you know, the moves are a lot sharper. And, uh, you know, this market for anybody that's been trading for, you know, the last six months at least, uh, you kind of know what I'm saying there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just not what I thought that it could be, um, you know, such as life, right? Manage expectations and you'll never be surprised. Somebody saying Apple now flushing to the downside. Wow, man, what a flush on that one. I'm just looking at it for the first time. I guess, you know, low of day break, you know, kind of okay, not too bad, you know, kind of sketch and then finally breaking low of day and now going back lower. I'm not sure. I don't think it doesn't feel like a news play. It just feels like a kind of low day break, taking out the size, flushing lower. And then, you know, the real question is, are we going to get a uh, continuation here? Are we going to break through 143? I mean, Apple's already down 2%, right? I think a lot of this move to the downside is related to the fact that, you know, we're at 4,000 this morning on the ES. Uh, and let me drag this up for everyone to see. We're at 4,000 this morning on the ES. We're flushing lower. And then 3950 like not was supposed to hold, but 3950, you know, was a potential, oh, is this gonna hold? We broke through it and now we're just grinding lower. So yeah, it doesn't look too good. I mean, if you look at the daily, it looks like, it looks like we're, re we're gonna replicate this move to the downside. Like tomorrow we're gonna be at 39 and then, you know, maybe by next week we could be at 38 easily, right? So um, I think a lot of traders are looking at that and potentially if everybody's long and everybody's kind of offside, you know, um, it's, it's just, we, maybe we just continue to break levels to the downside. So yeah, I would be, I'd be cognizant of that just for my own uh, kind of personal uh, approach to the market. Um, and I wanna pull up Amazon before I pass it back to Ian here. Let me just take a quick look where this is. Yeah, man, that 90 short was an absolute banger. And uh, it's unfortunate that I just didn't trade that well. So, you know, is what it is. Uh, I see Sean just got back to his desk and celebrating to, to, my, to my right there. Um, I want to talk about this, this potential trade on Apple um, just because obviously there was a little bit of volume that came sharply to the short side. And, and Luca was just kind of talking about this how, you know, there's not many, uh, I guess, parties that can participate in the short, right? Obviously, a lot of retail traders can take shorts as well, but it has a lot to do with like the options market too, right? Not a lot of brokers uh, do offer shorting uh, shares, right? Like what we do on the show. But that being said, um, there was a little bit of an exhaustion there uh, to the short side, uh, but I've seen this happen before. Uh, especially on these big tech uh, names, and you see it happen a lot on uh, the likes of Tesla too, right? Um, uh, when there is a big uh, kind of sell-off here on decent volume, there's a little bit of a pop-up right after, right? These really have to be scalps. I, you won't see that I've taken a trade on it because I brought it up too late, uh, you know, and that, that being said, uh, you know, if you are able to get this one like in the 20s, uh, guys, that's a 40 cent win right there, right? So, you know, depending on your size, obviously, that can be a really decent win. Uh, I was thinking about it uh, in the 40s there, um, but I thought that might have been a little bit too much of a chase, especially since I didn't really know or understand uh, why this move had happened, right? So, guys, look at this, man. Now it's rallying all the way back up to 143.80, right? So, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, you know, buy every dip, right? Uh, you know, obviously, there was a, a decent amount of uh, volume uh, on this cell uh, candle here, right? Uh, uh, back at, what was that, like 12.15, right? So, you know, I'm not saying buy every dip, but, you know, when it gets down there, if, you know, let's say bids start to stack on the, on, on the bid there, 
uh, then maybe start to you know build a long position and get long in front of their front run that size. I'm just trying to spitball uh, trade ideas here, so you know that's uh, that's one that I kind of look for. On this occasion, I was just a little bit late, so you know no participation uh, for me. Uh, on, on that one, but uh, that would have been a, a, a decent trade, a decent scalp to the long side on Apple, right? So that's what all uh, day trading is all about. Um, Algo pump again, yeah, exactly. But you know what? That that being said, is uh, we gotta we gotta kind of um, you, you know take advantage of these uh, of these Algo moves, right? Uh, I, I'm watching Meta here on my side screen. Uh, it's been fluctuating up and down uh, around and around my price here. I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna cover this one. Uh, now, you know, I didn't have that much left there. I'm just going to cover it. It's, it's, it's been back up to this price. Uh, you know, it's testing that 50 EMA, uh, you know, for me on, on, on my chart. So just going to cover that one, call it a win. Uh, Meta has been a, a decent name for me here in the afternoon. A couple, couple long trades, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, you know, for Meta for me uh, that have worked. Obviously, you know, Sean nailed the short side uh, on, on Meta there, shorting against VWAP. Let me actually zoom out here. Let me actually go to the five-minute chart. Um, on, on this name. Meta obviously getting beat down. Uh, but, you know, I talked about this earlier in, uh, in the day there on the show. If you miss that, uh, that morning drive, obviously the short on Meta was great in the morning, right? But if you miss that, you really have to be patient and pick your spots, maybe potentially trade uh, some sort of range, right? So, you know, that being said, you know, size down if you have to. But uh, that's exactly what I did here on Meta uh, pretty successfully and, you know, uh, chalked that up as another win now here on Meta uh, at the tail end of, uh, I guess, the afternoon session of the trading day. Yeah, guys, I'm stopped out of SMMT, so, uh, but it's not really much lower. It's just like, ah, whatever, asymmetrical risk, I'll take that one. Um, you know, it's kind of showing that it's a chop fest. So, yeah, you know, uh, size accordingly, trade accordingly. Not really, uh, I'm not upset about it at all. I was just kind of like, come on, go to two, this would be great. Um, you know, hit the long and the short, nail and bail, I'm out of here. But no, yeah, I just stopped out, so just to update that. Now I am currently flat, and I'm looking at the chat, a lot of people talking Tesla, so I'm sure you're covering that. But I love these, uh, oh yeah, Tesla's going to 150, uh, you know, going to 100. Oh yeah, if that happens, that'll make uh, hopefully my job a little bit easier um, if we get these nice clean flushes. But yeah, Tesla definitely famous for uh, making its move and uh, stopping everybody out along the way there. And uh, glancing back here, yeah, we got about 15 minutes. Not really too sure what I see on, on uh, kind of everything. Um, sort of slowed down. Let's just kind of uh, highlight a few of the things we we're looking at. I guess a uh, decent cover there on NEO. You know, I wanted VWAP initially, but because we didn't, when you get these sort of, and not to say this is a parabolic move to the upside, but when you get a very sharp move to the upside, you want to sort of go for the sharp move back to the downside. So it's like, this is 100% of the move. If you think that you have the top based on the volume, then if it's going to retrace, you want to target 50%, right? It makes sense to try to target the 50% retracement. So in this case, it's like short. I'm trying to go for VWAP. I wanted the 1285-ish cover. But as it spent more time there, I kind of managed my expectations covering 13. So that is the logic on that trade over there. Let's look at uh, Amazon here. Or no, sorry, uh, XPEV, um, the trade that we had over here. This was, you know, not to say death candle, because I, I sort of want to say that with small caps, you know, death candle, not so much uh, something like XPEV. But um, the short through 220, or sorry, 1220, so same kind of ideology, you know, it, it does the move, this 100% of the move, you get the volume kind of spike in and around the 1220 area, then breaks back through. Um, you take size through 1220, I think, for myself. If I had size over there, then it's better, you're just never out of the money. Because I punched in a little bit <clears throat> later, it's a little bit less size, that's kind of the deal there. Um, you know, then it kind of went out of the money, but nothing too crazy, and then kind of covering in and around this VWAP area, um, and then it finally touched that 1160, but I think, you know, you short a little bit more size over here, you could potentially, you know, take some off, <coughs> take some off, take some off. You short less size, it's just like, okay, I'm just going to go from here to here, and that's basically the logic on that trade over there. Um, and I see in the chat somebody saying tops, go tops. Tops, the name from yesterday that had a huge gap down. Let's see where it is today. Um, huge gap down yesterday, and then, and then running into a halt yesterday. Oh, yeah, and Sharif had this trade, actually. I kind of missed the fill on it. I was, it was sort of tough for myself to get there, but, um, yeah, this thing... Broke two to the upside, runs into a halt, and then he had a really good scalp trade off of the, the pre-halt level. That was, uh, that was pretty solid. But then showing you that, like, you know, 220 to 225 is sort of kind of the resistance, and it's, it's sort of held up, not really doing too much. 
Um, but here it is. You know, it just kind of started the day in the pre-market at around that 220 area, sort of fading off here. And it is SSR day <coughs> two, I'm pretty sure. Um, just keep that in mind, that $2.20 to 225 I want to say that's a, like an area of interest. Um, I don't think we get there today. I think it, you know, it's kind of showing that it's just chopping around. Uh, but if we get there, yeah, that's definitely an area of interest for myself. If, I, if we do get there, maybe short, I would short off and kind of play off the $2.31. But yeah, not not 100% sure with that one. Um, you know, it's just keep in mind it's slow, right? Five million shares traded, two million dollar stock. That's not a lot of notional value. That's why it looks like this. It's it's a trap. Do not like you know do what you want. But I wouldn't be getting involved in this name uh, per se today unless something crazy happens. You always want to, as a trader, you always want to react to moves, right? So let the move do something, then react to the move. And so going back to like something like Neo, it's hard to say like, oh, this is the bot, like. You know, you're not really like anticipating and, and randomly calling out prices and saying like, I want to be right. You're sort of saying, okay, this was the crazy move to the upside. I'm going to react to it, get short, and hopefully we go down, right? You don't just kind of randomly short over here, over here, over here, because it's just going up, right? So let, let it do something and then react to it, right? And uh, taking that same approach to something like a, um, you know, like a, uh, not to say that this is a small cap, but something like this, it's like, don't just randomly short because there's resistance there. Let it break the resistance. Let it show you what it wants to do. If it holds, great, get long. If it breaks back down, okay, cool, get short. Don't just be like, oh, like here's a resistance level, so I'm going to short. Like that doesn't make any sense as a trader because you know, like these algos, they they create these support and resistance levels on purpose to to stop everybody else. So you know. Levels that matter, support and resistance levels that matter, are levels on, you know, like on, on the ES as an example. It's like, you know, if 4,000 is a resistance level, let it show you that that's the level. And then maybe, you know, you short it there, but your stop's not like 4,001 type thing. Um, so, yeah, for myself as an equities trader, something I learned um, trading over the past two years, kind of getting the reps in, is just seeing uh, the recurrence of the same theme. It's like, don't just don't think you're going to know something and then do it. Let something happen and then react to it. And that's probably the easier trade. So yeah, hopefully there's some value there for you guys, uh, for new traders. I'm sure I see people in the, chat, in the chat saying, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if you're a trader, if you've been trading for, let's say, like more than two years, five years, like you, you know this, right? You know this because you see it. This is how it should be done, right? So uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just much easier to, to react to things. And then you're not really sitting there worried about like, oh man, I'm going to get stopped out. Like, no, you're just like letting everybody else get stopped out. You're like, okay, now that the board is clear, now I'll make a decision. And, I'm, and hopefully you're on the right side of the algo to the point that it, it then pushes in your favor. You could throw the stop out after the fact. And algos, if it's a really good area where they think they could stop everybody out, they stop everybody out, they, it runs in your favor, and then it never goes back because now you're finally on the right side. So going back to my Tesla trade off the, the 180 level, like I didn't, ma and sorry for this wick here, I'm not going to fix it now, just take too long, but... I didn't magically, like, this wasn't me being like, oh, like, this is a, a super yeah, area I mean, that I'm going to short we, here. We both had the same We trade, both right? had the like, same short, exactly. What I was going to say is, like, um, you know, you guys know if you've been trading for some while is that the, everyone's looking at the same levels, right? Like, Luca and I did not by any means discuss that beforehand, that, oh, we're going to short 180 on Tesla. Um, we didn't discuss that at all, but here we are kind of having the same sort of trade idea, right? It's because we, we charted the same level, right? We, we kind of see it coming, so to speak. So once you kind of get that experience and, you know, been around the market long enough, uh, and by any means, I, you know, I've been, you guys know, I've been trading on the floor here, uh, you know, since the beginning of the year. So it's not been that long, but, you know, I've already got enough experience to kind of see that, you know, maybe Tesla turns around at 180, right? So everyone's looking at the same levels. Uh, you know, Luca kind of nailed it uh, on, on the head with that one, uh, that, uh, you know, you chart these resistance levels, but wait for them to actually come into uh, fruition, right? Uh, you know, that being said now, we are creeping back up to 180 here on Tesla. I don't think I'm going to, you know, potentially try to short this one again. Uh, again, just because, you know, a few reasons, uh, you know, I've taken four trades now on Tesla, um, for the most part, bit just flat, right? So I haven't gone anywhere with my, with my four trades. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, into going into the rest of the day, I'm not really going to try to put on more positions here, um, uh, you know, on, on Tesla or something like that. So, you know, I'll let it do its thing uh, around 180. It's not doing that much volume. I can totally see Tesla just kind of chopping around this 178, uh, maybe 180 uh, VWAP area, basically, uh, for the rest of the day. And it's going to be basically out of play for me. 
uh, moving moving forward for for today at least. Um, I am out of meta, or oh no, I, I did I did get out of meta. Yeah, that, that's right. Let's let's actually touch back to that um, because now you see this this is why I covered the position right. So let me let me actually break this down in a little bit more detail here. Uh, so I covered the position because it was basically making a double top around this 115.20 area, uh, running into trouble around the, the 50 EMA area. So I decided to just cover that position. Um, it was 30 cents in the money. I got, got in the money 30 cents uh, in the money twice there on meta, the same position. So, you know, second time, might as well take it because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, sure enough, here we go right back below 115, right? So had it obviously, you know, continue to run up, um, you know, I would have been obviously kicking myself, but the reason why I covered it is because Meta is down 6% on the day. It's still relatively weak, so I'm not expecting a huge turnaround here uh, for Meta, you know, unless there's some sort of callus, and some, unless some sort of like news, um, you know, catalyst comes out or something like that, then you would see like Meta really, you know, turn around and reverse this entire move, so to speak, on volume, right? But with none of that happening, yes, you're gonna have chances to make money on the long side like I have today, but for the most part, they're gonna be scalps, right? So you know, make sure you know what kind of trade you're getting yourself into. Uh, and that's exactly what I did there uh, on Meta, right? So I'm not gonna get, um, you know, I'm not gonna build another long position on this one. I could totally see you know, Meta just kind of breaking these lows uh, once more and, and continuing to just kind of grind lower the rest of the day. I see someone saying, let's go AMC in the chat. Um, I had a trade on AMC last week um, when it was like, I think it was the day that it halted. Um, but then, I don't know, man, like AMC will have these days where it just halts and does a lot of volume, and then the rest of the day, it just does absolutely nothing. So I think like if I'm not actually watching AMC, and, and to be honest, I'm not gonna be watching AMC a lot uh, you know, from the get-go. Uh, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be at the top of my watch list every day, um, unless obviously there's some sort of catalyst uh, in the morning, but uh, it's that, that's what makes it really hard to kind of catch those halt moves, right? So after that halt move, um, you know, I was, I was trying to you know, see uh, if there was gonna be continued volatility or continued volume for the rest of the day, and there really wasn't. Uh, and then look what happened the rest of, uh, you know, obviously this week, um, it's just been fading the entire move, fading these pops. So, you know, similar to that, um, you know, that Tilray setup that I was speaking of, about before, uh, how these pops just kind of always get faded. Uh, you know, similar price action that you're seeing here on AMC. Uh, it's down 8.5% today. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no news or no callus or anything like that. Um, you, you can best believe that, you know, some of these people that were getting long uh, are definitely covering, right? So, you know, $3 winner, that's solid. Obviously, nothing like, um, what did AMC run up to back in the day? Like, it ran up to like $50 or $60 or something like crazy like that. Um, I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Uh, you know, you can blast me in the chat for that one. Um, some people, uh, no, I, what I wanted to call out here before we send it back to Luca, there's only a few minutes left in the show, guys, uh, in this opening midday show, and then we're obviously going to send it, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to Sean, uh, Brendan and Arun for the closing show. It's going to be a new closing show, so make sure you smash that like button for, for that show. Uh, if you guys haven't already, you know, participate in this poll. Uh, Jim Kramer is urging investors to sell their crypto. Uh, are you selling or holding? Hold. I, vote, no, I, I, voted, I voted hold. Uh, obviously, it depends on, you know, where your, your portfolio, how your portfolio is looking kind of. Uh, at this moment, uh, you know, if I was to sell right now, I'd basically be selling the bottom. I don't know. I'm yeah, not gonna. Yeah. I'm not you gonna. Held this long. I'm not, yeah, I held this long. What's the point of selling now? So, uh, <laughs> you know, that being said, it's not like I have like millions of dollars or something invested in crypto. But, um, you know, I'm I'm just gonna hold right now. But. Uh, it's funny because Jim Cramer, usually it's like the opposite of what he says, is like what the general public yeah. uh, urges everyone to do. Um, so that's kind of funny. But uh, if you guys haven't already, participate in that poll. Uh, and if you guys haven't already, you know, smash that like button. We're at 2.6K likes, guys. Uh, 2.6K likes. Let's see if we can, you know, get a little bit of a boost here for the last four minutes and boost this up to 3K. Like, let, let's go for it, guys. Uh, so if you guys haven't already, smash that like button. Yeah, you know, um, just to quickly comment there. So, you know, crypto is interesting right now because is it going to zero or is this the bottom? And are we going to a million dollar Bitcoin? Um, I mean, you know, place your bets, man. That's place ridiculous. your bets because it sounds <laughs> like it's like on one hand, you know, rates were, were down for so long. So the growth story made sense. But now rates are back up. So now it's like, oh, you own this digital money that's going to be worthless. Just buy gold instead. 
Uh, so yeah, you know, it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I see people saying it's going to zero, it's going to zero. Yeah, but here's the thing though, and I'm not calling anybody out that said it's going to zero because I also you know have my bets as well. But um, you know, if we were closer to all time highs, and I was saying yeah, it's going to go to zero, everyone will be like, you're nuts, it's going to a million. So it's kind of like you know, like uh, yeah, it's it's potentially. Potentially could be a, like, here's the thing. Bitcoin's been around for so long. And again, we, we spoke about the leverage situation. So the fact that Kramer is now coming out and saying, sell everything. Like initially I was like, oh yeah, this is going to zero. But now that he said that, I don't know, man. I think, I think we're going to the moon. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's like the track record speaks for itself, you know, like inverse Kramer, right? So uh, all, all yeah. I'm going to say is like, if you like Bitcoin at 70K, then you must <laughs> you love must Bitcoin. Love and whatever it is right now, like 16K, right? I don't think it's going to a million. I think that's uh, pretty insane. But, you know, maybe we see, maybe we see the, the highs again. Maybe we see the highs again. I think that's a fair, uh, yeah. fair target. Yeah, anything's possible. And uh, also the other comment that I kind of missed, somebody in the chat was like, the lines of Ian, what are you talking about? And, uh, you know, just a quickly comment, guys. I walk, in, I walk in on the day, I look over at Ian's computer. There's tons of lines on the chart. And I go, holy, the lines of Ian. I'm like, Ian, what's going on today? And sometimes these lines are perfectly placed. Um, you know, that uh, kind of speaks volume to, are you good at technical analysis or not? And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's pretty funny. So that's kind of an inside joke. That's what we were referencing before. And, uh, yeah, you know, we got a couple minutes more to go here. Just going to kind of glance over, see what's happening. Yeah, see, see, Tesla didn't end up failing on the day. So I guess, uh, you know, I kind of covered and I was not pissed about it, but just whatever. But, yeah, we're not really... I wanted closer to 176. We didn't end up failing over there. So that's why you got to pay yourself, right? Like very nice short covered over here. Unfortunately covered up over here, but you know, I would have covered here anyways because then at this point I would have thought, okay, now we're going to 176. So it's all about paying yourself along the way as a day trader because you know, we have to be flat by the end of the day. So if you're not happy about a $2 move, um, it could reverse the whole move intraday and then you just don't get paid, right? So uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the main thing over there. Luca guy timeframe for Tesla intraday trading. I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, gold standard over crypto. I'm, I would much rather be holding gold right now than Bitcoin. I'll tell you that much. But uh, obviously, it's, you know, it's good to diversify. Speak to your financial advisor about that. I'm sure they have lots of words. For myself, I just kind of look and you know, call it like I see it. Bitcoin, not looking too hot right now, but maybe there's some sort of capitulation that happens to the downside. Maybe we test 8,000 and then bounce. That'll be interesting. But yeah, no, gold kind of looks solid to the upside. It is a super long-term trade. Um, you know, I don't know anybody who's poor and owns gold. So, uh, yeah, you know, I like that statement and I stick to it. <laughs> I, th I, think, uh, I think they're just asking uh, what time frames do we use. Real quick, uh, I know the, the, the closing show is about to start, but uh, daily, half hour, 15 minute, five minute, one minute. Uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty basic breakdown. Obviously, you know, executing on the one minute. But, uh, guys, uh, that's just about us, uh, about it. Uh, for Luca and I here on the Midday Show. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show so far. Uh, it's been a good one, uh, but uh, we'll send it off to the closing show. Uh, have a great day, guys. Ciao. Ciao. Hey, guys, welcome in. Yeah, 2 o'clock. That means a couple hours left for uh, this <laughs> fourth, count them, uh, negative session in a row to start off a brand new month. What a stat that is. I, I saw that over lunchtime, but uh, if you missed it, it's the first time or potentially will be the first time since 2018, a new month has started with four straight negative days. So 